Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. What? and hide for the Xiao family, for vindication, and for her safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship, a life of uncertainty and diligence. My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinchy and steadfast in the face of adversity. With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics. Surrender restraints. Relinquish thyself. Like the eagle, plummeting straight down. Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship. We indulge. Place at its finest. In July they came. Flowers they were near. They stayed and dwelt in September, bathing in the sun. Oh, sway she let down her guard. Grow, grow, lurking detura, feeding up rosemary who couldn't let go of discard. Night and night stood aloof from. At its finest bellow stain Where passionate vines often chase the butterflies A place with fragrances bellow stain And now to dust the flower has returned on the island. Let's go and see. Welcome to my 1085 Championship Southeast Asia 2021. Right away, oh. by the terrain, but look at that. Oh, oh. yeah. Wow. Oh, but oh, oh my god. But oh my god, China Cup corners, Mercenary eats that regular hit, LC grabbing safe, and now just gonna go for the rescue, 7-2-S being patient with the parasite! 
Just in time he when is, open up. He did. Wow. Just trying to kite his way around here. Trying to push. Oh my. The Cypher is almost trying to and can survive oh. this long. Excellent vault there. Oh, they popped the Cypher. I have to keep the mindset oh. to the rotation of things. GG's will be called. Excellent stuff, guys. Southeast Asia, congratulate <laughs> GH because they are your champions, ladies and gentlemen. Accept God's mercy. Rise beyond the constraints of life and death. This is an endless game of chance. Greed has tainted the sanctity of faith. Pawn your lips and tongue, never to speak of the past. Pledge your beating heart. Break free from the Reaper's hold. Surrender your soul. Submit to eternal desire. In this never-ending revelry, you must wager your immortality. The new season of Oletus, branded Parent-Child Wear. Loose, comfortable trousers suited for different working scenarios. Tailored t-shirts fit for everyone. Fashion options for robots are also on sale. The... Uh, the final version is for parent and child? not sponsored by Bloody Queen. If the product has quality problems, Bloody Queen won't be responsible for this. Heard that there's an amazing mirror in Olita's Manor. It is not a funny mirror, but it will make you look slimmer. Of, of course, it can make you look bigger. Changes across species aren't impossible as well. That is not the mirror that we should use willy-nilly. <laughs> New story still goes on. Look through the Olita's Manor mirror to see the other side of you. special barmaid who can make famous Dublin drink. The bar has a warm and welcoming vibe. Hey, don't drink weird beverages in my bar. It was never a ruse. This is a record.
and science collided. Some reminisce about its former glory. Some long for its splendor. Now, you're here too. With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics, surrender restraints, relinquish thyself. Like the eagle plummeting straight down, Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship. We indulge. Miss Keo, how was your childhood? Well, well. At the dinner table, Father said with a smile, You sure love playing judge, don't you? And then. Then they wanted me to pursue my own happiness. Of course, so did my brothers. Your brothers? He was not qualified to represent justice. And I won't allow that to happen. Something happened, I suppose. I did what I had to do. Justice needs obedience. Justice needs sacrifice. Take over to the fat lady sings. That's all. upon this throne is nothing more than a fragile, incompetent heart. After the embers fade and die out, our homeland, ripped asunder by the flames of war. At the height of my desperation, I finally saw the light of a star above. She was the one who brought the light of dawn back into my life. When the sun sank below the horizon, I saw the flames of war burning without end. Flesh torn and blood. 
blood spilled before me. The illusion of my utopia had lost the favor of the sun. Do you wish to escape, my dear king? In this everlasting Colosseum, you will forever be my gladiator. the truth about what happened to Anna, I disguised myself as a maid at the school. After the incident, someone was still the center of attention. Someone was still beloved. Someone seemed to be hiding something. And the odd thing, someone was trying to look for answers in those ancient legends. The truth may not be what it seems. Everyone is under suspicion. Things were not as simple as I imagined.光谷和大漠将反叛的计划化为乌有Last night, I dreamt of returning to that place once again, trapped in a trance, the scent of the soil leaves, and the chimes of midnight were beckoning me. No matter how many times you found salvation within your own creation, you could not escape the nightmares of your memories. Stop it! End all this now! Ah, I remember now. It's all coming back to me. When the nightingale sings, the mansion gates will open for me under the starry sky. Tonight, the truth will be revealed.
The islanders often say the wayward sons will eventually return home, just as migratory birds always come home to roost. Yet, fewer and fewer have returned. Fear has gripped the island, and strange rumors began to take hold. Stay a while. I have an interesting tale for you. Sergi, once the backbone of this circus, he brought numerous joy and laughter on stage. But he was a slave to the bottle off stage. His mistress began to fall for a more considerate man. And after a heated argument, she sought refuge in that man's tent. Sergi couldn't stand for this. He destroyed that man's wretched face with acid and ruined his life forever.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day number one of the group stage of IBC 2022. Pot Spice and the almighty hair god himself, NTT, on, in the god. booth at your service. NTT, I mean, after a wild, wild card stage, how are you feeling now that we're entering to the group stage? My god, I'm feeling great. I'm excited for the, mat for, for, for the matches that we are going to have today. Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. we're gonna have MP for this thing SKG first, mm -hmm. and then yes. later on we're gonna have AX for this thing Sugar Team. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, gonna be it, hell a lot of action today. Oh, for sure. You know what? Again, if you guys don't know, we're separating them into like four groups. We're gonna see mm -hmm. some two groups tonight, and the top two of the groups will be seated to the top eight. Again, all roads lead to the playoffs. That's gonna happen along the road but right now we got to get through the group stages and ntt did mention some of the teams and i just want to mention each and every one of you in the chat big shout outs to all you guys showing up on a friday or uh, wherever you are in the world but we're gonna get to some amazing things first ntt a lot is happening in the game right now yeah indeed for this week's in-game updates we're gonna have season 22 essence 2 and we are having here the painters the painter uh, skin in the essence mm -hmm. it looks mm -hmm. very nice by the way Beautiful. I know there's a lot of Edgar fans out there, and just I mean, look at the detail on this. You see the mm -hmm. the, the excellent outfit and the paint brushes. Even I, I have a feeling like a lot of a lot of Edgar fans out there are gonna love this. But wait, there's more, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, there's I'm, more. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, there's a lot more to offer. Uh, we're just gonna get to it in a bit. But uh, NTT out of ten, what would you rate the skin of Edgar? Well, because I can't count. <laughs> I would rate it an A plus out of ten. Mm, yeah, it's certified fresh. Mm. There we go. Uh, again, Ed, uh, the painter is one of the many. Uh, I'm just gonna mention it real quick. There's also we have the antiquarian and Wu Chang. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna get to that in a bit. But I mean, off to a great start already in uh, in season 22. Like, uh, and, and leave it to Identity Five to keep topping up there. Well, actually adding. A lot more to offer when it comes to mm -hmm. skins, cosmetics, games even. We'll get to that in a bit, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. But yeah. yeah. Right now? More I want to see love. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I want to see people in the chat, like, post paintbrushes because we got Painter <laughs> here. And note that we don't see that much Painter here. So it, it's cool that we're mm -hmm. seeing Painter here on screen. But I think uh, we're about to see the next skin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, prepare your umbrella. Mm. <laughs> Or the antiquarian. There we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. The Wu Chang skin here with the black and white. Uh, I be I believe that is a, a Chinese uh, rope uh, mm -hmm. costume. Looks very nice on them. Mm -hmm. It does. And uh, Wu Chang, you know, one of the I, I would say a lot of loyal fans of Wu Chang, and he's been getting the, some of the best skins out there. And I'm not surprised. This one looks great. Uh, and I can't wait to see more of what can offer. I think his bell is even, yeah, you can see the bell on the left on the left side here. You see the umbrella, uh, beautiful stuff. Wu Chang, one of the most creatively, I, I would say, yeah, creative uh, hunters out there in the game. Yeah, very fun to play, and I might cosplay at this game. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh my god, yeah, you could. You have the hair. Yeah, I, I, just got... I just gonna have to grow it longer. Okay, so what I need to do now, NTT, is I need to grow my hair and wear glasses and lose some weight for us to me to be the white version. But talk to us about the Antiquarian. Yeah. The Antiquarian skin, a new character in the game, a very powerful TCE is the name. Uh, I actually haven't met her in the uh, quick matches yet, but she mm -hmm. looks very powerful. And yeah, very excited to see her uh, appearing later in other tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not to mention, uh, uh, aside from the Antiquarian, you know, we did see some trailers to her, uh, her to her at the start of the before the start of the tournament. Yo, talk to us about this new game mode because I haven't tried it yet. But I know mm. you have, and you've been spamming that game mode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll talk uh, about it in a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, the Antiquarian skin, a uh, very nice skin to have. Uh, I have um, actually haven't pulled out any of the skin, but I'm actually excited to. You know, kind of cash in for one of the mm -hmm. skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I think you know we're actually gonna play the video first before we start talking oh. about it. So I got I got a little a bit ahead of myself, so wow. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. 
But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. What? and hide for the Shao family, for vindication, and for her safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship, a life of uncertainty and diligence. My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Shao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinchy and steadfast in the face of adversity. Uh, that was fun to look at, and yeah, indeed a very fun mode to play, the new game mode Breath of Madness is online the game now, and it's new, entertaining, and uh, actually very exciting to play, I have been addicted to it, to be honest. Yeah, honestly, you were telling me about it, I definitely have to jump on that real, I know I was doing a little bit of the homework for today, but mm. do jump on that, ladies and gentlemen, it's a 3v3 uh game it's it's has a bit of a dodgeball mechanic going on so big shout outs to NetEase and identity five for you know what giving a little extra content as well as providing you know what platforms like ivc for all the players so uh we digress a little bit there do check out the game we will now talk about the the tournament that we're gonna have uh again uh, we we talked about the, the the current trends that uh we have today and NTT, is there anything you are predicting now? Since, you know what, there's a lot of, I would say Sculptor is the most picked hunter so far. But you know what, the Acrobat's coming in as well. Uh, how about you? Any thoughts on the, the trend we've been seeing so far as of late in the IVC? Yeah, I'm excited to see more Clerk in today's matchup. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Clerk has been a, a new character that a lot of players hasn't seemed to be, you know, able to counter or able to deal up against. So if mm -hmm. the hunter of any team can uh, master that character it's gonna be a lot of advantages that they can have yeah and also take note ladies and gentlemen since we are already in like a tournament server there will be no flywheels so that's mm. gonna definitely change things up especially since breaking wheel is one of the second most pick hunters out there uh, i know i said sculptor because Sculpt sculptor is kind of in the same state like she's very stable but yeah mm. clerk has been making a huge impact yo let's talk about nightmare for a bit ntt because oh. uh, i know you and Nell were really excited to see that and a full presence nightmare is basically a ggs like it's so hard to try and escape the double jumps plus mm -hmm. a dash yeah but it's quite hard to even get the nightmare into max present mm -hmm. nightmare has been very inconsistent in the tournament like you mm -hmm. could see a Nightmare getting a 4k in this match and an another a Nightmare getting like a 1k or 2k. Mm -hmm. So yeah, before that, we're going to have the ranking of the group. Um, mm -hmm. Group A, we're going to have WP, MP, SKG, and for group B, we're going to have I R, I, U, and mm -hmm. AX and SG. Yeah, group C, that's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, we are going to see Icon versus uh, GH, but BL is also mm -hmm. in that group. And group D, it's going to be ZT, TMX, and noir so again these are the rankings ladies and gentlemen so it's so important for you guys to tune in every time there will be a group stage match because the rankings will be changing we will only see two of the teams for each group uh to the top eight of this uh, ivc so 
uh, let us know who your favorite teams are. This is definitely the group stage, and we are going to see MP versus SKG for the first match, followed by Group B, which is AX versus SG. Uh, now, match schedule for today, as we mentioned. Uh, two Vietnamese teams, NTT. So I'm super excited to see uh, what they had to offer because uh, honestly, like group stage, we did say that you can kind of relax, but you only got two chances yeah. here. So best foot forward always. Yeah, you you should you know, put your mind to it and uh, allow yourself to get the best uh, performance of every matches for the group stage. Uh, mm -hmm. only, you only have two matches, by the way, as you said. Mm -hmm. So it's it's important for you to be stable in the yeah. uh, tournament. Something to note also, NTT, and something that people would note. Last week, we did say SKG and SG fight their way out of the wild card stage. So it was MP and AX to not face any losses as of late, but I'm pretty sure, you know what, facing adversity in the wildcard stage only brings you stronger and, yeah. and gives you that momentum. So I'm really excited what SKG and SG will do with that momentum since MP, if we recall last week, only played like a single match. AX mm. played the full okay. three. So, uh, you know, I would say there's still a lot that we have yet to know about MP, but let's get to know about them more with Moru and you for the hunters of both sides. Mm -hmm. Moru here is a um, uh, pre preferable character is Galatia with a 78.6% win rate. Yeah, that's actually very high to be honest. Mm -hmm. And for, for sure. you, 44.2% yeah, for a dream, which, which is still a very powerful character in the tournament. Yeah, uh, but he's been using the clerk a lot. Like you mentioned, yeah. you will get that uh, fix of yours that you want to see more mm. clerk. Uh, so I'm pretty sure MP has done their homework. They've seen SKG play twice. And you, his usual suspects, going with Clerk first until it gets banned. And then afterwards, yeah, he's going to go with this Dream Witch. So I think it might be actually the Battle of the Hunters here since both these teams, solid survivors, I would say, on MP's side. But they have yet to be tested. We've seen SKG. They really rely on the Hunter side of things. And the survivors really just known to get ties and really just solidify the points that their hunter uh, hunter player has gathered them. Exactly. Uh, and here we're going to have the survivor side of the game. So a uh, zero for MP and uh, Ideshi for the side of SKG with uh, both a very high win rate uh, count, actually, uh, close mm -hmm. to 50% and mm -hmm. a long cutting time for the uh, prospector with 92 uh, they are 92 seconds by 55 um, mm -hmm. for the prospector, which is an op meta character, but has been making his way into the tournament. Uh, I will mention, scene. yeah, since MP did just play once, uh, Ciro did not bring out this prospector, which I'm really looking forward to if ever he will. But Ciro, known for the kiting time, he did bring out the entomologist, which uh, we've been saying, yeah, you know, Mad Penguin Survivor is very good at kiting. So an entomologist would definitely add that synergy to the team. Well, with Aidenshi though, Aidenshi, uh, I hope Aidenshi. Yeah, I, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, uh, with uh, him, he actually played Hunter the last time we were around. Yeah, he had a sculptor. So, so it's gonna be quite yeah, quite a wild card that we are having here for Aidenshi. Uh, mm. Excited to see how he performed as a survivor because yeah, mm -hmm. as you said, he was a Hunter player. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, let's see how he translates into the survivor side. Oh. Mm -hmm. SKG Moving also on. have a Prospector Survivor player. Yeah, and yeah, bringing out the Prospector here in the player stats. Did bring out an Acrobat, also a Merc, a Seer. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? I would have to say that SKG Survivors, very well-rounded with the entire roster. Elsie, though, known for being a great stunner. This is a name that we've seen countless times. And yes, his battery did a lot of work uh, when they went up against, I, I believe it was Icoon uh, during the group stage. So yeah. uh, they gotta watch. You gotta watch out for Elsie's stuns. And not only the better Elsie can also play that forward, which is also a meta character. So you have mm -hmm. to watch out for that also. A mm -hmm. very great ball user. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, he just loves sports, right? Very <laughs> agile, wants to stun. I think honestly, Elsie could make a great hunter if he wants to choose violence. <laughs> but yeah, we have been seeing a lot of forwards being banned so i guess that's why that's the rise of lc bring out batter let alone you know what they were both the two stunners here with the prospector and the batter but we're gonna move on nayun with also uh, another prospect another. with the prospector these teams love their stuns don't you think ntt they love their prospector to be exact mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of stunners that we are seeing from both sides the enchantress the batter the prospector um yeah they seems to be leaning more on the harasser 
type mm. of survivor lineup. Yeah, looking at Nyon's stats, uh, Nyon, Nyon br did bring out an acrobat, a lucky guy, by the way. He was the <laughs> one to bring out a lucky guy, a seer, prospector, like, as you said here, and also gardener. So a very diverse lineup. Honestly, SKG for me is the wildest of the wild cards to make it out. Uh, looking at MP though with Ban, Enchantress, another harasser, and I've been looking at the comments also in the previous tournaments, and a lot of people are showing love to the Enchantress because she is starting to rise in the meta. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> SKG really love their Prospector. Three <laughs> Prospector player that we are, mm -hmm. that we are seeing from them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Chain, right? Chain. It's Chain, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rie from the side of MP. Uh, Rie is actually the rescuer. Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. MP, but, yeah, an acrobat main also seems to be, uh, mm -hmm. with a seventy point six seconds of uh, uh, kiting. Yeah, honestly, the acrobat has been the one of the most picked survivors. But Rie being known for that mercenary, being known as the main rescuer, the foundation of the team, can't wait to see his clutch rescues. Shane, on the other hand, we've seen him pick entomologist three times and postman twice. So Shane, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he has another prospector. I think everyone on this uh, SKG team uh, has yeah. a prospector of their own. Yeah. W w however, Shane, on the other hand, I really feel like might be a really good and essential kiter coming into this match. So uh, Moro has to be very careful going up against any of these survivors, especially if they use that prospector. Mm, yeah, the breaking wheel. Uh, if going up against um, prospector, the magnet can deal very hard damage for mm -hmm. the hunter. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, as for the side of MP survivor, uh, they gotta watch out for the clerk. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Mm -hmm, yeah. The clerk, uh, the clerk, I mean, we have said about this, the clerk is not afraid of any map like Poland. Poland is scared mm -hmm. of a small map like Arm Factory. They got our hospital, those kind of map that has a big building and hard to maneuver area. Mm -hmm. As for Speaking the clerk, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, Moonlit Real Park actually yeah. has been picked. You were saying the, the ban map was uh, Chinatown. I think it's kind of uh, uh, doves hailing to the thought that you mentioned that I think they want to give that uh, that buff to uh, Moru. Mm. But mm. like you said, Clerk doesn't really fear any maps. Like Clerk yeah. would just uh, monitor the ciphers. Uh, we talked about it earlier. She needs to just come online, not lose sight of the first survivor that she downed, slowly build that presence. And honestly, the way Yu has been playing it, uh, we have yet to see a team counter it. We've seen yeah. some of the greats like GH go up against the clerk. And honestly, the only way you can go up against the clerk is if you ban her. That's that was <laughs> yeah, one of the keys the only to counter. victory. <laughs> yeah, the one of the keys to victory that GH actually got. So uh, will MP have the solution? Because technically they had a whole week to formulate a game plan here. And uh, let's see what they're going to be bringing to the table since Moolah River Park you're going to have limited banned survivors. You, you really have to take off Priestess on the table there because she's yeah. just so good at uh, just closing the distance for survivors. Yeah, every hunter are on the table right now for the side of the hunters. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the only counter to the clerk is if you ban it. And the clerk <laughs> and the clerk has been you know, a very great snowball hunter that people has been using lately in tournament, even in I, IVL and IJL, the other mm -hmm. tournament from Japan and China. So, yeah, I'm expected to see a lot of club player, more in the Southeast Asian server. Yeah, one thing I do, since we're still talking about the clerk, one thing I do want to point out is with you, when I, I, he downs so early, it's like he, he's mm. immune to pallet drops because he's already recording you once he yeah. sees you, right? Once you throw down a pallet, he's going to lift it up straight away, or he's going to do the opposite and drop the pallet in front of you. So you, you have to vault, then you'll get a terror shock. So especially in this map, depending on the spawn points, God kiting area is not going to be a good spot for you if you're going up against yeah. these clerk. Yeah, you have to watch out for the pallet area because he can just walk right through all the pallet mm. that you have dropped. Um, mm. Mullet Real Park isn't very, uh, you know, a hunter sided map. Mm -hmm. It's still very survival sided since you have to maneuver around the area. But the clerk has that CCTV ability to lock the cipher and keep the game at bay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, she sure have to just watch out for that. And also, the breaking wheel too can be used in the map. If you try to use the roller coaster, the breaking wheel can just catch up to you. Easy right away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
especially like if you all spread out if he downs like someone at god kiting area and then he could just transition easily to the bridge and mm. back right away before lunchtime <laughs> so honestly with if a breaking wheel comes out here with moru i think this is moru's greatest shot to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah. with you uh if we think about the mad penguin strategy i think we i think we all have the same thought that they want to be able to push for at least three games uh, drag it to game number two, but in game number one, it seems like you is the most dominant. So just take mm -hmm. out the clerk or try to survive as much as possible. Uh, and I think Moru has to just keep up with Yu's clerk. We have seen, um, uh, I mean, Moru, a great hunter in his own right. But I mean, mm -hmm. I think you, though, you know, with a Dream Witch also to counter at the second. And if we take note that in the second round, it will be SKG that's picking things. I, I guess that's yeah. something that they have to be careful of. So they really want to start things off well in the first round mm -hmm, exactly i mean mp did get succeed did, did get a lot of success with his map uh in the preliminary round with icons so they tr so they might pick this map again and try mm -hmm. to recreate that same result in the first round against oh. skg mm -hmm. and yeah we know pollen is a great player uh moro is a great pollen player in this map uh, we have mm -hmm. seen in the preliminary round so they might actually go for the map for that uh, specific uh, strategy. Yeah, I, I like that you brought that up because Moro had a great uh, game plan coming into that match. It was really hard for Icon to get things started because he was just so dominant with his trap placements, early downs, uh, that Icon just had to keep catching up to what Moro put to the table. And uh, I, I think the way he was able to do that was he just stayed calm and collected. Well, if we look at the survivor side of SKG, uh, they're re uh, based on the stats that I got or that I computed in this tournament. They're really for known for the ties. They had mm. losses here and there up against God J, which, and I don't, I'm not surprised yeah. it was God J. Yeah. But they they they're known to just go for ties. So you know, if 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 you had to put golden apples down, this could be a hunter sided match where I think the, both hunters are going to go toe to toe. And not to mention. Uh, Minamoto of the sir of the SKG is also a sub hunter. So if you get, get his Dream Witch banned in like round number three, you still have Minamoto here that can come in and just uh, dominate and and just surprise everyone because he does. Oh, he brought out his violinist, so yeah. <laughs> that's something that uh, is uh, something that they have to take note of. Yeah, oh, I take note of, yeah, of yeah. that <laughs> Antonio that I saw previously is. Yes. A, a, a menace to the survivor so yeah surprise uh a supply card that they have in their um, artillery so mm -hmm. yeah we just have to watch out for them uh, mm -hmm. for their you know, surprise pick mm -hmm. uh, i can't wait because uh, um, honestly I, I really think that this might go a full three so ladies and gentlemen also let us know in the chat what you guys think and um uh you want to assign any emojis for skg because i feel like penguins have to be for mad penguins right yeah, I mean SKG logo. That looks like a heart. So you okay? And draw cool. Yeah, hearts and penguins in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. I see a lot of same people. No salty forevers here. We got Ayana. We got soy milk. What's going on, Maney? We got uh, Chew. You got also Fate. So big shout outs to everyone that's in the chat right now. Uh, we're just waiting for the picks and bands to start. But so far, you know, lots to talk about. But I think round number one is kind of set in stone. I can't wait to get to that part, NTT, like you said, where we're going to see the surprise picks. Yeah. We did talk about the hunters. Let's try to shift things over to the survivor side. Uh, how, do you, how would you describe MP's uh, survivors going up against uh, the clerk of you? They could be individually capable, but they aren't really, you know made for the support of their survivor side. Um, again, they did. They can't. They, they can play the uh, priestess. They can play the bearer. The ba even the entomologist could be used by them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we could see a totally different MP in this time around against SKG. I agree, and I think coming into this, it's actually SKG that's in a disadvantage studying MP because yeah. yes, there was the pre the community tournament, the IVA that happened. But here in the group, uh, in the preliminary stage, they they just played one game, and mm -hmm. it, it it was pretty well. Honestly, they faced some adversity from a tie. They were able to turn it to a three man escape, and they did. I would say they they were able to handle adversity pretty well. I do agree. Individually, they're very good. But when you're going up against the clerk, you need constant communication, good rotation, and also just 
conserving conserving your resources too is a skill that you need to have because this match is going to draw out really long. So that's something that you has to well t keep track of and how and we got to take note of when it comes to the survivor side of uh, MP. On SKG side though, let's talk about them because first round, uh, first time that they came out and me and Nell were commentating on their matches, mm -hmm. they were wild NTT. They wanted to go to the wild card because that, that was for them. They brought out a weeping clown in round number one. Wow. They brought out Gardener. They brought out Lucky Guy. So very unconventional. But once they were in the wild card, they kind of tightened things up and did what they did best is like go for the ties, don't really risk anything too much and allow their hunters to shine. What are your thoughts on the survivors of SKG though? Yeah, uh, um, uh, as you said, a lot of unconventional picks. So, yeah, they could have a lot of strategy going on. So they're just picking one by one to go up against MP. Uh, as we know, Moru is a very meta character. And they could totally went for an off meta survivor side to mm -hmm. go up against Moru. Because we did see, uh, you know, the match against uh, Zero 2, where the Wax Artist actually was mm -hmm. introduced to counter the survivor side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's something. Yeah, them. off meta could definitely work, and it could also be the friend of, I mean, the one who's who's kind of championing the off meta picks. I mean, when it comes to uh, like the lack of knowledge, or I would say like adversity. If 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 you're in a tournament, you know the standards, right? You got to prepare yourself for sculptor, breaking wheel, all that. But like you said, zero two facing uh, Crocoduck's wax artist, that they really yeah. they were really taken off a loop. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, honestly, Moru, if he sees, like, a, another Weeping Clown or sees a Gardener or a Lucky Guy, he could be caught like a deer in the headlights and not know what to do. Yeah. I mean, uh, Moru can also play Wax Artist. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I do remember that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and I did remember Moru got uh, a ban onto that Wax Artist, so, yeah, excited mm -hmm. to see how the the matchup gonna pan out here mp mm -hmm. for the sing skg round one a mm -hmm. so here we go ladies and gentlemen and yes nico yes uh, sh uh clerk is a woman she's a very powerful woman and she's a very feared woman so we're very scared but, yeah. because you's gonna come out first but i'm referring to the player yes exactly <laughs> just saying we're agreeing yes she is a very scary hunter but we are referring to the player you and you is a dangerous person that we've also met in Call of the Abyss. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, th th no questions asked. They got to gear up towards a clerk. So NTT, when it comes to the picks and bans, how would you even counter a clerk here? What are the survivors that they got to lock in? Yeah, to counter a clerk, you have to pick a character that can, you know, individually kite well. Like the acrobat, the uh, patient, the forward. Like a lot of characters that can deal well against uh, solo kiting without any support. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's see what you is going to ban on the first phase here. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to yeah MP again, very individually great. I think yeah when it comes to the first chase, uh yeah just try to your best to starve the hunter and banning the seer right off the bat since yeah you want to be able to get the the owl out of the way. Um, no surprise here with the forward and the priestess. I'm glad that they locked in that priestess because we've seen in previous tournaments that Mad Penguins yeah. didn't really prioritize priestess. Mm -hmm. Banning the mercenary though coming from you, so yeah, banning the uh, the the optimal rescuing character. Um, mm -hmm. They still do have a, a rescuer on their team here with the uh, forward, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the acrobat will be picked. Uh, as I said, acrobat is uh, very great at solo kiting, especially in the moonlit real park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so honestly, Acrobat, always a really good pick on the survivor side. And a patient being banned just to cut off the kiting routes. And now I believe Psychologist coming in just oh. for that extra support with that whistle. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a drum roll, please, because you has been. Maybe he could surprise us, Ooh, but no, Clerk yeah. will come I mean, out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Clerk could be a surprise to the uh, viewer here. <laughs> <laughs> It could be if, if those are tuning in right now and they're really known for, well, just watching the Chinese and Japanese tournaments. Like, honestly, if you guys, if this is your first time watching IVC and seeing Clerk in gameplay, especially if it's Yu's Clerk, you guys are in for a treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excited to see a Clerk on round one. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have usually seen the Clerk in the tournament, but usually it's going to be either round three or in the tiebreaker. So mm -hmm. a Clerk in round one is going to be, yeah. 
No, making has turn. Oh yeah, and Entity, I hope you drink some water or something, because this might be a long match uh, with how you like playing out and drawing it out. Uh, we have also seen some clerk matches where they just pop the last cipher, gain the tension, and just down everyone yeah. inside. So that's, yeah, that's scary. Yeah, can you imagine like, if, especially if he's guarding like one exit gate and she's recording the other exit gate? Like you're you're trapped. You can't go mm -hmm. anywhere. You're just all, mm -hmm. all the only place you're going is back to the manor. <laughs> <laughs> the illusion of choice. <laughs> mm, true. That's what the clerk has. You you don't choose when you go up against the clerk. It's just how long you can last, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so honestly, I would say though the survivor side on MP as draft, pretty strong. All of them have potential when it comes to the first chase to just starve presence from you. And yeah, and it, there's also potential for support, even though we did say MP is a very individualistic type of team that uh, just wants to go for first rescue, second rescue. But when you go up against a clerk, it's really tough. You want to be able to support that first kite and just starve her of that first mm -hmm. skill. So you either get the psychologist first to get the present closer to being max, or mm -hmm. go for the priestess where you know her portal can be detrimental mm -hmm. to you know, chasing true. another survivor. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. If 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 you were entity, put your hunter hat on. You'd mm. go for the priestess first. Like which? Oh, there you go. He's putting it on. He's, <laughs> he's putting it on. Uh, who would you go for first? Uh, Priestess, definitely. Priestess. Yeah, just cut cut it off, right? Cut off the routes right away. We are going to head into the match, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Entity with his Hunter at on, me with my, well, I would say my fan hat on. We are seeing already you monitoring some ciphers here. Going to head straight towards LC on the Karis, the working carousel area. Let's see if he's going to commit here since uh, it is the forward. So that is a tough chase for anyone. Yeah, a forward, a very a great individual kiter. But it seems like you is going to... Focus on that forward, <laughs> able to get a recording of the uh, pallet uh, there coming from LC mm -hmm. and gonna approach him, force him to use the uh, football just to make some distance here. Mm -hmm. So he's still yeah. running the routes, but you know, just top down build also, so the tensions in the air, especially, uh, especially confined space. Uh, you still closing in this forward, but I love the priestess support uh. here already on the portals. We do have teleports, so blink will not be available to, for an early down. Probably gonna wait for uh, the right moment, and now the uh, the roller coaster oh, is there. The priestess actually took it, so let's see mm. if Yu is gonna bite here. Oh, goes for the teleport already. But teleport to the mm. wrong cipher. It's Rie. Yeah. It's, it's Rie. Um, in the coding the cipher in the ten. Um, actually, quite weird that Yu is bringing teleport six uh, a six twelve teleport without quenching effect. So yeah, I think he wanted to run on hunter instincts, but like you mm. saw there, the yeah, just teleporting to the oh! wrong one. But Rie running straight into the clerk has to use a slow bomb here just to slow down this clerk's tracks. But so far, so good. Great stuff on Mad Penguin's side. Still starving presence, but. Uh, the cipher progress is still like I mean we still have five ciphers entity so it's still a tough uh, crawl here for them. Mm -hmm. And not to mention you still can block those cipher decoding uh, decoding mm -hmm. uh, progress. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like he's going to get a normal hit onto Rie right here. Mm -hmm. Rie still have that one um, ball to utilize in mm -hmm. the uh, for, in the force station area. Oh my you, god! But uh, he's gonna oh, go all the way back. My god. Wait, be waiting for the right it, moment, but yeah. oh my god, the hit recording! Oh, unable it, to get it. Yeah, Rie's yeah, got nerves of steel. He is wow. not. He's gonna wait completely. So this is actually a great start on the Mad Penguin side because he's lost the Ojusius target, which is the Acrobat. Acrobat's gonna ride all the way back, forcing you to walk on foot. Teleport is still on a less than thirty second cooldown. So Mad Penguins have definitely done their homework. Now Psychologist blew the whistle for the Acrobat to heal up. Yeah, the roller coaster strategy seems to work out for MP right here. Four cipher remaining, uh, two is in the work right now, and all four survivors are uh, full health. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be very tough for you to even get a um, person on the chair right here. For sure. So this is what we're talking about. Yes, late game, mid to late game. Uh, Clerk is so good, but right now you see her flaws. Now forced to use another teleport, and it's gonna be banned. The priestess here, so he's gonna have to record more of the pallet breaking here. We we did say this is a good spot where Yu's known for. Yeah, just breaking the pallet right away, just forcing Ban to move away from these pallets, and probably gonna get a swing on this priestess before she can try and go for a t uh, the holy key. 
and now mm. finally able to get uh, with that some presence here is you. Oh, she seemed to be going on to the second station wow. and going on to go back to the first station. Again, mm. the road coaster bring a lot of great help for the side of MP. Mm -hmm. uh, a great uh, use of the roller coaster for the side of survivor. Yeah, I would have to respect you though when it comes to guarding these ciphers. You know what? It's been almost about four minutes already, but still four ciphers remaining. So uh, these survivors are still respecting the recording of this clerk. So it's still uh, not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. Psychologist is the only one that is injured. Priestess already healed up. Uh, Rie caught out in the bridge area. So they're still doing, I, I would say, they're still doing a great job kind of dictating the pace of this match. And it seems like you will now spot Elsie, which still has some football to be able to activate for that dash. Yeah, and not to mention the survivor side, able to kite out two teleports coming from the clerk. <laughs> so it's been a lot of time um, bought for the survivor side here. Uh, Four Cypher is in the work and mm -hmm. seems like Acrobat has healed up that psychologist. Uh, back to square one for you. Yeah, and we see that Elsie is uh, still just creating that distance. And mm -hmm. you know what? All these uh, monitoring these ciphers, they're doing a great job staying away from the ciphers before they get recorded. The band uh, has to move away. We did see the Acrobat try to ready that bomb, but now Elsie seems to be on his way to the oh. sec uh, second, uh, second floor. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Okay, so NTT, here's the thing. It, yeah. <laughs> the way to counter this is a roller coaster. That's how you counter yeah. clerk. So that's why MP picks this map. They mm. know that they can counter the clerk with the roller coaster. Oof. Now we see that Ban eats a hit here. So this might actually be the first survivor that is going to be down. But uh, the priest is able to create that distance with that holy key. Just uh, making sure he's got to be careful because the basement is here. Um, already one more holy key. Will he make it? Oh, just uses it to go down. But you know what? Yeah. I feel like it might be an inevitability here. Yu's going to close in on this priestess before she can make it to the window. And now that's the first survivor down after five minutes of action. Oh my God. But look at the cypher progress. One is about to finish and they are still short of a half of cypher. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that cypher, I believe, is behind the two story here. So they might take a lot of time approaching the uh, cypher. Mm -hmm. Also, the chair down in the basement. Yeah, this is going to be a little tough. And now the recording begins, right? This is where the real game of the clerk uh, really shines. And now forward has already positioned himself inside the two-story area. Triggers that tinnitus. So now Yu has to camp this one out. But let's see if, you know, he can kind of split his his uh, decision-making here. He's going to try to record here or try to watch. Oh, tries to go for a hit, but no. Ends up empty and rescues the priestess in time. Mm -hmm. nice, use, nice use of that elbow pad coming from the side of LC. Now LC is going to be hit, and priestess also got uh, hit uh, by the uh, falling down uh, strategy coming from you. Now I'm gonna try to prevent psychologists from popping that cypher, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's going to be very tough for you since Ben has uh, gone down at the very top spot to put on a chair. Yeah, honestly, this is a good uh, rally back by you. But now one cypher remains, and you probably knows. Yeah, it's out here. He's going to try to find the best chair possible, which is inside the two-story. And good eye also, NTT, on uh, on the forward, having elbow pads to just enter the dungeon, uh, enter the, the basement area. So now it's the waiting game. Let's see who's going to go for this rescue. Oh, uh, oh going to go for double decoding. Mm -hmm. There is tinnitus that is being propped. It is the acrobat. He's going to go for this rescue situation, probably at full uh, full blood. Mm -hmm. Locking the cypher once again, coming from you. Now acrobat's going to try to come in wow. for the rescue. A red ball on to the clerk to not allow her uh, looking at this other cypher. Not a terror shock, though, and Ty Turner will be popped for Ooh. the survivor side. Just now. blocking the way, and the Whoa. priest is able to move on away as the pop happens. So now... Everyone is actually on the last, uh, the fourth stop exit. While this priestess is going to buy enough time for them to be able to prime open the exit gate. Uh, but NTT yeah. teleport is alive here. So once he downs the priestess, chairs him right away, and also recording, you mm -hmm. is really on the back foot in this match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, able to pop the pallet up and will be downing this priestess, which is dead on chair. I believe uh -oh. uh, you did block off that uh, mm -hmm. gate over there. Now, after bringing the priestess onto the chair, she can go for the teleport. 
Yeah, and now look, I love the discipline on you side checking first before he try he teleports because he's got to hold on to that. We did see, uh, yeah, Rie being moved in here just to make sure he's gonna try to pop that tinnitus. He could actually still go for more. So you know what? They're not out of the woods just yet. They want to be able to kite out this detention, but this detention just started. So they are not touching the exegate. They're trying to spread as far as apart as possible. But Rie oh! running straight into the clerk once again. There's no ball to utilize for Rie. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be a terror shot onto the Acrobat. And now you is just going to look at the gate and try to prevent mm -hmm. the Survivor from opening them. Uh, seems like the Survivor is taking turn opening the gate. Uh-oh, here we go. The exit gate almost open. Let's see if Yu's going to... Oh, oh, he's going to commit to a teleport right away. Wow. He senses it's almost open, but the, the roller coaster NTT, it's ready. And Yu has to walk all the way back, but that gate has not been touched mm -hmm. yet. So you still has some time to camp out this acrobat and see if wh where the survivors will be going. My god, it is a comeback of the century. They will be back at the first stop where you can totally camp out the survivor's side from opening the gate. Detention though, five yeah, seconds detention. left on the clock. So this is going to be a little tough for him. He did <sighs> record some hits. So honestly, if, uh, mm -hmm. if yeah, he just keeps smacking these survivors, they're going to go down eventually. Mm -hmm. So... And yeah, and, mm -hmm. and not and not to mention you record those uh Rose normal attack when she still had that uh detention. Mm -hmm. and so now with the recording, uh, uh she can, you know, take away uh, uh a full a uh, full hit from the survivor side. True. Uh, it, aiming for the normal hit, but it didn't connect to the forward. Yeah, the forward, you know, doing a great job just waiting till the end of, mm -hmm. well, at, at the end of that uh, first stop. But now both of them, they're all taking the oh. roller coaster all the way back. So Yu has to go all the way back here. And uh, it's 20 second cooldown on the side of the teleport. Mm -hmm. So can you make it in time? He's going to record more. Let's see if he can try to stop them from opening this exit gate. It's going to be a foot mm -hmm. race, ladies and gentlemen. And mind you, detention has already expired. Mm -hmm. You can still block them from opening the gate. Oh. It's a normal attack that is on the forward Ooh. and on on the psychologist. Are they able, are they unable to open the exit gate? Oh my god! And now they might go for the roller coaster once again. Teleport is ready though, uh, mm -hmm. NTT. This is oh. gonna be huge. So Great. you with a comeback of the century, as you said. Oh my god! It's tough for the survivor side. Yeah, it's in over. It's ain't yeah. over yet. The color start to thrive when you get into the endgame situation. I know. No exit no exit gate is open just yet. We did see a block happen. He used mm -hmm. the wrong recording, but this is a great uh chase, I would say, on the side of uh the clerk because teleport is ready. Once he downs this forward, chairs right Ooh, away. He's just gonna you... teleport, but the Oh my god, can, can he get Oh my god! Unable to get oh. the forward. Now the forward is gonna be riding all the way back. Tinnitus is still propped, so Yu is trying to look for the psychologist that's still hanging in this area since the mm. exit gate is just one tap away from opening. Oh, you actually going to the... Huh? Whoa. Uh, just, oh, you didn't oh realize that the, the roller coaster stopped at the third. Uh, stop yeah, there. but now he sees that Elsie is running out in the open here, but the... Oh my god! Able oh, to blocking the gate once again! Oh, that was so close. The psychologist is on timeout once again. Yeah. So now you noticing that the psychologist is going to open up this exit gate. Oh my god, it's going to be opened, NTT. It, it, Teleport! It? Uh -huh. uh, it's going now... to be open. And now, could the forward go for the dungeon escape? Or he could just sneak away through the exit gate. Now the psychologist is going to call. Oh, uh, yeah, going to heal the forward beautiful and now at least the psychologist can actually just crawl her way out of the exit gate this is a masterful plan well elsie trying to look for the dungeon the dungeon's probably all the way i got where is the dungeon he's at the walking carousel i believe oh yeah. my god he's making a full rotation around can he make it in time he has to be able to survive a regular hit and probably a chip damage hit but you mm -hmm. yeah since there's no detention in the air he's gonna have to time this hit well it seems like elsie sees the opening already goes for the regular hit can he now, get it in time the recording? You will have oh. time for the recording to happen. But oh. Elsie made the hit! And it is no. going to be a dungeon escape for Elsie! Wow! Oh. Just the back and forth, the ebbs and flows. Oh. MP, I would say MP getting a tie. Like, that, that's a victory in its own right. Because you mm -hmm. so close to getting a 4k there. But leave it to the Mad Penguins to stay true to their plan. 
and also stay resilient in the face of adversity there it honestly looked like a 4k at one point mm -hmm. and yeah the the point where they split up where the forward actually run away into the tent and the psychologist uh try to sneak into the gate is where the clerk actually start to freak out and you know she was trying to control the gate while catching that forward mm -hmm. so her mind is kind of you know over the moon there Mm -hmm. And yeah, eventually, when she uh, commits to teleport, it was too late. The psychologist was able to open the gate. Yeah, honestly, I mean, you could break down each sequence of that. And Mad Penguins with the forward, and Elsie with the uh, Elsie with the forward, and the psychologist as well. They were so good at you know what, just mm -hmm. constantly using the roller coaster. I think they bought unlimited rides on that thing, <laughs> and just constantly going back and forth. Even at the end game sequence, yes, the psychologist. I would say psychologist low key MVP of this game, mm. healing left and right, and also giving the forward the last uh, heal he needed to just kite out until dungeon. And mm. that was a long game. We thought Dream Witch games were long. This uh, Clerk yeah. games are a whole nother breed, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it is longer than a photographer game. <laughs> That's true. And we know how long photographer gameplays can go. So mm -hmm. let's check out the match stats here, NTT. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> it, it, it was quite a while for that last, for the exit gate. You know, the exit mm -hmm. gates were open, but for them to pop it open was just another story entirely. Mm -hmm. But Ciro and Elsie, one of the OGs of uh, Mad Penguins, just showing their veteran prowess being able to cut everyone almost at triple digits at this point. So mm -hmm. it's just beautiful start. The middle really went to you towards the end, but honestly, for a tied game on the survivor side, that's a victory. Yeah, that Wi-Fi here, uh, uh, able to back them that uh, draw that they have been long for in this game, because it was looking like a four man escape or a three man escape for the survivor side until you, you know, use the skill to lock that exit and it's a total nightmare for the survivor side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang, I mean, just... Uh, we did say that the game plan was just survive as long as you can and really frustrate the hunter, right? Because you, you can only observe so many exit gates and so many ciphers, but they were able to do that. They, they, they weathered out the early storm at the start, really play like, kited out two teleports, NTT. That was huge. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder if... Uh, yeah, he... Because right, we were saying maybe he should have brought Blink if that would be, yeah. be an early down situation. Mm -hmm. Could have changed things because we know how you is when he's camping and ciphers are at a standstill when it's three ciphers remaining. So uh, could have helped, but you know what? With that roller coaster, it's hard to say because it's. I think the teleport was kind of used well. It's just that the coaster was just such a good counter for the survivors with yeah. this clip. And not to mention the the very clean uh, rescue coming from LC with the elbow pad down into the basement. That is, you know, that, that could be an MVP on its own. Like able mm -hmm. to rescue the priestess in the basement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only the priestess who, who can do that with uh, full health. Yeah. Uh, there, each each uh, survivor really had their winning moments. Even the acrobat mm -hmm. had a great time. Mm -hmm. And the psychologist was healing left and right. Uh, also Priestess, you know, just providing that support for to extend the kite. So, yeah, Mad Penguins looking like, uh, honestly, they're looking real good in their group stage. So if they bring this type of energy, I feel like uh, they would definitely see that see that grand final spot if they're able to, you know, face this adversity and just try to counter. Because we did say that this might be a hunter-sided team. They were able to counter the the feared clerk hunter so mm -hmm. now moru you know he's known for the 4k in this map so skg survivors have to be the one to rise to the occasion at this point yeah the survivors i have to watch out for the breaking wheel coming from all uh, for coming from moru there or uh, you know moru could totally surprise over with the clerk because oh, clerk. He, yeah he can play clerk too <laughs> he could he really yeah. could so um, yeah could, could let's, be, let's, uh, <laughs> could yeah let's try to now. Let's try to talk about that. Would you want to surprise them or would you want to stick to your guns? But your best weapon has been studied, right? That's that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm thinking right now. Would you want to try and go with something that's out of the box but untested? Or go with something that's tested oh. but people studied for that exam? Oh, I might actually go for the surprise factor. Surprise. Yeah, I mean, surprise. as a fan, I would love to see that too. I, I would love to see more clerk, and I would love to see how they go. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, a surprise factor could be a total. Yeah, could, However, could be. However, 
I, I do understand what you're saying that yeah, that could be a risk on his side too, since you know what they could definitely study pollen, and we've seen how the survivors are so well diverse in in uh, their their survivor pool, and really known for getting ties. Mm -hmm. So it's still up in the air. Oh yeah, we we might actually you know predict this wrong. It could be a survivor sided matchup <laughs> that mm -hmm. we are seeing right here, since could they be. know their opponents so well. Could be. Actually, that could be the case, right? That we've known these two teams, like the Hunters, in the previous matches being the ones to get the points. Now it's the Survivor's time, like the flow. So, uh, yeah, just the le uh, lesson of the day. Do not ask us to predict anything, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you got players like the Mad Penguins just showing us, oh, you think this is, is going to be a Hunter-sided matchup? Watch this. We're able to get a tie out of the most one of the most dominant hunters in this mm -hmm. tournament so uh yeah mad penguins ladies and gentlemen there you have it's it unheard of. yeah the <laughs> I, I would say the abuse of the roller coaster <laughs> helped okay. them with the strategy and so let's try to think about the next round right because mm -hmm. obviously they're gonna ban the clerk uh the dream which is gonna come out mm, i'm uh, pretty sure we're gonna we're not gonna see moonlit river park for sure yeah that's for sure uh, I can't think of a map that can counter the Dream Witch, to be honest. Mm. There's she no can map. Shine in, yeah, she can shine in a lot of maps, to be honest. Like, we've seen Dream Witch is also in Moonlit River Park. We've seen Dream Witch wins on Chinatown, so... Mm. Uh, yeah, it really depends, but I think you might stick to just good old arms factory for the Dream yeah, Witch. Yeah, or even Ever Sleeping Town. It could be a good one, too, yeah. And then also just uh, just cancel out uh, Moru's uh, cancel out Moru's uh, uh, breaking, uh, wheel. breaking wheel. So yeah, could be, so. Could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arm Factory is a great map to cancel that breaking wheel. So it could be. I mean, I mean it's SKG time to choose the map for the round two. But mm -hmm. yeah, we are getting too ahead of ourselves here. We yeah, are getting right. into round one B, around round one second half here. Yeah. So um, something I do want to bring up though is the survivor side, right? Because. Mm -hmm. Um, out of uh, I did the match the stat the statistics right, and I didn't really note down the maps that they use. But Shane is the sole priestess, and they only use the priestess once. Oh. So I'm not sure how they're gonna bring out like um, because they really have to lock in priestess for sure, mm -hmm. right? I hope I hope yeah. they kind of have the same mindset as uh, MP here because you could actually make the case that everyone in that lineup also counters breaking wheel like oh, yeah. psychologist acrobat forward priestess that's a pretty solid lineup so we're just gonna wait and see ladies and gentlemen we're gonna head towards the picks and bands we see everyone in the chat the, pr uh, the prisoners as well big shout outs to hanako liana eggy 248 a lot of people were shishin in the chat for clerk the teleports but you got give some shishas to mad penguins they really did their homework here and sheesh. yeah sheesh <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, knowing Moru, I don't think he will ban the priestess since he will go for that breaking wheel. So it could right. be a seer ban almost immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, for Asylum Survivor, yeah, just to counter the breaking wheel, as you said, the acrobat, the uh, psychologist, um, and the enchantress, the enchantress too. Yeah, that's true. Seems like they want to prioritize, uh, well, the that's the mercenary, a mercenary and priestess to start things oh, off, which is great. Uh, they they do have uh, some forward players in Aidashi and also Minamoto, but I think they want to prioritize. So this is well, Moru. Let's see if he's gonna ban that forward. Yes, he has yeah, to. He will. He, he has to. Uh, they had a scary forward, so <laughs> he just had to go. Um, now it could be the acrobat making it appear, or even the matter that I'm seeing here, I believe. Wait, is that prisoner? Wait. I'm seeing a ponytail. Um, oh, it... <laughs> I don't want to call it just oh. yet, but oh my Whoa. god, a oh prisoner! God. Here we oh go. My god. So Cypher Rush, okay, they they have a main it's decoder. This is the first time that a prisoner appear in the tournament. Uh -huh. Yeah. So wow. uh, I'll definitely note that in the match stats, ladies and gentlemen. So wow, all the prisoner mains make some noise in the chat. Ooh. We got a Luca here. So now that bans the acrobat. So oh, prospector, prospector oh, at DT. <laughs> so wow, a harasser, a supporter, a decoder, a rescuer, an all-rounder. Well yeah, yeah a well-rounder. It's, it's all around. 
Yeah, the game's not going to tell you. A rescuer is needed. No, we got that covered. SKG just rounding everything out, but no more without hesitation going for the breaking wheel. So, I mean, he's got... He's got limited time since the pr prisoner is here, but he finds the prisoner, destroys the connection. Easy. Like, that's what he wants to go for. He wants to find the prisoner to start things off. So, yeah. very interesting that SKG leaned onto this because usually Prospector, you'd seen him second to third round. But, yep, SKG just showing. Yeah, you saw a lot of uh, Prospectors at the start of the match, you know what, in the, in the player profile. We're not going to disappoint. You're going to see a, a Prospector come out. Yeah, no surprise for the Prospector there. Uh, yet yeah, we know that three out of five of the survivor side from SKG are capable of playing the Prospector. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it kind of makes sense that the Prospector is uh, appearing in the first round here. Uh, Pollen, uh, obviously, gonna be uh, pulled out from Moro. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, do sound off in the chat. What you guys think is going to take this one? Once again, penguins and hearts. Penguins for the mad penguins. And SKG, I see it now, NTT. Yeah, it's definitely like a heart, how it's shaped. Yeah. So, oh, man. Just, them showing a lot of heart here. Having <laughs> a the vulnerability of bringing a, pris a prisoner to start things off, which we rarely see. We've, we rarely see mechanic also. So we don't see that much decoder since the meta has sort of shifted. Really waiting for accelerated decoding to for everyone to be a decoder. So... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous for this prisoner because Moru has his eyes set on that. There's a target on that prisoner's back. Yeah, but you know, out of all the decoder in the game, I believe the uh, prisoner is the most capable when it comes Hider. to kind. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and yeah, usually when we see the, if the survivor side want to go for the decoding progress, it's usually the postman that's going to be appearing. But mm -hmm. now it's a prisoner right off the bat. You don't think lawyer is the better kiter? I'm kidding. You get terror shock, bro. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, prisoner is really good, especially with that zap to start things off. And uh, I, I think one of his debuffs is like his heartbeat. But I mean, if with constant communication, you could just yeah. tell. So I guess yeah, they want that diversity of being have having a kiter and a decoder. So yeah, SKG. Honestly, even in the chat, they're saying they, they've been very, uh, they've been kind of like a tie team, tie team when it comes to survivors. We'll see. I mean, MP was def definitely took on the challenge, did get a tie coming into this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, Moonlit River Park, once again, NTT and Pot Spice on the mic at your service, giving you the commentary action, going straight oh. towards the bridge. Minamoto was there, but no, takes a hard left and goes against Yazin and Naya. Yeah, quite surprising that Moru actually get the best spawn for Hunter in the uh, in in, in Moonlit Rail Park, which is the first stop here. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Whoa. going for the bridge, but not the behind of the two story. Gonna get Jeez. a hit on the bridges, and Moru is bringing a six nine build, so detention and insulin. Yeah, this is what I'm scared of. Moru is one of those hunters that throws for three pointers every time he drops those traps. That was so on point. And now switching immediately after he vaulted that just to clean up some of these portals and taking a trick out of their book. But no roller coaster is here. And honestly, this is a breaking wheel. So it's going to be tough for you to even create that distance. Now forcing him to vault, which is great. And now we see that the prospector is here for that support. So, yeah. Now I see what the priestess was trying to do. Uh, was trying to, you know, create the distant. Um, Ooh. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the high different. Oh, oh able to uh. hit the priestess before the sun happens, slowing down the prospector, gaining wow. the respect of these survivors. Going, uh, I would say the survivors extending a little too much there in that exchange. Prospector, no. Uh, one more hit to falling down. You are feeding this breaking wheel. So once he gets that full presence, it's going to be real tough. He already has that snap and the extended spikes. So now we see that Minamoto is in the area getting ready for this rescue. But we see that the, you know what, Moru knows what's up. Yeah, Minato uh, hiding well, but not well enough. Moru got eagle eye over here. <laughs> Spotted out this mercenary and able to get two spikes onto this mercenary. So it could be a double down situation. Minato waiting for it. Oh, wow. Like you said, NTT, a double down situation incoming if he's able to down this priestess because the mercenary will expire soon enough since that delayed damage is already in effect. And we do see that Nyon still trying to kite out as much as possible out in the open. Once he switches to regular form, he will try and go inside this two story building. Four ciphers still remain. So it's still, oh, God, snaps through yeah. the window. 
Uh, Moru just waiting for two spies to be on Priestess there to go for the snap immediately, not wanting to deal with the Priestess at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and now Priestess is going to be put on a chair for the second time with Prospect and Prisoner. I don't think they will go for the rescue. Yeah, it's going to be... I mean, the distance was already established, but this is the breaking wheel going already to the carousel area, spotting out uh, Yazen here and being able to spike him in the process. He wants to find that prisoner. We'll leave the mercenary down because he takes a long time to get up. And now also spots out the dungeon. The snap. Oh, oh my god, in the oh. blink! Oh. My what? god. Uh prisoner was trying to, you know, go mm -hmm. for the zap to uh prevent Moru from going for the burst, but you know, the time it was kind of off and the blink immediately coming from Moru able to down the prisoner. Uh -huh. uh, in, in a bit. <laughs> in spectacular fashion what a yeah. sequence on the side of moro now minato is up and we do see that the mercenary is i mean uh just trying to just uh, survive as long as possible but honestly ntt this is a such a moro sided game and snaps once again mercenary will be falling down uh yazen is the only one that is out and about has a spike on him so we see that moro just avoiding the magnet being placed Let's see if Yazen can close out the distance here to save this prisoner before he expires. Uh, <laughs> Moru trying to spin around. <laughs> yeah. That's making me dizzy. dizzy I'm here. so dizzy, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you see uh, a nice magnet on the side of Yazen to create that distance, but oh! goes for the swing. And this, yeah, everyone's down, and we're just going to go for a GG. Wow. Quick oh, game. Very fast. Less than five minutes. Holy smokes. I think that oh. was less than two minutes. <laughs> Oh, I, no, I was looking at the timer. It was like 3 yeah. minutes 40. Yeah, yeah but again, that's wow. just in-game timer. We're going to look at the match stats in a bit. But mm -hmm. honestly, I feel like that's one of the fastest hunter-sided games we've seen. Moro probably should get an award for that. But <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the okay. survival side was trying to go for an all router team. And it doesn't seem to work out against Moru uh, mm -hmm. Breaking Wheel. Yeah, uh, when, it, when it came to the strategy, I think... They, I think they extended too much on the the just the support too much. I mean, the priestess alone, right? You, uh, she was trying to just uh, bait it out, uh, like the prospector to keep. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that stunning? Uh, but at that point, we know Moru. He he with those two v one situations, he knows how to deal with it. Even the stuns, he'd gladly take a stun because that's only a momentary hiccup. But ultimately, he got what he wanted, which is downing the priestess, injuring the prospector, stuffing the rescue of the mercenary. And just once the priestess was down and out, it was just, uh, I would say, a domino effect of uh, dominance on the side of Moru. Yeah, after that double down, everything seems to went downhill for the survivor side. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the prisoner uh, missing the shock and the blink immediately happened. Yeah, let's like, talk it, about that. Too. In the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was a good... I, I think, you know, Prisoner with that zap could definitely cancel it out. But I think it was a little off timing. The spikes already landed. And you saw that the blink through the T-wall area was just so on point that it took yeah. us off guard. And probably took the Prisoner off guard as well. <laughs> so, yeah, this is more. You gotta, you know, go go with the, the classics, right? We were saying, like, surprise. No, I think his performance yeah. was definitely... I would say a surprise in a sense of how fast he worked. He was so yeah. proactive at the start. Mm -hmm. yeah, immediately go for the 4K without blinking. Like mm -hmm. that, that game went by so fast. After uh, yeah, one down, another one down, another one down. I, and when I the prospect goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of a sequence where he was on the losing end uh, of the trades there. Like you mm -hmm. said, when he downed the... When he got, yeah, he did get stunned by the prospector and the priestess drop, but the swing of the of the breaking wheel was enough uh, to hit the priestess. Then he got stunned again, but the priestess was down already. Uh, we could actually recall the entire sequence because how fast uh, <laughs> Moru worked here. <laughs> yeah. But let's look at the match stats here because uh, just the display of dominance. Only two ciphers pop. Wait, yeah, it's all four minutes. Yeah, it was a four minute. Was that a four okay? Yeah, it was close to four minutes, I believe. In, yeah, so less than a five-minute game. Full mm -hmm. presence already dealt, uh, I believe, in the second chairing of the Priestess. So yeah, he, uh, Moru works and works yeah. fast, ladies and gentlemen. No detention needed. <laughs> no detention no. needed, even though Moru went for a 6 not yet. The mm -hmm. longest cutting time for the Survivor was actually the Prospector with that 81.6 seconds of kiting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I... 
an, an all rounded team seems to be, you know, uh, not a good way to go up against a breaking wheel. Yeah. Usually, usually when we see a team going up against a breaking wheel, we'll see better acrobat um, entomologists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when it came to that rescue, the the mercenary had to go in. The prospector was already injured because he kind of overextended himself. Usually, when breaking wheels, right, you want to be able to have. We've seen a lot of entomologists give support, acrobat with a uh, bomb support. So, I really think, yeah, especially when the pre the prisoner was down, it was a GG situation, and uh, it was a seven two. So, completing my thought there, uh, as much as I love seeing that prisoner, uh, Moro was really able to counter it really well, counter the entire lineup, leading uh -huh. to the seven two. Mad Penguins, ladies and gentlemen, is in the lead in this matchup. Immediately. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, SKG need to, you know, wipe off the dust and now thinking straight about this game. They have to get at least a draw in order to move the game onto a round three. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the winning condition, <laughs> at least a draw uh, or a win for the mm -hmm. survivor side. Uh, for for the side of SKG, sorry. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. the map pick is gonna be. It, it, essential very essential time. right mm -hmm. yeah and speaking of which uh nail chiming in in our in our little chat here goes it was really smart of uh the mad penguins to play a big map it's a good place to oh. counter clerk so uh yeah. big shout outs to nell ladies and gentlemen uh for giving us his uh, insights and also people in the chat also just showing like the clerk sheesh and whatnot and also i mean this the way Moro played that was just so masterful. It was two birds and one stone. You counter the clerk and you buff the breaking wheel. So they couldn't ask for anything better. Now we're going to change uh, things up. We're whoa. going with an, uh, an, 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 an Anomaly. Uh, I was going to say Anomaly. Yeah. Uh, anomaly. Uh, ana uh, ana anomaly. Wow. Anomaly. Anomaly. Wow. I'm, I'm going to yeah. mispronounce Anomaly. But Ban is uh, going to be benched for now. But we are going to see Anomaly come in. So. Uh, wait, I'm just gonna try to ban. I think ban, yeah, known for that priestess, known for that support, and anomaly. Uh, is, is that does that player ring a bell to you, NTT, or is it the first time you're seeing that name? It's the first time. Okay. Uh, so yeah, they might. So you know, getting a win into round one, they might, you know, going for experiment, uh, experimental type of survival lineup here mm -hmm. with this new character, uh, with, with this be. new player in the survival mm -hmm. side. So it could be a a, a testing round for them. For this mm -hmm. round two against SKG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be because they're in a good spot and we've seen some teams do that. You know, just get some flight time on certain survivors or certain metas. I think it depends also on the, the map pick on what survivors that they're going to be bringing into the table. But like you said, I think we're going to see a, a map that would complement that Dream Witch since you, for sure, her sculpt yeah. is going to get banned. Uh, okay. You again, big shout outs to you with his godlike ability on using just hard hunters. Like, I mean, uh -huh. we've seen him use uh, Mad Eyes and with Clerk and with Dream Witch. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, picking a map can be, you know, shadow banning some character on the survivor side or, you know, on the hunter side or the other. So, like, um, Secret Hospital or even Arm um, Secretary can be a shadow ban onto that uh, breaking wheel. Where the survival side can, could go for the ban onto another character on more room. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking if they if they bring the hospital in, yeah, you're buffing. I, I really feel like uh, when it comes to veteran experience, if we're gonna match up SKG survivors with Mad Penguins, uh, I think Mad Penguins are really well. They they've seen well at least in IVC they've seen a lot of diversity. And if you give the Mad Penguin survivors, especially the LC and Zero, if you give them hospital, dude, you're gonna overpower them like crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. like even with the roller coaster that we saw before, <laughs> they are they able to use that roller coaster so well that I'm afraid what they are going to do with the hospital era in the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this That's map pick has to be on point mm -hmm. for the side of SKG if they want to go for a strategy that could benefit them. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. So this is uh, this is definitely something that we have to take note of, ladies and gentlemen, because SKG coming in from the wild card stage, they did gain a little bit of momentum, but Mad Penguins there to halt that. Now, this map pick is make or break because uh, they have to choose right because Mad Penguins, if they win this uh, round number two, they immediately get a point in their group stage. And that's going to be tough because it puts more pressure on SKG coming into the next match. And they ban Hospital and look where we are. Yeah. Good old Arms Factory. So, yeah, my prediction was kind of right. Uh, both mm -hmm. 
both Second Hospital and Arm Factory are bad map for the Breaking Wheel. So yeah, the MP can just ban one of the mm -hmm. two maps and, that they could pick. And like you mentioned, Dream Witch. Really good on arms, really good in Ever Sleeping Town, yeah. but they didn't, pay, they didn't pay rent for Ever Sleeping Town, just like you. We got booted out. We're gonna go to Arms Factory now. My god. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I had to bring that up. My bad. You still gotta pay the. <laughs> the tenants yeah, and I had to pay the rent. I paid. Yeah. I paid for six months already, so it's fine. Dude, the, you, you're you're not gonna get your deposit back because of that floor, dude. You, oh, <laughs> that floor yeah. Floor. I will have to patch it on day one. <laughs> exactly. So, arms factory. Let's talk yeah. about it because, and I think that's actually they kind of predicted this because if I look at my notes, ban known to being the priestess and. And a Lomi, a new care, a new survivor oh. comes into the fray. An Did I pronounce that right? Analomi. Analomi. Analomi okay. coming in. They, they mean priestess isn't really recognized here in this map, so it's fine to bench your known priestess. So yeah. I can't wait to see what Analomi uh, comes up with here, because he was brought in for a reason. Mm. Yep, yeah, they could try out a new strategy in this map. Again, uh, most definitely, it could be a clerk ban on the survivor side of MP, or they, you know, could disrespect that mm. clerk and go for the I Dream Witch. Uh, I mean, the clerk ban. Um, uh, I, do, sure. I don't. I don't know if they want to roll that dice. Yeah. They got. They got away with so much in that game because they had mm. that coaster. Arms Factory not so forgiving. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, no coaster. It's just raw kiting. Rock hiding and a lot of pallets that you just disregard. I would say Mad Penguin, yeah, they, they have to ban Clerk. That's a, not yeah. a question. If, you, yeah. if not, then that's you're giving you a gift. Like that is an early Christmas present for you. <laughs> but they will have to face up against uh, you, Dream uh, Witch. Dream Witch. Yeah. Which, which is I, also very formidable. Yeah. Which I would think, though, at least it's the devil you know or the hunter you know than the hunter you don't know, right? It's mm. going in. I'm sure they've faced countless of Dream Witches. I'm, I mean, they, they went back and forth uh, with, with uh, God J. They went back in, in, in the previous IVC. They, they went, they've, they, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, a lot of Dream Witches here in Southeast Asia. So I think they might have a little more to bring into the table. But they can't let go of the fact that his Dream Witch, Yu's Dream Witch, is still a big threat. Yeah, a lot of threat in this map. Um, you know... Waiting for them right here from you, we could mm. actually see the Mad Eye. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, NTT. Thank you mm. for the reminder. Holy smokes, I totally forgot about that. The Mad uh, Eye's coming into Arms Factory. That's that's dangerous. Yeah, a lot of corridor. You can totally block <laughs> block the entire Arms Factory area, and you know just come in for the kill. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see what MP is going to bring here, especially with a new survivor in the lineup. They could, they could have an idea of what character they are going to be using mm -hmm. here. I'm sure so, though, if Mad Penguins did their homework with Yu's clerk, I'm pretty sure they didn't sleep on his uh, Mad Eyes too. So I can see it go two ways: either they allow the Mad Eyes to come in, or they respect it enough to just face the Dream Witch, since mm -hmm. Yu is really known for that Mad Eyes. So that that's actually yeah good uh, good catch there NTT because I, I honestly I was like yeah you he's a clerk main right no Mad Eyes Mad, Mad Eyes and Koa <laughs> yeah and especially when you know there's more ban on the line but it's going to be Moru which is going to be doing the hunters first mm -hmm. over here with SKG survivor side um, two ban on the side of Moru at uh, the first phase also one hunter ban on the side of SKG. Uh, yeah. no need to ban the persistent right now. This mm. could be a seer and mercenary or a seer and forward ban for both. Could be. I mean, that also kind of unlocks more of his bon bon because like, his if he has he brings out the dream witch sculptor too. But as of late, we have been seer. We have been seeing seer being priority banned plus those two. Yeah, mercenary. Uh, we also see seer uh, forward. Rare that we see unless it's like. I don't know, MX is batter that you want to ban him right away at the start. <laughs> uh, but like you said, yeah, Seer is, and Mercenary not going to see uh, the Arms Factory. And we do see oh. that. Uh, wow, they're tempting him to use the Breaking Wheel. I don't think Moro's going to bite on that. Yeah, Moro could be using the Bonbon instead. 
yeah. because he I know Moru is a very capable hunter. He can mm-hmm. play a lot of hunters here. So it's impossible for Survivor Side to ban all the possible, you know, character that he could play. Is that a... Okay. I uh, after that was... Yeah. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, he. I, I was waiting for him to, like, I was looking at the forward, but he has a helmet on. I was like, who is that? Is that a wilding? It's not. Anyway. Oh. Enchantress, Enchantress being banned here. Um, hmm. Hmm. Is this gearing up towards a Bonbon? Bon? If it's an Enchantress ban? Could be. Oh, could hmm. be Cleric also. Could be. Postman coming in. Well, yeah, she does uh, get chip yeah. when she gets chip damage, and Bonbon bon wants to close out that distance. Could be, mm-hmm. but uh, more not revealing his cards just yet because if this if he was going to go for a dream, which he wants to get rid of like healers and whatnot. Uh, let's see who his last ban is going to be. Maybe a patient, psychologist, probably. Postman's in, so that's technically their decoder mm-hmm. and uh, support character. So everything's still up in the air for me when it comes to the hunter more who's going to bring to the table. So I'm predicting either Clerk or Bon Bon. Um, Banning the Entomologist. Wow. Um, mm. Yeah, it's still out in the air. BQ, maybe? Uh, BQ in round two? Yeah, uh, round two is too soon, soon for his BQ. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have to maybe echo your sentiments. Clerk or Bon Bon. Um, this is also, I, I would say it's a very diverse ban on Moru's side. And mm-hmm. I think he's doing a great job kind of keeping it close to the chest. A gardener? A, oh! Wow! Wait, so that's another... not a gun! Wait, is that... You sure? Oh, There's that's a, a gun though. It's wow. a gardener. Wow. Yeah, honestly, um, it was this team to bring out gardener. Uh, wait, let me just... It, was it... Who's the one that brought out gardener? We saw a total of two gardeners, now three, on the side of Nyon. And yeah, it is a bon bon. So yeah, it seems like yeah he just doesn't want to deal with the the what's that the stuns of the enchantress and also mm-hmm. the entomol the bees of the entomologist could really sidestep the bombs so mm-hmm. it's 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 much more clear now but uh, wow a gardener coming in once again ladies and gentlemen courtesy of the survivors of SKG yeah um you know the gardener has been used a lot in the tournament but it's for countering the uh, Bloody Queen. Yeah, single so hits, now right? uh, against a Bon Bon, uh, the bomb can break the shield, and you know, a Bon Bon can just go for the normal hit immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see what the survivors are. Will go up against this Bon Bon. Uh, no potential rescuer against a Bon Bon yet, mm-hmm. but the uh, the acrobat can go for that uh, flame ball and Could. lock yeah, and lock the ability to throw bomb from Bon Bon. Mm-hmm could be and we've seen yeah just acrobats not really bring that broken windows and just carry a tide turner that could help out so they have to be on point skg's uh survivors side again kind of still delving on the well-roundedness because with this postman not really going for uh just a brawny lineup as we usually see or any rescuers so this is tough because this is actually sending a message that uh tomorrow that if you down one yeah we won't have a dedicated rescuer so it's going to be tough. You might, they might actually have a hard time even just making the first rescue happen. So let's head into the match. NTT, we do see that uh, Moro is uh, already transitioning to the center part. Nyon is right behind him, but three survivors are already uh, right in front of him in the factory area. And actually, one survivor moving from the shack area into that uh, uh, sandbag uh, carding area, Uh-oh. going for another six twelve bill mm-hmm. uh, with. Um, uh, I believe that is the uh, stunning reduction uh, mm-hmm. uh, rage. Yeah, so uh, yeah, v- definitely building that stun reduction because of that forward. Do you mm-hmm. see that the forward, uh, sorry, the postman and the acrobat were oh. kind of seen in the same area, but let's see how uh, Shane will be able to oh! try and kite this one out. Okay, at least avoid the bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, avoid the bomb uh, immediately coming from the postman. Now, we'll be trying to kite out this bonbon in the factory area. Whoa. Oh, the support coming from the forward. Mm-hmm. Nice so, job. Yeah, still able to allow Shane to transition away. Now the dog bite will try to be coming inbound, but nice avoidance. Hugging the door area. And we do see that Moro is trying to close in. Oh, he kind of oh. lost track of him. So this allows the postman just to get a little more distance. Let's see if he can send out a letter in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Link is available bomb. though. Uh-oh, is he going to oh, need not it? Not even no. needing the bling. Oh my god. Wow, Moru and... downing the postman early game. Oh, wow. And Moru, you know, knowing the basement is in the factory, but afraid that the forward could go in for the support. Moru mm-hmm. just going to share this uh, postman right out here. Uh, 
uh, and keeping. I believe that is the uh, acrobat. Yes, the in acrobat the type. Oh my yeah, god! He was able to get the acrobat in that process. So wow. uh, playing with fire is Yaz in here. Oh, oh, that cipher is so close. But he was he chased them out, so he's got to open up another cipher. So yeah, it seems like um, they might play it a little more conservatively here. Acrobat already at the shack area. Gardener popping her first cipher. While the forward still, I, I believe, yeah, in the uh, in the sand, well, the factory cipher there. So it seems like Moru might have to just wait this one out and go for another chase. Which again, it's going to be kind of easy pickings because he has that blink available and that control bomb. Yeah, so I was, I know that uh, Moru is a capable one-one player, so they are not risking it with a rescue here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna sell this uh, postman right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moro seems to be approaching yeah. the acrobat, which already got chip damage uh, previously. He knows. Yeah, he, he knows. knows. I mean, this is the best possible chase, right? Because one more, just control bomb and just a regular hit, and this acrobat is yeah. down. He and does not to have... mention, the blade is still available. That is very true. So NTT, let's see how long this uh, acrobat can last against Moro. And yeah, on two balls. Oh, and oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, uh, question wow. was answered, NTT, not that long. Moru is really, like, zero to 60, all gas, no breaks in this group stage. This is like a deja vu, a bling immediately down, like in the previous match. Moru is mm. really consistent with a bling. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's been on point, and uh, honestly, I, I don't see him use any other, like, trait because he's so effective with this blink. Mm. Oh, but... uh. Uh, there's no tinnitus, so I'm not sure what Moru was trying to do there. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's going to be uh, the tinnitus pop up from the uh, forward. Uh, gonna so try to get a chip damage onto this uh, forward first and go for oh. the normal hit. Okay, oh! just gets the normal hit, but the mm -hmm. bombs are gonna start exploding. One more, and the acrobat will be falling down. Drops a two second bomb, able to avoid Ooh. it in time. Nice sequence, but the control bomb. Oh, able to oh. dodge it, but no, acrobat. It gets hit by a regular bomb. Now forward's got to get healed up if he's going to try to go for that second rescue because it's way too risky for him to even try going with that type of health. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the final Cypher isn't isn't prime yet, so mm -hmm. they're still playing with fire here if they are planning to go for the rescue. Team size forward is going for the stun rescue. But no, no. He's gonna... oh! oh, wow, able to drop it into oh, unable to drop it in time. Mm -hmm. So now this actually buys oh! a little more time, but the forward oh in the process <laughs> double down NTT. Are you serious? My god, uh, uh a great uh, utilization of the bomb downing the forward, also the acrobat in an instant. And now Gardner is in the boiling pot. <laughs> now she, mm -hmm. she has to go for the pop immediately if she wants to deal with this uh, bonbon. Uh oh. Will she though? Oh my gosh, no. Oh. Just trying to avoid. Let's see if Moru. He's he's got to watch two places at the same time. The chair. Mm -hmm. Well, three. The chair, the forward, and the cipher that's about to pop. No, forward gets up in time. Can he make the rescue happen? He's actually using all the football. The cipher is already primed. He's going to fall. Oh! oh my god, the early pop. And now the forward oh. can rescue. Mm, the early pop. But they <laughs> dropped the pallet at the wrong side, and the forward will be oh. down. And not to mention. The forward had already lost the cell here, yeah. so Moro can totally go for the acrobat. I gotta watch that again. It seemed like an early pop. It seemed like the acrobat had a little more time on that mm -hmm. chair, but then they yeah. pop it right away, and now it seems like the gardener is the only one safe and sound. Detention, Whoa. Bon Bon chasing you. Full presence, mind you, with Blink online already. Yeah. Let's now see if he's gonna down. Oh! oh! Ah, oh, able to hit him out of the air. That was so close if he missed that one. Mm -hmm. Seems like Jason is trying to get down into the basement just to buy some time with the survivor side here. Yeah. Moro will be sharing this acrobat in the three pallet area to keep the forward at bay. Oh my god, but wait, the gardener, can he pick him up in time? Oh my god, able to pick up the gardener, oh, unable to Moro. swing, can he get him in time? But now they have to make a mad dash towards the exit. This is a bonbon, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't have the best mobility, but has a lot of bombs. Yeah, watch out for the bomb here. If they can't avoid all the bomb, it could be a draw coming from a survivor side. It could side. be. Oh my god, wait a minute. Yeah, the no. able to exit. Oh! It's a tie. My god. <laughs> Uh, what a yeah, yeah, what, what a, a sequence, sequence of events. Honestly, it uh, looked like Moru was just able to uh, well, uh, about I mean say I would have to say same sentiments of how the first round went on you's side. So now ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a game. They were able to tie wow. things up. 
all um, all the survive all of the all you has to do is yeah just get a tie again and then we can start round number three mm -hmm. so let's um, talk about it ntt highlights lowlights uh the pop it's immediately the pop think mm -hmm. uh, here's the sentiment that i'm thinking mm -hmm. they went for the pop because they think that moru wouldn't dare to go for the normal hit mm. moru was trying to go for the bomb hit there so they had to pop immediately to allow the fort to come for the rescue mm -hmm. so yeah uh, popping the cipher and one one wasn't keen on going for the normal hit there, so she mm -hmm. he, he was just dropping bomb, uh, yeah. giving the pop to the forward, allow him to approach the chair with a faster time because the pop also allows survivor to get a speed boost. boost. Yeah, that's true. Honestly, it's it's this type of play style that that really excites me with these type of teams. I think mm -hmm. it also kind of caught Moru off guard because this looked like yeah. a game that he was gonna win, realizing mm -hmm. that fast pop dropping the pallet and also the forward i think that was kind of if, looking back maybe a little calculated on his side dropping the pallet for him um, to be the one to get down and the acrobat to move on away um, um nayon able to get the rescue uh well able to pick up the forward in time but wow what a what a clutch uh well pick up on the side of the garden mm. even though it kind of looked like moro is going to take this one guys uh the survivors biting back here able to get themselves a tie up against uh, a yeah. formidable hunter in the bonbon bon of moro i mean moro was trying to camp out three things there the forward being down the chair and the cypher the gardener was just decoding but moro was afraid that the gardener would go in for the rescue mm -hmm. so yeah uh, he kind of allowed the forward to self heal and approach the chair uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, okay, with a bon so bon. let, let's let's think about that sequence, right? Because he was guarding the the he was guarding the well the acrobat and the chair, the cipher mm -hmm. as well, and the forward. Could he have chaired the forward or is bring him closer? I think uh, I think he mm -hmm. could have chaired the forward, but he mm -hmm. was afraid if he went for the chair, the gardener, gardener. would come in for the rescue. So that's what but, I'm uh, thinking. It, yeah, it could have delayed the cipher progress, right? But uh, still, it's, yep. it, it's it's a little tough. Uh, I guess you know, in the moment, right, he really had to pick his battles, and he decided to camp it out, which kind of gave that opening for the gardener to have that surprise pop in. In that in that moment, the forward was healing up. So, so that's why you know, you just say that uh, Bonbon bon didn't have the greatest uh, mobility, also mm -hmm. not the greatest pressure onto the map. So that's why mm -hmm. the survivor was uh, able to decode uh, that fast, even mm -hmm. though. It was the postman, I believe, got down uh, in a very quick fashion. Yeah. And not to mention the double down situation, just bring it back before the camping happened, right? Uh -huh. The way he was able to down the forward and the acrobat, and the gardener was the only one up in the last cipher. It looked like a pretty solid game. I'm looking back at the highlights again. What a stun on the side of the forward, <laughs> able to free up the acrobat. And unfortunately, in that process, he did get down. Acrobat uh -huh. was also down in the in, in the in the way. I'm looking at it now. When he chaired the acrobat, the gardener was actually at like around 70% uh, progress. Mm -hmm. So he went for the middle cipher, um, the middle chair, which uh, I think maybe uh, also, yeah, it, he could have yeah. chaired near the the gardener, right? Yeah, just just to keep the cipher at bay. So mm -hmm. could be a misstep on the side of Moru. Um, uh, in the yeah. heat of the moment, right? It, it yeah. seemed like the right thing to do, but again, we got the resource of time and replay. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked like it was a, a good, well, a good showing, but he kind of created a, a split situation for himself to watch mm -hmm. the center of the map and also the, the the shack area. I mean, when you are in the moment, it's hard for you to think clearly. Mm -hmm. So he just think about, you know, sharing this acrobat and uh, he's gonna camp out that uh, forward. He didn't think that the gardener would have the guts to decode. <laughs> I know. Hear him. Yeah, this is a different team, man. SKG, mm -hmm. the survivors, they play really unconventionally. I mean, mm -hmm. the, I would you say the gardener pick worked? Because we never really saw her online. She was just the main yeah, decoder, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. It could have been better if they bring a decoder, but you know, bringing a decoder kind of make yourself the target, like how you mm -hmm. see the postman over there. You the know what would be cool? In, mm. Instead of uh, healing that forward, she should have broke the chair in the center <laughs> for it. <laughs> but, you know, healing forward is actually good. Yeah. I just said that because, like, it's a gardener. But even that, oh, man, if, if he was able to get a swing onto the forward while he was carrying the acrobat, could have changed things. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that stun coming from the forward really changed the game. Mm -hmm. It kind of put uh, Moru at the spot where he has to chair two survivors 
and care about the cipher in the moment. Um, and the pop immediately could. Uh, that is a, an outplay by the survivor side. That's for yeah. certain. They pop where Moru wasn't, you know, keen big on brain. going for the normal hit. I would say big brain, big brain, big brain all moment. part of the plan. Like, oops, no, 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 no. It was part of the plan, guys. That pop. <laughs> it's not a calculated. <laughs> calculated there we go yeah it, it seems like the the match just ended on the side of the stream and everyone's saying ggs uh, to mm. both sides because yeah it was a tie and what a scramble i would say that was a very heart pumping edge of your seat white mm. knuckle moment and i don't oh man like uh, both sides still played really well and yeah definitely not the last we'll see amoru if we go for a round number three but now it's the survivors' turn, right? The survivors mm -hmm. were able to tie, giving them that momentum, and now having a a ban on their side. Yeah, I feel like they can. Uh, they have to prepare themselves either for the Dream Witch or the. I gotta the, see. You, I think. Oh, even the Mad Eye. Oh, the, the Mad Eye. Yeah, the Mad Eye. That's what I was thinking. Who, so... if, if you were in Mad Penguin's side, which mm. which would which would you, which evil would you rather pick? Either the Mad Eyes to face or the Dream Witch. Ah, now uh, it's get interesting because I know MP really trained well with very, uh, with a lot of beta character, but Mada isn't one of them. So if you was trying to go for the surprise factor, it could be the Mada that is making an appearance here. Uh, but I digress. It's, let's get into the uh, picks and ban for round one, uh, for round two, second half in Arms. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the Hunter ban. I want to see. I know it's yeah, I have, I have to see. It has to be a clerk, right? Please be a clerk. You don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that clerk again, so you're going to have to uh, choose to counter either the Mad Eyes or the Dream Witch because you got away with so much. That was honestly a get-out-of-jail-free card with how the roller coaster meta was so good. Big shout-out mm -hmm. to the Mad Penguin showing that, yeah, great pick on the side of the map, not just for the survivors, but for the hunter as well, getting more of that buff. Mm -hmm. So you, on the other hand, very seasoned, very known for picking, as you mentioned, like the really hard, unconventional hunters and Mad Penguins training for the conventional. So let, will they be ready for it? Yeah, two hooded figure on the band screen here with the <laughs> Seer and the... Uh, oh, Whoa. mending the Rim Witch! Oh my oh god. My god. I was like, they want to roll the dice again on oh. this. Wow. Dare I say, you know what? Clerk is even worse in Arms Factor because she's... I mean, it's, it's a small map. The control's there. The pallets just bring... Actually, you could have the same... Well, just take out the... Don't bring teleport, but top-down mm. build, confined space. Oh my god. Yeah. Banning the enchantress coming from the side of you is there, it's, it's panning to be a clerk match. I'm yeah, actually surprised sure. to see the Dream Witch in the ban. Okay. This is gonna show. If, if Mad Penguins can get a victory over uh, Yu's clerk, they are for real and they have studied the clerk. Mm. So, um, man. Uh, Here we go. They're gonna go round oh! number two. Banning the Can dancer. I mean, I, he was from Money Sweep, right? He's got I'm so sexy. <laughs> he probably has <laughs> okay, been faced okay. with a lot of dancers. Like, get that okay. dancer out of here. Mm -hmm. And also, we've seen a lot of good dancer metas where they just set the entire there arms factory. There we go. I Boom. know. The only decoder that can counter the clone is the Explorer. Good. Yeah, that's true. Because you can... <sighs> I think shoutouts to Soy. She did bring this up last week where... Yeah, the Explorer able to... Oh, wait! Oh, we're not done yet! No, okay, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. Sorry, we're going to give our analysis. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. he can hold on to his pages, ladies and gentlemen, and be able to just surprise pop left and right. So mm -hmm. you've got to be careful here, especially, I guess, yeah, they really did their homework. They want, they want this smoke. They want to be mm -hmm. able to go through the fire and flames of this clerk once again. So, yeah, the explorer in the game. Um, it's, it's surprising to see this um, meta being used once again, but it's a clerk, so you have to counter her some, some in some way or another. If mm -hmm. the explorer is found first, it's gonna be detrimental for survival. Oh yeah, side. but that's a if, GG's already. Yeah, Shake but my hand. if Rip. the clerk allow the explorer to roam around the map, it oh, could no. be an easy ending for the side of MP here because they only need a three a three man escape or a bar. So let me just point out, it's Anna Lomi uh, that's using this explorer. So he's an expert hide and seek player, ladies and gentlemen. So 
I'm gonna, so that's I'm why gonna watch he's it. Hiding a, so that's why exactly. he's hiding away from us. <laughs> exactly. That's how good he is. He hid himself away until the group stage. Until this moment, ladies and gentlemen, where he's going to activate in Arms Factory. Let's head into the match. Once again, NTT and Fox Spice giving you the commentary action. Uh oh. The same spawn as before with uh, Moru NTT. here. Oh. No, he's right there. Wait. Oh. Okay, okay. If he turns to the right, this is going to be so detrimental. He's going to have yeah. to stay. He's it, he, it, yeah, he's kind of turning, <laughs> but he spotted out the uh, oh. the, the the forward in the that factory area. So Xvaro will be roaming around the map. <laughs> that was close, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking at the right side of the screen. He was just tiptoeing his way around the pallet yeah. area. Now Elsie would gladly take this kite if it oh! if it means. What? Oh my God! I, Are you able to find him? Uh, just a moment. Oh my you, God! You did. did you didn't bring uh, tinnitus. He did not. He did so not. It, You're right. Oh, so a three six twelve bill coming mm. from the side of you without tinnitus. Very it's, brave. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like he might. You know, the tinnitus could be your worst enemy up against an explorer, right? Oh, if you could just figure and look at it. So he's gonna rely mm. on his eyes, ladies and gentlemen. That's mm -hmm. what he's gonna do. But I mean, allowing the explorer just to roam around is still very scary, NTT. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, he has been spotting out only the acrobat, and you yeah. check, uh, you checking out the cipher is gonna be put to no use because the explorer could uh, is gonna just be you know roaming around the match mm -hmm. and uh, find out that the uh, password page is in order mm -hmm. to decode. Now, nice. oh my god, the blink! Oh, okay. bring, I, yeah, yeah. I, I I love the route that Rai picked. Uh, yeah, we do see like a six three uh, yeah six three twelve build on the mm -hmm. side of you, uh, Rie. You know, and he did try to run away from the pallets being broken, but now just the recording is gonna take place. But we do see that you is gonna try to circumvent here, and mm -hmm. Rie honestly ran into the clerk a lot. So let's see how long this will last because uh, you downing this acrobat would definitely be hard, especially early on. There's no ciphers that have been popped yet, NTT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rie, great understanding of the clerk. So, you know, whenever he vaults, he's just gonna use the ball to jump over the window to not allow the clerk to record that uh, rec that, that action. Now, mm -hmm. able to cut short of Rie's uh, route, but wasn't able to get an overhead onto that acrobat. And now, extending Dang. the kite, the forward is going to be here for the support. Yeah, is he gonna be able to stun in time? Oh! Able to cancel out the vault of this clerk. So good tandem on the side of the acrobat and the forward. So still oh, buying so much time yeah. as Rie, but I gotta look at the inventory of this acrobat. He has no more bombs. Well, mm -hmm. he's not equipped with a bomb just yet. He's gonna have to gain one by kiting. Drops the pallet in time, but the pallets Actually. mean nothing. Able to block, but no, oh, able to reach oh. distance. Forward, eating a hit just to buy enough time for this acrobat to transition away. Oh, and Oh my Explorer. god, you you mm. did record that explorer, but as he finished that cipher, so it was mm -hmm. put to no use. Now Rie got a transition back into this kiting area where the pallet is still available for him. Now dropping the pallet will be popping it up mm. and downing this acrobat in Yep. Uh uh it, it could be in the mid game situation already. Yeah, I mean it was a two cipher kite, but against the clerk, that's still very impressive. Uh -huh. So now the forward has to be oh, healed oh, up. Uh oh, and trying to record this... here. Oh my god, he sees no, the, the explorer. explorer. Oh, yeah, it's, the... The explorer. it's actually he coming in for rescue. Mark. Okay, the scratch marks are coming in. He knows it's going to be the explorer. He's going to hit right away. Mm -hmm. Able to hit, get the rescue. So he's going to focus back on the acrobat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no re no passwords pages on to ex the explorer yet. Seems mm -hmm. like Rie is moving out the area. Uh, uh, you know, to, to buy some time with survivor side. Now two cipher remaining. Uh, it's gonna be very hard to decode again uh, against a clerk, especially when she is fully fed, uh, mm -hmm. fu fully fed in the game. Yeah, this is gonna be tough, especially now the, the explorer. Um, yeah, is go back to you know, just dig for more pages. He's digging for one right now, ladies mm. and gentlemen. So that's gonna be so important, especially at the late game. We do see that the forward is already healed up. He's gonna try to go for this rescue again. He doesn't have tinnitus, so it's not mm -hmm. it's not tricking him. He's he's just gonna have to rely on his eyes at this point. Mm -hmm. And Tamalin just being chased away. Now we're gonna see LC try to make this rescue happen. This is gonna be so important since this is the acrobat. Oh! oh my god! Double hit! No, able to get no. the rescue. But the blink is available, and you could totally go for the blink down on this Ooh. acrobat. And now, now this is gonna be so important. Yeah, yeah the forward has a stun ready. 
And we do note that you, yeah, chasing away this forward might actually go for a double down situation. No, able to use the football just to move on away, but it's going to be a cooldown just in time. Last mm. Cypher is about to be primed. We know that the Explorer mm. has a page, so they're going to wait for the right time to pop this Cypher, mm. but forward still just trying to annoy and trying to harass mm -hmm. this uh this clerk from picking up so it could be a four person pop for the side of survival will be a hit. oh my god mm -hmm. and now yeah just checking is the explorer decoding here and uh -oh. now the, the password they paper will pop be popping oh uh, no survivor is near the vicinity of this uh clerk and it's gonna be the gate camping game once again for the side of you yeah, and now you just chasing Elsie, who has never seen the rocket chair just yet. We're going to see some recordings happen, but Elsie, very stun heavy, wants to mm. just, I mean, the pure bravery on him, just Ooh. dropping down the pallet, but no, it didn't quite work out well. Mm. Uh, you able to down the forward for the first time. We are seeing that the Exegate is being recorded, so they need to get out and get out quick, mm. NTT. Yeah, but no teleport is mm -hmm. available for you right here. Oh, mm. they actually opened the gate so already! Pretty. Yeah, they did. It looks like a three-person escape. Oh, Acrobat already oh, there, and it is a GG situation. MP are your winners for the first match in the group stage. Wow. <laughs> they know how to deal with a club with, a, with the right uh, team composition. They so. did their homework. I would have to say, yes, you is known for the clerk. They did their homework. And I think that's one of the, the it's a double-edged sword. Yes, you're known for this character, but we're going to study it. And they really did their homework. You saw the last pop of that cypher. It was being recorded, but the explorer is like, forget about it. I'm just going to use the page. We're going to pop it. And they had the harassment. They had the, uh, the kiting ability from the entomologist and the acrobat. So a lot of questions were answered. We were starving to see more mad penguins at the start of the preliminary, the final, the finals mm -hmm. of the preliminary stages. And now... Uh, they've answered a lot of questions, and honestly, they're looking really good. Mm. Real contenders I, yeah. for the for the championship now. Seems like they know how to counter the clerk with that explorer, able mm -hmm. to decode all the cipher in a very fast um, pace in the game. And you know, LC with that forward is very scary. If that was a better, it would have been even scarier, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, we were saying, yeah, pick your poison between uh, having a Dream Witch or a, uh, what's that? A um, Mad Eyes. Uh, but Mad little did they know, you got to pick your poison with this lineup. Man, if mm. if you knew that an Explorer would be coming in, I'm pretty sure he'd like Priority Ban Explorer to start things off. Oh, oh so Analomy is Anchan. Anchan, oh my god, Anchan. Okay, oh, wow, one of the OGs. Okay. There All we right. go. All right, all right. Big so, shout outs to Knock Knock again. Uh, uh, just being able to give that. And big shout outs to everyone in the chat. Ben TT, talk us through these match stats. My god. 196% uh, of decoding for the Explorer. So they did buy a lot of time decoding there. And also the Acrobat with a very long hiding time, to be honest. 163.7. Mm -hmm. So that's almost three minutes in the game. Uh, by, buying from the clerk. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I would say that not bringing Tenidon is a great uh, strategy that they went for but it kind of bite them in the back yeah it was it was tough you know what I, I get the mentality like let's not use tinnitus because of the explorer coming in uh, mm. but I just think that the overall survivor tandem or the overall survivor synergy really countered uh, the uh, the clerk here you know what long hiding times for each and every one the, the constant support of LC uh, we rarely saw the entomologist with the bees, but just the constant threat of it was still there. And mind you, the explorer, uh, Anchan or uh, Anna Lamy, was able to rescue. So, yeah, I honestly, think the, the greatest threat for the game. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, masterful performance on the side of uh, the Mad Penguins, but we're going to have to give it to Moru. His uh, bonbon as well as his uh, breaking wheel. His, I mean, like it was, it was really good. His 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 bonbon did get a tie, but I think the breaking wheel performance was just the one we're highlighting here with how fast he was able to work in Moonlit River Park. Um, both uh, both of Moru games are very fast. Like mm -hmm. it was close to being a win for the second game, but the survivor side yeah, had a you know struggle back. But still, mm -hmm. great performance from Moru, and also the side of uh, SKG over there, able to you know hold up against uh, this uh, very uh, formidable uh, team who mm -hmm. has been you know joining a lot of tournament. Oh yeah, for sure.
uh mad penguins ladies and gentlemen a name i mean they did make it to the grand finals in the last year's ivc i mm -hmm. think they want to do the same and actually go a level higher so can't wait they are leading their group in group a so on yeah skg has to go up against wp for them to be able to stay alive or at least mm -hmm. make it past uh their group stage so what a match ntt yeah uh what a match that we just witnessed and yeah I'm excited to see the next match, which is between SG and AX. But mm -hmm. yeah, before that, we might go into a break, I believe. Yeah, before anything mm -hmm. else, ladies and gentlemen, just want to give a shout out once again to people in the chat. You see Maney, Zoe's in the chat, uh, Tricity, Leanne showing their love and support, Zachariah, we got Nano, we got all these people. So please mm. continue that support. As, as NTT said, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see the next match in the group stage of IBC. My God. Young bamboo shoots could brave the bitter cold of winter. winter. 
graceful and serene in the face of adversity. Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. What? and hide for the Xiao family, for vindication, and for her safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship, a life of uncertainty and diligence. My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinching and steadfast in the face of adversity. With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics. Surrender restraints. Relinquish thyself. Like the eagle, plummeting straight down. Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship. We indulge. Place at its finest. In July they came. For flowers they were made They stayed and dwelt in September Bathing in the sun, oh sway She let down her guard Grow, grow, lurking to Tura Feeding up Rosemary who couldn't let go of this guard Welcome back to IVC Southeast Asia, Entity and Sports by here at your service, bringing you the commentary of the matches here. Um, mm -hmm. Previous matches, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Honestly, I would lose a lot of golden apples if you ask me any <laughs> thoughts on that. But luckily we're not, we're here to be professional fans. I have to say, Mad Penguins got, I mean, got mad respect for everyone in the chat mm -hmm. with, with, they, with the way they did their homework. Uh, we were talking about it off stream with Nell that honestly, I feel like maybe Clerk is kind of like the jig is up already. Like Blueprint is already out there. Mad Penguins has released the notes on the patch notes on how to deal with Clerk. And it's, yeah, uh, ban the map. And if not, get the Explorer in there and just mm -hmm. kite for as long as you can. Uh, so honestly, a masterful performance. Big shout outs to MP. They're shooting up in the leaderboards in their team. But we're going to move on over, like you said, to Group B which we're going to have AX versus Sugar Team. What do you think about the, that matchup, NDT? Uh, also equally exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, all of the matches that we are having today is you know, e going to be exciting, where the Survivor side and the Hunter side both have a uh, card that we haven't expected to see in tournament, like mm -hmm. the wall card. Um, we just see the Explorer today, um, <clears throat> the uh, a Prisoner also as a decoder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I digress. Let's get into the uh, character introduction.
Mm-hmm. We meet our hunters on AX's side and SG's side, Cerberus and Talaf. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, you know what? Uh, Cerberus are really, honestly, like we've seen his levels to this game, but not to mention with AX's hunter, Talaf, masterful Dream Witch. We have seen uh, an, uh, his his night oh Polar coming in with a nightmare pick also on their side. So um, they only played a total of two hunter games because their survivors did a great job uh, securing the victory. But uh, let's talk more about Sugar Team on on, on your side, NTT. Yeah, Severus as I saw here. Severus actually didn't manage to get the breaking wheel out in the previous game where survivor side was picking a team composition where they would counter the breaking wheel. But mm -hmm. his bonbon is equally good. So yeah, uh, we're gonna move on to the survivor side now with uh, CS Guy and uh, Bello. Yeah, uh, on uh, uh, Bello was able, you know, a really well-known name in Team Sugar uh, Sugar Team. Uh, I'll talk more about Nay Sky here. Uh, Nay Sky, uh, um, uh, he had a clutch dungeon escape uh, up against a Dream Witch. You know, he was able to still hold on to his elbow pads, able to clutch things out. So I'm really excited to see more of that. But uh, over to you when it comes to Bellon. Yeah, Bellon is a very supportive player. Uh, uh, a lot of teamwork going on in the uh, in the background where uh, he can play uh, the uh, Priestess to, you mm -hmm. know, allow a survivor to transition or even some character like the Entomologist. Or... I know that he's training for the new character also for the mm -hmm. other for future tournament but now uh, mm -hmm. where she's not in the game yet i'm excited to see what bella has in store <laughs> for us today we'll we'll see when she's in the game i'm pretty sure it's gonna be crazy mm -hmm. and we're gonna move right on along with nx official uh my note on nx official on his psychologist nx official was two for two with the palette stuns and we were there to witness it ntt so uh, I'm not surprised that an ex official is, is maining that Enchantress because it seems like the claws are coming out and the stuns are definitely going to come out when you're up against an ex official. Yeah, Nana without the Acrobat. Also, mm -hmm. a very scary uh, Prospector player. I have met him in rank and I have to ban his Prospector. Just to say. <laughs> so... Yeah, it, uh, just to highlight, yeah, he did pre uh, Acrobat twice and Prospector twice. So mm -hmm. can't wait to see that. But we're going to move oh. on to Scythe <laughs> here on the Lawyer. But wow. Scythe also did bring out a psychologist mm -hmm. and an entomologist. But I cannot wait to see if Scythe brings out the the lawyer, the lawyer. here. Again, you know, if we're going to go care, Survivor Bingo. Yeah, if we have a lawyer, that's going to be hype. Mm -hmm. And Daddy, a pro officer player and also an ass match uh, mercenary player. Mm -hmm. uh, but he can also play that uh, mechanic very well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. He's, all, he, he's both a rescuer and a decoder in the, yeah. uh, in the team. I would have to say, when watching the wildcard matches, I it was kind of uh, taken aback. I'm like, Sugar Daddy really known as the rescuer, but he brought out the uh, mechanic in second and third game. And honestly, it really worked out. Um, they, he was able to kite for a while. The decoding was still there, able to still secure a tie, and ultimately in round number two, be able to get that win. So uh, I can't wait to see Sugar Daddy's levels when it comes to either using a rescuer, like the first officer that is highlighted here, or maybe his mercenary, and I know we have it's 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 weird for me to say, but we're not seeing that much mechanics here, NTT. Um, yeah, with the nail, we kind of like the new meta kind of counter that mechanic. Right. But yeah. mm -hmm. now on the last survivor, I believe is the psychologist on the side of uh, chamomile. Uh, chamomile, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, Yueba, which is a friend of mine, uh, mm -hmm. a great player to be honest. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, tell me more about Yuebang, and I'll tell uh, you more about Camille. Go for it. Okay, Yuebang, a very great uh, batter, forward, acrobat, um, even magician mm -hmm. player. Wow. But we are seeing here the uh, mercenary, so he is kind of like the uh, rescuer of the team also. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Camille, though, uh, the stats that we did see him play, yes, he uses a psychologist, also uses an entomologist, so he likes those kiters, also those support mm. characters. So I can't wait, because uh, one thing that stood out to me with uh, Team AX, uh, their survivor team really thrived uh, on round number three. They, oh. they had a slow start at the start. Uh, I think they relied on Talap and Polar to gain the wins, but they really come alive in round number three, which I can't wait to see, because this seems mm -hmm. like... It could go that way since in round in our first match it only got uh, BO two. Yeah, um, and especially when you got into round three, there's there are more ban to be mm -hmm. used. So that could be 
a strategy that uh, the survivor, uh, the side of AX is coming for. Like they're gonna play very slowly at the first two, but in in round three they're gonna go all out. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lexi Side Village has been banned for the side of SG, and they have picked Arms Factory as the first map. So a shadow ban onto Severus uh, Poland. Yeah, and also kind of buffing uh, Talap's Dream Witch, since mm. he does bring it out in round number one in Polar, based on the previous game, uh, comes in with a nightmare, if ever. So, um, it's so important. You know, I know Eli also says this as well, like, getting map control and being able to pick is so important for your team. I think Mad Penguin starting off in the right foot uh, and also kind of predicting what SKG is going to do in the second round. It really solidified them that VO2. So uh, I guess we got to talk about it. Arms Factory, we're heading back there. Yeah, back to the Arms Factory where, you know, a lot of Hunter has been utilized in this map. So I'm expecting a lot of, uh, of wild cards coming from the side of Severus. I know that he can play Bon Bon, but Ooh. is the survivor side going to let him play uh, with mm. a counter to that Bon Bon? Like, what we see in the previous match with Moru, like they went for a very a garden, uh, yeah, a garden. <laughs> no, 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 but acrobat, yeah, acrobat, forward, uh, forward and, uh, postman, and they didn't rescue. They mm -hmm. only focus on the decoding progress, so they could totally go for the sacrifice situation if Severa is coming for that. Uh, um, uh, bon bon. Yeah, the bonbon, bon. and that actually could start things off really well if uh, usually. Round number one, it is Cerberus to gain like the the victory for Sugar Team, but mm -hmm. we'll see because I I mean what else is gonna go for if ever he's not gonna go with Bon Bon? Do, oh, do you think he has other uh, hunters that could be effective in this map? Not in my record. I mm -hmm. know the other hunter Pow Pow has a very formidable Dream Witch and also mm -hmm. uh let me oh uh, uh, um Bloody Queen that is yeah. Pow Pow did bring out Sculptor and Bloody Queen. So uh, yeah, also. He brought out an Axe Boy. Uh, it didn't work out quite well. Mm. Uh, an Axe Boy does great well in it does pretty well in small maps, but if you're going up against I don't, like a, a round one survivors with not much bands on the table, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he can be heavily countered with uh, the lineup. I mean, of just yeah, having uh, Acrobat in the mix, having just all the, all the usual suspects that you'll see. Uh, so maybe he yeah. wants to. I think yeah, between Bonbon, Axe Boy, and uh, Pollen in this map, yeah, Bonbon seems to be the best possible uh, pick for him. Yeah. So let's. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add with mm. when it comes to the picks for Hunter? Hmm. With the Axe Boy, I say, uh, you have to be very patient when it comes mm. to you know pulling those flame in order to gain so uh, damage onto the survival side. But being patient is another thing because the survival side is constantly decoding. So you cannot mm. waste time with those mm. aim. You have to down a survivor uh, mm. as fast as possible. Yeah. So that's why, um, yeah, I'm leaning more towards the bond bond. Uh, I am looking over my notes and Cerberus. I, I I put here Cerberus trap placement on Pollen is really good. Like uh, as in like he's he's great. I mean he's great with the trap placement. And honestly, I feel like maybe that's his bonbon bon training with dropping bombs. He just uh. knows <laughs> the projectile like mm. placement of it. So this was a great ban on the side of uh, AX, just not not allowing him to even bring it out. Now this really sets up uh, AX's hunter to lap to bring out the dream witch because this is I, I don't think it's any question being asked like it's it's just a matter of oh. who he's gonna ban uh when it comes to the picks and bans for the survivor side yeah the dream witch they have to immediately go for the counter to the dream witch which is um psychologist barmaid uh perfumer even magician maybe even magician uh, maybe yeah i would say so... seer but we all know that seer is not allowed yeah uh... He's going okay. to be banned because this map okay. is a shadow ban onto the priestess. So mm. the hunter doesn't even need to ban the priestess. That is an open ban to either the seer, the forward, or the mercenary. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I will let you... Yeah, let's let's talk about SG survivors now since we will we know that Talap is going to pick uh, the Dream the Witch. Witch. Uh -huh. I mean, Seni, you know what? Just uh, I think S badge. Like, she has a badge on that Enchantress. We've seen it in IVA. Yeah, oh, and also oh. S badge onto the Perfumer. Ooh, you're right. And Seer, well, yeah, let's not talk about Seer because, you know, we don't <laughs> yeah. talk about Seer. No, no, no. So, uh, Sugar Daddy, he, you know, you got to bring out the Merc. You got to bring out the big guns right away because uh -huh. we've seen how well Sugar Daddy can go with that Merc. 
Bang had a little bit of fumbles here and there when it came to his forward performance. I think that's why uh, he did go on Merc all of a sudden. So he can bring out forward if it comes out. I really feel like against uh, the Dream Witch, he could still bring it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did previously with a match, he did bring out a Psychologist. Mm, uh, and he excelled okay. at raw kiting, so it could mm. be a Psychologist on the side of Bang here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, not sure about the Bersonary though, because the Dream Witch really like how the survivor side gonna waste a lot of time on healing and the mercenary mm. is necessary fast at uh, self-healing or you know letting out the heals uh, in that's a good point that's that's definitely something that they have to consider uh moving on over to nana uh i, I have prospector. on my notes here prospector acrobat nana had a great kite as an acrobat so i can't wait to uh. see an acrobat come loose yeah. here in the arms factory because um yeah abel i forgot who he kited out uh, I think kind of a breaking wheel uh, in mm. uh, when when they first started. It w who sent SG? It was uh, to the to the wild card. Would you happen to remember? Was it was it Noir? It is Noir. Mm, yeah. So it was uh, it was CCC's uh, pollen to bring. So he was able to kite out that mm -hmm. long with the acrobat. So amazing performance on Nana's side. So let's see who will do the hunting and surviving first because we kind of painted a picture. It will oh, be okay. Lab. Dream Witch. Let's All go. right. It's a Dream Witch game. All right, off the bat. Oh, mm -hmm. could be another character that we don't expect. A clerk. Okay. Clerk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the first man will say it all. Yeah. Or the second man. It's Maybe usually, second. Seer, yeah. It's usually Seer. Right? It's That's usually Seer. Lock. Yeah. It's, you don't have enough logic points. You don't have this character, ladies and gentlemen. That's what uh, the hunters are saying. You can't use Seer. It's just not allowed mm. in the game. So we're just going to wait. I do like, yeah, that NTT pointed out, maybe it's the second uh, survi a second survivor band that will kind of paint a picture because Seer, when it comes to any, I mean, I did do a stat. If you guys could follow my Facebook, you guys could see the stats there. Seer has not been, like, has been banned 43 times in this whole tournament so far. Well, oh. Acrobat, ladies and gentlemen, has been picked around 30 times. And mind you, that's such a crazy ratio. Oh, oh. knowing the Seer. Oh my God, I'm talking up a storm here. But they choose not to go for the seer. They go for so, the prospector and psychologist. So reasonable. Um, the psychologist pick is to prevent uh, Tala from, you know, banning mm. that character. But oh, wow! Oh wait, am I seeing prospector? Right? It's a no, prospector. No, no. Oh, Melo is actually Fear playing bad. the survivor side. Oh, okay. Um, now banning the seer, um, allowing the survivor side to pick up that bowmate. But are they really going for it? Uh, I mean, you have psychologists already, so they yeah. want they could double up on healing. But you got acrobat, you got forward, oh. which I feel like, yeah, you gotta lock in a forward. Mm -hmm. This kind of, well, maybe um, this allows uh, them to be able to lock in an enchantress of. Oh wait, Senny's not in. It's uh, Beloin, uh, so yeah, it's Beloin. and you bang. Uh, so, so I'm having, a, I have a feeling that Bang is going to play the forward. Mm -hmm. Nana is going for that. Um, uh, prospector. Now for the psychology, this could be better now. With the last band coming from the lab side. It has uh, to be acrobat, I think. Yeah. Uh, our entomologist. I, I mean, it's, it's good. I'm thinking it's daddy turn to pick. And if he picks that uh, mechanic. Mechanic. Wow, very yeah. daring. Yeah, it could yeah, be. Yeah, it could be very daring, to be honest. Banning the acrobat, I just Acrobat. Think. And the mechanic, boom. Hey, yo, we're, we're 2020 on this. We're seeing the future, NTT. Let's go. Banning the Acrobat for sure, insta ban there, but the mechanic. So I guess, yeah, Daddy is going to pick uh, the mechanic. So kind of a bold move here because once that mechanic is found, uh, let's hope that the bot is also safe and sound because mm -hmm. uh, this is a dream, which, especially in a map like this, yeah, you're going to run into the followers for sure. Mm -hmm. Now the mechanic has to hide the bot early on in order to prevent the mechanic from, you know, getting damaged and also losing the bot in the process. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not a surprise here, Dream Witch on the side of Tala. We have talked about this uh, earlier. Um, no no flywheel effects, so no yeah. chance of them. Yeah, and, you know, dodging that uh, doggo bite with the flywheel, but still mm -hmm. they can use the uh, pallet and the window to prevent that from happening. Wait, I'm trying to remember on AX on uh, to lap side. Okay, here's something to note, and we gotta take note of this. 
The lap in the previous uh, game brought Blink Dream Witch. Oh, wow. So that, oh. Was, that took people off guard. So I wonder if they're going to be ready for that. Because you mentioned patroller, right? And I remember this was the this was the maybe more proactive with with the patroller bites because yeah, uh, that is the tried and tested meta. But so uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a different meta in different region. Where we see in the Chinese tournament like IVL, we're gonna see Dream Witch with patroller almost all the time. But in IJL in the Japan server, most mm -hmm. of the time it's the Dream Witch bringing the blink. Mm -hmm. So which play style is Talab going for? It's gonna be. You know, dependent on the uh, survival side here. Uh, mm. He could be choosing violent, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, because like, you still have, if ever you have the, the well, you have the option to switch to abnormal because you do have a, uh, a mechanic loot. So maybe he will choose violence and just go for blink to start off early down, and then just wait for the wait for the trump card to change things up. So that, that's that's something that can happen because once you go patroller. And then it doesn't go your way. You you switch the blink, and you don't have abnormal. You don't have teleport. But again, it's a small map, so we'll just have to see. So, I think, like, yeah, mm -hmm. Talap picking the blink instead of patrol is a way to you know say that the survivor side have countered the patrol so well that I'm not going to pick that. Hmm, that's true. And and this is the type of nuance that you love to see in the game, right? It's it's still a very meta hunter like the Dream Witch, but slightly changing things up, especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've seen that work out so well uh, in IV in, in Koa, uh, the the hunter on um, on the side of Sun Sisters, bringing Blink just to switch things up, to change the, uh, to just be able to put to put everyone on guard there. Because usually you wait for the patroller to go down, but what if like main fall main follower hits you and then the, the spawn follower downs you? That's a that'll t that'll catch anyone off guard. Mm -hmm. So now it's yeah I'm yeah. trying to remember it was Silk yeah Silk. Yeah, Silk, Silk the Hunter, he can play a lot of Hunter in COA, and, you know, that's the furthest any Japanese team has come, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Actually, speaking of Japanese teams, there's a lot of love for Kazuneko in the chat. Ooh! Uh, yeah, you know, um, they, yeah, people be watching their I, IJLs and I, IVLs, so, uh, Southeast Asia, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, big shout outs. You know, Mani is a name that I see all the time. Uh, Zachariah, we did give you a shout out in the text also. Claudia, we see Vanilla, kind of. Any shout outs you want to give out, NTT? <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of names here. Eggy248, uh, mm -hmm. Claudia, Vanilla, Cryptic Roy, uh, NX Original, and Say MAO, mm -hmm. which uh, he did say hi previously, but I didn't. But I haven't had a chance to say hi back. Mm -hmm. So, hello, Say. Yo. I, I got, yeah, so he's there too. Also, Razy Lazy, what's going mm. on? Bestie Chantel's in the chat. Everyone's bestie, what's Ooh. going on? Uh, everyone's just uh, showing their love and support. NTT, let's let's think of a like a an emoji for both these teams. Mm. Sugar is obvious. <laughs> is there a sugar emoji? I think there's a sugar cube. A sugar cube, is there? Yeah. Wait, okay, cool. All right, sugar cubes. If not sugars or sugar cubes, what about AX? Let's uh, let's think about this. Mm. One. I, I'm looking at their their logo and it's purple. Can we go for grapes? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm checking the symbol to see mm. if I are there anything. Any... Triangle or X. Tri so we're gonna go geometry here. I was terrible mm -hmm. at geometry. So squares and triangles. Are <laughs> you next? Uh, All right. So, so tri triangle it is. Okay, triangles for AX, and then cubes or circ squares for sugar team. Mm -hmm. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got our two uh, emojis sound off because uh, when we were talking about this with Chocho and Nell, we were kind of divided who we'd give the edge towards. And how, considering how the previous match went, I, you know, I'm just, yeah, no, I'm just not going to yeah. say, like, who we think. <laughs> we're just going to watch the match. All my uh, apples are gonna be fine at this point, so I'm not confident with my prediction anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, don't listen to us, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. When it comes to your golden apples, do not. <laughs> I uh, lost did... my foot officer <laughs> <laughs> accessory <laughs> because of this. Dude, I don't even want to talk about that. I lost so much in that. Uh, yeah. Six. I saw some love in the chat for Koa Six. I can't mm. wait. Let's we're go. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have stats ready for that. We're gonna find out how. To... But man, Koa 5 was insane the way the way mm -hmm. it ended. That was so cool. Wolves still on top. 
and uh, crazy how Sun Sister is getting so far, and then mm -hmm. they kind of they kind of went their own ways, uh, leading up to IJL. So, I mean, Japanese uh, server is on the rise right now, so I'm excited sure. to see you know uh, some other server like in the EU, Southeast mm -hmm. Asia, or Japan, Korea, mm -hmm. making you know their their name in COA in the global stage. Yeah, uh, speaking of which, you know what, uh, GH, also BL had their shot mm -hmm. when it came to representing Southeast Asia region, which was kind of the first outing of the new format of Call of the Abyss, because before it was just a tournament, right? Single elimination, but here the group stage really showcasing the skills. And uh, IVC also is a platform for them to do that. Both BL and GH are here, so uh, I'm sure that they want to become champions and kind of represent our region as well in a grand stage like Call of the Abyss and honestly Southeast yeah. Asia you know on the rise as well they, they are we are picking up traction you know getting a lot of people well a lot of people are noticing our servers our events our content creators and follow it uh, NTT on social media <laughs> one of the content creators one of the best out there ladies and gentlemen oh so <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's a great time yeah. to be a Southeast Asia identity 5 fan mm -hmm. I mean yeah uh, not to mention the winner of IBC will head straight into COA. So that's mm -hmm. why, you know, all of these teams are trying to fight their way. But yeah, it's the stage of uh, great scale here, over here that we are having. Mm -hmm. uh, people are just going to bring their best. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think also steel sharpens steel. So this, this format of the group stage mm -hmm. is definitely good. It's very welcome. And it kind of trains them also to whoever is going to represent us in, in Call of the Abyss to have that same mentality of a group stage and kind of have the feeling out process. Because usually, I think a lot of people were kind of clamoring for a group stage because usually Call of the Abyss would last just two days or mm -hmm. two or three days, right? For how long the tournament would be. And if you don't have your best foot forward, you're immediately sent out of the tournament. So that's uh, why it's important for you, for the group stage to kind of showcase the skills and not rely everything to just one game. You know, mm -hmm. you still have a lot of, ch you, well, with group stage type uh, format, you do have a lot of chances and a lot of uh, moments to be able to highlight your skills and showcase what uh, what you've been working on for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yep, yeah, group stage, a lot of uh, potential for great play uh, coming on uh, in the tournament. Uh, yeah, people in the chat shouting out their favorite player over here. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, bang. I see a lot of bang, yeah, bang. Yeah, so. bang. Uh, and sex. Oh, and X original is already yeah, shouted out, even though they are not in the game yet. Ooh, okay. Oh, AX, yeah. let's go, yeah. <laughs> uh, fighting both team, fighting Sugar. Mm. Yeah, a lot of uh, support coming from the uh, chat. Mm -hmm. Shout out yeah, to all though. Yeah, Serena Lim, let's go. Manny with a go daddy. Uh, Eggy, we just uh, gave him a shout out too. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, cubes for SG and triangles for AX. So Arms Factory, this kind of build, you obviously want to go for the mechanic to start things off. But NTT, something that I'm fearing is that forward and that prospector. Mm. Yeah, as a harasser. <laughs> so, hmm, is it enough for Rewit to be scared not to bring up uh, uh, excitement? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I yeah, think I don't think so. The same. I, we were already like kind of thinking if the Blink Patroller would come out. So, I'm uh, oh, sorry if, if the but, yeah, but Blink or Patroller mm. would be. You know, we kind of decided it could be Blink, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I really feel like uh, when it comes to this, you just got to look over your shoulder. Maybe keep, constantly keep switching uh, followers to be able to My do God. that. My and... God, the chat. Entity kill me in rank in... Uh, uh, and I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Remember oh, no. that, chat. Remember Entity. What, what's your what's your rank now? Uh, Cyclops 3, if I remember correctly. Powerful NTT. Nah, and speaking nah, of nah. powerful, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my notes. Talap was actually the one to get a terror shock in the basement. Oh, uh, remember, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The gravekeeper. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, we were there to witness the the, uh, the moment. Actually, you know what? The chat is actually uh, like big brain for sugar team. They're actually just spamming sugar, like like candy uh, stuff. Candy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they they have bigger brain than me. 
Mm, that's actually pretty smart because I was thinking hmm, yeah. sugar cubes. I'm like, oh dang, we're gonna go geometry. We'll go with the biggest brain and go with math. But yeah, this uh, on the other hand. So yeah, um, looking back at their matches, um, Cerberus. Also, I'm just gonna bring it out there when it came to with uh, with uh, SG. <laughs> he did bring out Bon Bon in a big map. I'm, I'm talking yeah, late. Yeah, it's like Yeah, I, I, I just saw the map. Um, he was able to get a draw with that, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that was Bon Bon. Uh, yeah, that ahead. was a clutch. That was a clutch draw because uh, I think it was Chocho and Nell calling the action there. Where mm -hmm. if he just teleported and trusted his instincts, he would have found two yeah. survivors. There could have gotten mm -hmm. more. But I think that just shows a bit of the reservation that uh, Cerberus has. Which again, it was it was actually a pretty tight match, and uh, that kind of makes a bigger case for him to bring yeah. out the Bon Bon in a small map like this. I mean, you had to play it safe, to be honest. Bon Bon is now regarded as one of the draw hunter alongside the Bloody Queen wow. and the oh. uh, and the uh, Disciple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, bringing a hunter just to get a draw and. Mm -hmm allow the survivor side to you know carry the team it could be a strategy on it though on its own mm -hmm. uh let's let's put a pin on that because a lot of people are saying like yeah let's uh show some love to naeu especially mm. fusion big shout outs to eli on that a lot of triangles <laughs> as well in the chat ladies and gentlemen so that's a lot of ax supporters here for it mm -hmm. to lap and and yeah like you said bon bon has kind of fallen into the draw category at this point mm -hmm. because survivors honestly we'll call a spade a spade hunters haven't been eating well as of late it's a survivor sided type of meta we've seen it time and time again mm -hmm. but this dream witch though wants to make it hunter sided will run oh, straight oh. into the oh my god into the bot the, yeah it's the bot but i don't think he has spotted out the bot already so mechanic is actually quite safe over here oh wait mm -hmm. actually no Mm -hmm. I, think I think he fouled out with the bot. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Once he downs this mechanic, he's gonna go for that bot. But he's able to already go for the mechanic, and it is blink NTT. Mm. Uh, pretty standard oh, build. Yeah, on the it's Stone actually Man. not blink. It's oh, it's not controller. controller. My bad. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, okay. So he's gonna so, go a little yeah. standard on this. Mm -hmm. We'll get a normal hit onto Sugar Daddy here. Haven't wasted that uh, patroller yet, but now uh, Sugar Daddy is gonna drag that leash follower away from the bot. So. He might have a chance of decoding a cipher over here. Yeah, and it's. I, like, mm -hmm. I, I really like this movement coming from Daddy, going to a not to a site where nobody is decoding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do see that the forward is at the center of this map. Drops the patroller down just to keep this mechanic at bay. She did kind of corner herself in this spot, trying Ooh. to go for a hit, but now. He's going to get countered here with the dr pallet drop. Mm -hmm. He's going to close out the distance for another patroller bite for the down on this mechanic. Mm -hmm. And now the mechanic will be seeing the chair. Um, the body safe though, so Daddy still mm -hmm. have a chance of uh, you know decoding all the cipher. Uh, three cipher is being decoded right now. Actually, four with mm -hmm. the bot being in the game. For sure. What the saving grace here is that the prospector is actually leeched. No anti curses oh. yet have been picked up, so this prospector has to be very careful and not get surprise attacked here or terror shock. Seems like Nana is in the area. While uh, Sugar, uh, while um, Talap is still trying to guard this mm -hmm. one out, but I mean, he he can play this conservatively, but this is actually buying the mechanic time to just decode as the mechanic goes past the halfway mark. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, Dreamwish is trying to you know uh, camp the cipher as well as the chair in order right. to you know prevent the pop from happening, but they already popped one cipher. Three cipher at the halfway mark, and they have still one fresh cipher to work with. I believe they are going for the sacrifice and allow mm -hmm. you know Daddy to decode the cipher or that he needs. Yeah, and Talap already responding properly. Tries to go for a hit, but no. Uh, we do see that the main body has already transitioned towards the center part of this map. The forward is here, uh, so he's got to be very careful. That cipher has not popped. We have been stuck on four ciphers remaining. Now the psychologist picked up an anti curse mark. So let's see Talap try and uh, leech another survivor. Probably going to go for the psychologist mm -hmm. at this point. And the patroller is available, but switching to the mm -hmm. main body a little bit too soon, a, mm -hmm. a little bit too late. Sorry. Uh, now we'll be leeching the psychologist in the process here. Um, patroller is still in the artillery, and Talab could go for it immediately. Still. Yeah. Uh, so what's really hard here is that the psychologist mm -hmm. still has her her skill. So it's gonna mm -hmm. take three hits. If, yeah, if uh, 
Yeah, and now they're picking up curses here. So this is a great job on SG side, trying to mitigate the damage that has been done. Uh, we're still stuck at four ciphers. The dungeon is still hidden, but resource-wise, <laughs> they're doing pretty good. Prospector's mm -hmm. the only one without a curse, so now he's going to drop a patroller here, able to oh! bolt in time. So now this is going to be a mind game here. Will he try to go? Oh, my oh. God. Bolt a little bit too oh! soon. No! Able to go back and forth here. Nana might be able to vault uh, to kite out a oh patroller. The first official mm -hmm. successful patroller kite. Let's coming go. From. Yeah. Let me follow the side up. Nana. Uh, he might have to switch to blink here in order to get a hit onto this uh, yeah. Prospector, and he will do that. And also mm. having that magnet reset the hit. Uh huh. So that was a beautiful uh, just uh, job switching traits to that blink. The patroller didn't work out quite well, and Nana has to be very careful. Mm. He's hugging the windows once again, but now he's oh. got a he's got a curse on. He's got a leech on him. Two mm. ciphers remaining now. So this uh, Prospector kite is doing wonders for the team. Whoa! Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> that was, um, uh, wow. <laughs> the playing immediately to uh, down this prospector, and no leech to you, and it's still on cooldown for lap right here. They are working on two cipher at the moment, but I believe it's a forward's gonna be coming in for a rescue. Yeah, and Psychologist is still holding on to her skill. Talap doesn't have vicinity around the area. Still waiting for the cooldown of him to be able to leech the Prospector. Mm. In the process, able to get the stun on that leech, but the leech has been set already. Gets the uh. stun. Nana now being able to move away from that rocket chair mm. and just create that distance away from that forward so the forward can come back for another rescue. Mm -hmm. Immediately. And even if the forward would hit, uh, I believe the psychologist would have used the skill to heal right. up that forward. So it's still equal for both sides. Um, for, for the other side of survivor. Here, uh, the prospector will be down, down by the leech whoa. roller. Uh, it's the leech roller again. So mm -hmm. it still takes time for Talab to leech onto this prospector. And mind you that the forward is in this area. So he's priming for another rescue situation. The psychologist about to pop a cypher here. So it's about to be one cypher remaining. She's mm -hmm. popping the sandbag cypher. She's going to go rotate towards the next cypher while the forward tries to work on this uh, final rescue of the game, hopefully on the survivor side. So let's see how mm -hmm. Talap will respond to a very aggressive survivor lineup. It's already primed, NTT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already primed. So yeah, after this rescue, I think the survivor side just going to... Boom. Pop over there here, we go. hitting the prospector, and the prospector will be able to transition into the factory area. Mm -hmm. um, blink. Yeah, it's still holding on to this mm -hmm. blink. Let's see if he's going to try to switch targets. Uh, all of them have anti curses, so and they have resources to kite away. Uh, Veloin, the psychologist, is the only one that is opening up that exegate while the prospector is working on his anti curse here. Psychologist has to mm -hmm. stay away from that gate already. Mm -hmm. Now the prospector is trying to delish himself while Bang is actually making his way back to the factory gate. So Bello is going to be uh, alone in the sandbag area, blocking the window Whoa. from Bello, but wasn't able to get a hit. Yeah, the blink is already ready for this Dream Witch to use, so maybe he can drop down the psychologist in time. Oh, no, oh, unable to get the hit, but oh, the oh, terror my. shock just to be able to mitigate that. That my was close. God. If that was a fast vault, that would have been a longer kite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, they are still able to open the other gate, and it's going to be a, yeah, a very safe uh, tie for the mm -hmm. side of SG and AX. Um, a great job yeah. for both sides. Each Con other. Considering that this was the ace in uh, Talap's arsenal of hunters, getting a tie is pretty good. Mm. Um, at least you're able to negate the Dream Witch at its highest, and you can bring probably the Dream Witch in a... Well, I mean, like we said, it's it, uncomfortable maps aren't really your thing. You bring it to bigger maps, or at least just outright ban the Dream Witch. So SG, able to roll with the punches, uh, putting Talap in rough waters there. Uh, great job on the side of uh, sh uh, Sugar Team Survivors. Yeah, exactly. Uh, putting the Hunter at bay there, and Emma, to be exact, like the Survivor side, try to keep the Dream Witch at the first, uh, uh, at the factory gate area, and the kiting area in the corner there, to, you know, prevent her from dealing uh, damage with the decoding progress. So it was mm -hmm. a nice strategy coming from them. Um, yeah. 
And also, it kind of showed that even though the mechanic was there, it was it was kind of a, on a standstill. But I believe it was kind of like a fake standstill because the the mechanic was able to at least uh, decode a seventy seven percent mark. Yeah. Uh, so Sugar Daddy had a, a it was an okay kite, like it was an okay start. Mm -hmm. But usually, when you pick mechanic, you kind of gear your yourselves towards a draw situation because you don't want to go for another rescue and just want the mechanic to just decode. So. I think they played this pretty well. They were able to get a tie up against Talap's signature hunter, which is the Dream Witch. So great job on Sugar Team's side. Yeah, exactly. And they were close to be getting a three mana skip. But you know, the switch of target from uh, Talap was uh, you know begging, uh, begging the uh, survivor side to you know uh, transition away from the gate. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you called out. When it came to the uh, well, the forward rescue, they still had. I think they were thinking ten steps ahead with the psychologist there. So, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, great kite on Nana's side. Can we can we just say that was the first? What well, the first of this tournament that someone was able to kite out patroller. So, yeah. Just the mind games, right? So the back and forth. Mm -hmm. Even though we thought the patroller bite was going to happen, enough time for him to be able to vault over mm -hmm. and forcing the blink switch yeah. to happen. Yeah, the skill of juking the patroller is uh, uh, not to be seen quite often in this tournament. So it's exciting to see an individual player that has the skill to do that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's why people have been bringing Ling more with Dreamwish. That's mm -hmm. the reason. People have been able to kite out the patroller. I like that you brought that up. Do you think this could have played out differently if Blink was first? Uh, almost immediately, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of those situations that uh, Talap faced could have been solved with a blink hit, mm -hmm. early down situation, and like once the mechanic expired, the blink would be ready once again for him to down the the prospect or for him to go for a mid game blink. So uh, I agree. When it comes to the ever changing game that is Identity Five, people have figured out how to kite out a patroller. I mean, it's it's no easy feat, but Nana was able to do it and proved everyone it is possible. So. Uh, yeah, highlight in its own right. So um, we still have yet to play another game, but honestly, Nana, one of the play of the games for me, with uh, Nana able to kite out the patroller. Mm -hmm. And not, uh, and let's not, you know, uh, ignore the Dream Wish here. She did do a very great job, you know, keeping mm -hmm. the survivor at bay, but uh, the survivor know how to kind of prevent the hunter from. Mm -hmm. uh, Messing with the decoding progress and also the very safe rescue coming from Bam, like immediately yeah. going for the stun on the uh, follower. Mm -hmm. I think also it came down to they were very proactive once the mechanic was gone. Everyone picked up an anti first, mm -hmm. forcing yeah. the Dream Witch to constantly keep using that skill to just leech followers to the point where it was um, she only had the main follower chairing and guarding the prospector yeah. and right i mean right at the dream witch's eyes saw that her follower getting stunned mm -hmm. so it was unfortunate that he wasn't able to defend uh there so great job on Talap's side i really feel like he played the game how he was supposed to there was uh he was he was on point but it was just this sg survivor side that was kind of a step ahead leading to them uh getting a tied game could have been a three. It uh, could have been worse uh, for the Dream Witch, but still, you know, able to get a tie. I feel like that's a victory in the Dream Witch's side with how uh, well SG was playing that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's equal for both sides here. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna come down to the match, to, to 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 the next match between the survivor side of AX and the hunter of uh, Sugar, mm -hmm. which I believe will be Severus. Now, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. do you have any? insight on the survivor side of AX. Yeah, so AX, uh, we did see a couple matches on their side. They love them, their psychologist, honestly, mm -hmm. when it comes to the uh, the picks here. They all, they all can use a psychologist, but what scares me the most is that Nice Guy and uh, NX Official, Nice Guy loves the batter. Oh. You, you picked them twice. And also, uh, NX official on this Enchantress, it's a little scary. So Cerberus has to be careful uh, when it comes to the stunners here, because AX's survivor team, based on the previous matches, they love them, them stunners. Mm -hmm. Now, it's more conventional with the ban. Now, Severus banning the Seer over here with the first ban. And uh, yeah, expecting uh, the conventional lineup from the side of AX with the uh, Mercenary or the Ford, but it's uh, Entomologist, I believe. 
still without mercenary though so yeah uh, with mercenary. Do. so yeah you, you, i think they're kind of gearing towards uh yeah just having at least one rescuer one main rescuer uh they do have an entomologist in chamomile uh so i think they just want to secure that we'll see now what cerberus will be picking if uh he's able to well oh he, oh forward okay just the stunners but looking at the how they played this out i think they didn't pick forward probably because they kept getting it kept getting banned mm -hmm. so they still have the batter you still have the enchantress you still have the magician uh just a lot of picks that they have yet to utilize um, the magician over here is are, are they trying to counter the clerk with this magician um severus mm, could be having um clerk in the artillery but you know with the appearance of the magician i don't think he would go for it hmm. still one bond is a greater it is a safer pick for Cerberus. yeah let's see we might be able to tell what cerberus is going to gearing towards based on his last ban mm -hmm. uh he can ban the acrobat yeah uh, even though ban the oh, batter. batter okay that's good okay. honestly taking away the batter leaving oh. open the enchantress though oh uh, just a second banning the batter only if you play the breaking wheel would you be scared better to be honest well that's true uh, uh, i don't know if he's gonna he's gonna try to go for breaking mm -hmm. wheel but I think he kind of did this homework because you know, nice guy just loves him some batter. So and let's see. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh my God! Okay, a wax artist. Okay. Oh yeah, this actually kind of works out well. Like just banning the stunners, also banning the seer. Hmm. Magician though can also get away from line of sight, so <laughs> that's actually a good call on the now, side. Now, I mm -hmm. so rare is banning the batter kind of forced the survivor side to pick that enchantress oh, oh no wait hang on hang oh on a second God. we're flipping the script here server has said oh you don't think i can work arms factory with this breaking wheel yo so, yeah. <laughs> I, I was i was excited to see a wax artist uh, i'm not uh, <laughs> okay so it's equally exciting to see a pollen in this map to mm -hmm. be honest like we mm -hmm. we rarely see a, a breaking wheel working in the factory area Mm -hmm. So, you know, Severus rolling the dice over here, trying to uh, press his luck mm -hmm. uh, with his uh, breaking wheel against the survival side of it, AX. It's a big gamble, but I have to say that Cerberus is so good with this, he could make this work. Mm. Uh, I guess he's gambling on himself. Like He's betting on himself to be able to make this work, even though, dang, you know what? Once these survivors like run into the map, they're just going to hug a, hug a window. For, yeah. for sure they're, they're not going to prioritize decoding they're going to wait for accelerated decoding they're any of these uh, any of these could actually be a nightmare to chase so we'll just have to see I, I mean um he knows what he's bringing to the table he knows the risks involved and he's gonna go for it so i mean i i, I, I gotta i gotta give him props for that yeah i mean it's hit uh you know a preferable character to play so he might be even training the breaking wheel in arm factory just mm -hmm. to wait for this moment uh, we know that AX picks this map just to counter the breaking wheel, but they still are going to meet this breaking wheel either way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm excited. This is definitely um, usually tournament standard when you see a breaking wheel round number one, but not necessarily in Arms Factory. It's mm -hmm. rare to see that. We've seen it in IVA, and I think he's also banking on the fact there's no flywheel. So that'll help out, oh, help yeah. out a lot. So mm -hmm. he really... the. The, nem the true nemesis of this breaking wheel is the map itself. Mm. So once he conquers that, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to uh, down these survivors. So chat once again, uh, they are passing around popcorn. Uh, <laughs> we do, yeah, we do want to see uh, cubes or sweet things for sugar team or uh, triangles for AX. Uh, just going to give a couple shout outs to Chu. We got Yama. You got uh, uh, Kino in the chat. Soy milk passing around the, the popcorn. Vanilla Kid for bread. Let's get this bread. We're going to see the breaking wheel already make his way towards the shack area. Just transitioning towards no man's land. Let's see if he'll pop it. See anyone here. Yeah, no man's land. There's a window over here. So the solo guy just going to utilize that to kite out this breaking wheel. As we all know, the breaking wheel is very, you know, afraid of um, a long wall and a window area. So mm -hmm. just gonna transition to find the enchantress. Ooh, yeah, this enchantress early game really wants to get her uh, her presence up. Now we do see a uh, 12-9 build. Nice. The influence yeah. is already building up. 
So let's see again. Oh, NXT, we're still able wow. to done. Oh wow. Count of wow. three for three, ladies and gentlemen. Two for two with the psychologist, but now uh Enchantress still building up that stack. It seems like Cerberus still wants to persist and try to wear down this Enchantress. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's a pallet area. We'll get a spy mm. off to hit Enchantress, and the bling is now available for Severus. Could be going for it now. Uh -oh, uh, watch out. Oh, trap this. But oh! oh! Empty blink. Wow, that's oh, actually wow. bodes well for this Enchantress. Now there's a cooldown on that blink, ladies and gentlemen, while this Enchantress builds that stack. So this is actually going really well for this Enchantress. He has to avoid that one hit, oh! though, but oh, able to get a trap. Shooting for threes is Cerberus. Even though that sequence didn't bode well with him, he's going to check here if anybody's hanging around. It is going to be the Magician. Able to go for the magic wand there just to buy a little more time. But Cerberus downing his first survivor in less than two, two minutes is actually a pretty good start. Mm -hmm. And now with the Cypher over here being camped, it's going to be uh, putting a toe onto the decoding progress. But still, they have pop one Cypher with the courtesy of uh, Entomologist over here. Someone has to go in for the rescue. Mm -hmm. they, they need that. And uh, we do see that the mercenary is just hanging around this area. Uh, Magician at the center is trying to pop that cypher. The one inside factory is actually quite close to popping. So it seems like mercenary will try to be able to expend an elbow pad here to close out the distance to save the four half. Gets the swing early on, but it's all good. Enchantress has a four stack NTT. Mm -hmm. But, it, but uh, Max President is available for Severus over here. Could be going for the snap with uh, Anzac official. There's no but... spike, so I think the snap. Uh, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, he's gonna have to go for some spikes here. Now, just blocking out the window. Uh, this is gonna be huge. Oh my god, Enchantress hiding in the corner, oh, able oh, oh. to juke him a little bit, but eats that spike in the process. So it's really important for the Enchantress not to eat another spike. So he's gonna try to test the driving skills of Cerberus, but unfortunately, there. He oh, gets... he... oh my god, the sandwich situation. Ah, Cabidon. Uh, a situation coming from the Severus here. Now Enchantress has nowhere to run and will be coming back to the chair where she has been. The Cypher in the factory is still at bay. So yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't moved at all since the Enchantress needed that, but we do see the forward about to pop a Cypher for his own. Magician has already popped one. Entomologist is the one to go for this rescue. So it seems like, yeah, they are prime. Well, this, this next kite has to last long NTT. So now Tide Turner able to provide him a little bit of that support. Entomologist eats a spike as well as Enchantress. It's really important for this Enchantress to kite out uh, until this, uh, well, the, the spikes um, wear away. Uh-oh. Yeah, he made it. Now we'll try to go for a stun coming from ANX, but have to look out for the snap, the potential. ANX official, actually. Ooh, uh, able to cancel it out. Yeah. Able to hit the, the stun, but yeah. no, the trap once again. Ooh. The bees are oh, the able to pop. pop it. I wasn't able to see the prime Ooh. cypher. That was such an incredible pop on the side of the survivors. And now they're pushing for the exit gates. Mm -hmm. uh, Cerreros is now at the... At a dire situation right now. We'll have to down to Survivor in order to get the win for uh, Sugar Team. Blinking through the wall and we'll be downing this entomologist. And like official is actually stuck over on the side of the factory though. Mm -hmm. So now uh, NX official has to be very careful. Entomologist giving an opening, but Ooh. just gets spotted out in the open. NTT, three stack inbound on NX official. So that's something that we have to worry about mm -hmm. if you are a Cerberus here. So um, this allows the mercenary to probably pick up or try to open up the exit gate because NX official is kiting for a while and gaining another stack gets the second spike oh. and now just stuns him completely to create that distance. Mm -hmm. Now we'll have to close the distance in order to use a snap coming from a side Cerberus here. I think the distance is enough to go for the snap and oh actually trying to go back to find out where the entomologist is mm -hmm. but uh yeah they are still making their way yeah they're hiding this kind of allows the enchantress to actually heal up so uh cerberus might have to be very careful here because if he chairs the enchantress he at least gets one survivor but this does open up the survivors to just exit the game and it seems like he will just secure that one uh, survivor that is going to be secured. But AX, ladies and gentlemen, winning this first uh, match. Wow. So, yeah, uh, this kind of proves the point where 
you don't really see a lot of breaking wheel in the outside tree map. Um, the survivor know very well where to kite out the wheel, so it put a lot of hard time onto a Cerberus over there. Mm -hmm. NX official also was able to, I mean, the Enchantress, the stuns, even though that the snap yeah. was inbound, he knew that he had to build up those stacks. He wasn't just uh, spamming uh, the, the stuns left and right. He, it was very calculated. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, it's it was it was tough uh, from the get go because everyone knew where to hide, and you saw that uh, Cerberus was just avoiding the areas where it was not going to be optimal for him. Uh, Blink was be Blink was utilized really well at the start. You know, uh, all all they, they were counted really well except the first one. Uh, the <laughs> trap placement was really good. Yeah. So ultimately, let's check out the match stats. Yeah. 173.2 seconds of kiting. Um, yeah, for an Enchantress uh, up against a Breaking Wheel, that is unheard of, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. That's uh, NX you... official, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's official. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And uh, the stuns, uh, uh, pallet stuns, the, the I wish we had a stun counter on the Enchantress as yeah. well, because they were really good. And it was like three stacks, so... I think the chat also is kind of sounding off that like, yeah, this kind of also proves the point that uh, the 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 map itself was so important when it comes to uh, the the hunter here, uh, breaking wheel. It was uh, it was a little tough, but you got to give it up to Cerberus, ladies and gentlemen. I want to I want to see some love in the chat for him uh, trying and actually you know what sticking to his guns because Cerberus is really known as a pollen uh, a pollen hunter. And for him to bring it out here just shows courage and shows bravery and shows that he tried to show his hard work. Um, but in, in instances like this, it's just the map working against you. The map is the fifth survivor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I thought it was Tram. Uh, well, in Arms Factory, it's the it's it's the windows <laughs> for the breaking. <laughs> yeah, up. all right. Oh, yep. So yeah, a AX getting the lead here with the first round. So. A 5-3, a difference of 2 points, so SG still can catch up to it, but they will mm -hmm. have to do it immediately in round 2. Yeah. Uh, at least a draw for them. They can't lose this round, even though... Uh, well, they can go for ties, and the point differential isn't too much, but round difference, AX is uh, leading, and mm -hmm. this kind of shows that their survivor and hunter side, they, they kind of got each other's backs covered. So... Mm -hmm. Now they have map advantage. I don't know if Talap is going to come in again because he is just... Uh, we've only seen his Dream Witch. Uh, we've seen in their previous match the one that won them uh, a shot at the group stage. Polar comes in. So we're just going to have to wait and see if Polar will be the one hunting for them and bring out that Nightmare. Mm, yeah. Oh, Nightmare? <laughs> yeah. He was the one that brought yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it could be... Uh, it is a Nightmare. I... Uh, uh, is it ever sleeping town? Yeah, it that, is ever sleeping That's town. the map that he wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. 4K. <laughs> the ever sleeping town. So, sugar team. Uh, I'm looking forward to see if, are there any changes in the uh, lineup for both sides. And mm -hmm. also the mapping pick because it's sugar town to pick if I remember correctly. Uh, oh, because, you're right. Yeah, right, you're right. Yeah. It, it is. It is sugar so, town. So, they could pick a map that counter the other side. Uh, if they didn't change the hunter. Uh, seems like they deal well with the Witch, so I don't think they would ban the Witch, to be honest. Uh, I think, well, they could, or they could just ban uh, Dreamwish yeah. map that would overpower Cerberus, right? Oh, uh, yeah. But what's a map the that could do that? Be Breaking Wheel yeah, will be yeah, banned, for sure. that's for certain. Okay, so now that we have Arms Factory, uh, uh, what's a map that would actually benefit Cerberus here? Because he has an Axe Boy, he has a Bon Bon. Uh, uh, and bon you bon. know that... the you you do know that they're gonna ban the pollen for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, mm. Bon Bon, uh, small map because not the greatest mobility. Arms Factory again. Mm, I don't think we can pick the same uh, the same map once again. Um, we, we could as long as it's not this team that like if it's not it's, if it changes uh, teams you can pick it. So we they could. Um, yeah, there's but, a change. Polo is making his appearance yeah. in the group stage. <laughs> as you so say, nightmare. Oh. Um. Yeah, could be. Yeah, they could ban like just the meta hunters, which happened in the previous one, and just go for, uh, yeah, just kind of face nightmare, just like just like clerk, just keep her, keep him starving of presence. 
just make sure that you don't feed him right away because mm -hmm. it's 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 tough for nightmare to gain that presence but we've seen how polar yeah. was able to do it now for the map that could benefit cerberus um ever sleeping town chinatown even though uh, that the pollen can be banned. Yeah, even though the pollen is going to be banned. I'm, I'm thinking about the potential for a bonbon bon game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because um, mm. it could be the red shirt, to be honest. Yeah, that's they... actually a good map. Yeah. And it, and it also can benefit their survivors, too, since the survivors seem... Uh, well, based on the previous performance, they seem a little more stable. I think uh, mm -hmm. Cerberus still is kind of finding his footing. Mm -hmm. And if the survivors are the ones to face the first half, Maybe he they could give that boost of confidence to Cerberus, yeah. or Pow Pow could come in. And yeah, we'll see if they have mm. any changes in the lineup. But uh, because uh, because, uh, because uh, uh, entity Pow Pow has the sculptor has the BQ, which mm -hmm. I feel like uh, compared to the Bon Bon in other maps, I mean sculptor, she's she's stable. She's one of the most pick hunters in IVC as of late. Mm -hmm. BQ, maybe save it for later. Oh, Senny's gonna Ooh, be switched. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, Senny's coming in. Okay. Um, ah, Senny is coming in uh, with uh, I, the. Uh, I'm pretty sure she saw the Enchantress and is like, uh -huh. "Yo, I gotta get in on this Enchantress action." <laughs> <laughs> let me show you. Mm -hmm. Let me let me just flex this badge. I mean, it's uh depends if the hunter side ban the Enchantress or not. And that's another uh, factor for sure. Yeah, that's another factor to think about. Uh, Senia still has that perfumer to use. But yeah, yeah talking about Polar, uh, Nightmare, um, could be another hunter or... Uh, do you have any info about Polar? Because Polar for me, again, he did bring out the Nightmare and AX did so well on the Survivor side that they didn't have to play a third round hunter. Yeah, that's... So... Yeah, it's still... Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, yeah. In but, the, but in, in, in the four fours here, yeah. I believe. I believe uh, when they did face, uh, was it uh, who did they? Adam, ADM. Oh, when okay. they face when they face Adam in Ever Sleeping Town. They banned his breaking wheel, which I feel like is just okay. uh, it's it's a reactionary ban, like a knee jerk ban, because it's like Ever Sleeping Town. You don't want to risk it. We're not even sure if Polar has, uh, based on our notes at least, if he does have a breaking wheel. We do know he has a nightmare, so depending on the map, we'll see if. Because I don't think, and based on the stats that I took, uh, nightmare, yeah, you don't ban him. You just, you just, yeah, you just, you you just counter really him. Bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, nightmare, easy to counter. I have a hard time trying to get a match for him. He's uh, tough, dude. You got to work for it. To he's be very tough. So, yeah, and. Let's see what the map is first before we speak about the potential picks because Nightmare mm. can totally work with any map, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be SG that's picking first, right? Would you yep. opt for a big map or a small map? We haven't seen Lakeside yet, and that's a map that they did pretty well in. I mean, Sugar did ban Lakeside, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Did ban Lake Lakeside in the previous game, so I'm not sure what their game plan is. Uh... uh... But remember, AX did get a map ban in the epic phase, so mm -hmm. AX gotta ban the map first, and then she's gonna pick the map. Mm. Uh, as for Cons the map ban... Yeah, considering that if uh, AX wants to completely eliminate the Dream Witch of Talap, um, I mean, you could shadow ban it. You could, you could just ban like a really good map like Chinatown or Ever Sleeping Town. <laughs> go force him to go with like okay they pick chinatown then you ban his dream uh his, sorry his his pollen oh wait oh sorry i i it's i misspoke polar. here it's polar yeah. okay uh polar could be playing as a breaking wheel so i think it's gonna be the same band that you said that, that, mm -hmm. that you mentioned for sure they're gonna ban mm -hmm. the breaking wheel immediately mm -hmm. um uh we have no really no uh you know important info on polar other than the nightmare so mm -hmm. it's still up in the air for us to predict um what the potential here uh, still it's kind of like an advantage for the side mm -hmm. of ax because the side of the side of sugar survivor will mm -hmm. will have a hard time knowing what they are going to be going up against for sure uh 
this actually gives us time to talk to chat and ask them what they think because hmm. yeah a lot of people have been chiming in with nightmare yeah nightmare is not effective unless he's at full presence and yeah. we've seen like the the black and white of it we've seen how well the the hunter can perform but when he's at full presence but we've also seen how survivors can heavily counter nightmare uh, mm -hmm. Now that we know Polars is coming in, let's see if he has more to offer. If you guys have any information on Polars, let us know too. It seems like Vanilla kinda is uh, passing around more popcorn. Uh, <laughs> Sean just made it into the chat, uh, saying that he loves Maney. We also love everyone that's in the chat here. Oh, um, so mm -hmm. that Mahal is love, right? Yeah, Mahal. Oh. There we go. Boom. Yeah, okay. Officially Pinoy. For bread is passing around bread. Let's go. Let me see what's going on in chat. Um, Santi showing us love, showing love, and saying that he's excited to go to Koa this year. We gotta wait, you know, until next year. Koa six, ladies and gentlemen. Can't wait to see how that's gonna happen. But yeah, we can only speculate so much. We just have to know what is the map. Hang on, let me just. Yeah. Oh. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, knowing Sugar Team, they might pick Ever Sleeping Town. To be honest. Hmm. Unless the side of AX banned Ever Sleeping Town, then mm -hmm. that's a totally different story. Yeah, uh, this uh, this kind of would be a little bit of deja vu from the match we saw AX start out, right? Started out in Chinatown and then went to uh, Ever Sleeping Town, and that's where the nightmare came in. So yeah. we are getting, uh, we are gonna wait a bit, but it seems like it might be a big map. So mm -hmm. that's something that we have to consider. Yeah. Again, I, I feel like maybe they're done with Arms Factory, so nah. Leo's memory. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the map that's never been chosen by them. Yeah, the yeah. Map. But it has been banned, by the way. It banned. has. Yeah. yeah, that's how it's never been chosen, but it's been banned. Like that's how much people do not like it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about Leo's memory? Can I can I ask you? Like, would you ban uh... it? Is it a bannable map for you? Uh, if I'm in uh, uh if, if I'm in Leo's memory in ranked. I would immediately lose the game. Really? That's how yeah. bad Leo's memory matchup is for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, so, map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a curse map. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the curse of Leo's memory. Um, I couldn't see a time where they could pick Leo's memory, to be honest. So, talking about big map, it could be like Psy or Moonlit. Mm. Between those two, what's your favorite? You want to see some roller coasters or uh, big ship? I mean, being a feast, I mean, I would prefer Moonlit because you know those line, <laughs> those those line in the game where you can mm. place a tentacle down where you Boom. place right now and then that's a checkmate. Yeah, that, that's a free hit for you. Mm -hmm. Um, as for like side, I believe it's more of a map for transitional kiting. Yeah, I'll agree with you there because Lakeside for me has been like a 50-50 map. I had some good moments there, but I also had some uh, brain fog moments. Like, where am I going? Because like, <laughs> you need to have your routes on point in Lakeside. Especially mm -hmm. if you spawn right, right at the middle where you're near the fence, Cypher. And then yeah. you're in between the big boat and the small boat. That is such a tough spot to be in. You're like, oh, where do I go? Mm -hmm. Do you pick the big boat or the small boat? Mm -hmm. Depending on my uh, survivor, yeah. Uh, but I do like the small boat. I, I know my routes better instead of the big boat. Uh, yeah, the big boat. There's no pallet uh, over there. There's only window and you know a, a drop down sex, uh, section that you could use to kite out the hunter. But it's very dangerous because the hunter could get a free hit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think in the new map, a boat's actually going to be moving? I feel like that's pretty <laughs> <true. laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, expanding Sacred Heart Hospital. And they are going to pick Mullet Real Park. We might see some real c coaster action once again. Honestly, um, I, I wait. I will have to put out there NTT that uh, I think the clerk is just immediately banned now. Uh, <laughs> it's shadow banned, dude. We've seen it. It worked out so well. Shout out to the Mad Penguins just showing us the the holes in the clerk's game. Yeah, able to you know kite out the clerk. Just a bit. It's just a bit unfortunate at the end game situation there. But still, they managed to get a tie. So, I mean, it's polar. Eh? Uh, Nightmare is actually thrive with a big map like this. So, True. we polar might see a Nightmare. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah, we do have some nightmare mains in the chat. Gaming Alive is a nightmare main. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are discussing how Nightmare is, you know, at the start, very kiteable. That's why I think you got to have a good first chase. I mean, uh, I did, yeah, I did mention this uh, previously when we saw the match. Uh, Zuka. Oh, it's actually with Nell, sorry. Um, so with a Nightmare, you should bring Insulin and Bleeding. Insulin, in think, to, yeah. yeah. In order to get to Max Prison earlier. So mm -hmm. you can down the survival faster. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. The when it came to the build of Polar, though, I'm trying to remember it, but he did bring Blink. It was it was uh, a trump card and detention for him. Ooh, okay. Interesting. He didn't even use the trump card because he got the 4K. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had that beautiful uh, Blink double jump dash in uh, able to d down oh. the... Wait, 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 no, wait. That was Polar. Uh, mm -hmm. It was 6, 12 uh, teleport, sorry. Teleport, okay. So... Let's see, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to head into the map. Uh, well, picks and bans here. It is going to be Cerberus that will be hunting first. Okay, so no changes in the hunter lineup over here. It's going to be Mullet, Real Park, and four survival ban with one hunter ban on the other side. i just going to predict that it's going to be a breaking wheel ban. That's for certain. Yeah, that's not even a question. I feel like yeah. they doesn't want to roll the dice. They want to... Maybe bring out the Axe Boy, maybe bring out the Bonbon, bon, because the map would just counter it in itself. It could be the Axe Boy, to be honest. The Axe Boy can traverse around the area. Uh, banning the Seer and the Priestess, though, so it's very conventional. Uh, the survivor side could pick that uh, a mercenary and forward right here. But looks like it's not going to be a forward in the first two pick over here. Interesting. I guess, yeah, they really want to lock in that Enchantress. Of course. Uh -huh. Why wouldn't they? The NX official did so well in that Enchantress. Yeah. Um, makes me think that he might offer a Bonbon bon just because this Enchantress needs to be close quarters and that could give him more of a chance to down. But you're going to have to be able to down her before she gets the three stack going on. So uh -huh. uh, this is going to be pretty tough. So we just have to wait on the other side of the screen to see who he's going to ban next. It's the entomologist. Yeah, the entomologist. Uh, I'm actually leaning more towards uh, an XY game. So, yeah, the survival side here. Uh, oh. So, I do want to mention in the chat, Wendigo X Polar doesn't actually play Nightmare that much. He just played him that one time because they didn't counter Nightmare. So, Polar... But Polar... Uh, finds getting to hydra easy he could probably play anything so big shout outs to you windigo and also christina x and also everyone in the chat so ntt it seems like polar has anything on and everything on the table yeah now it's it's going to be exciting to find out what polar will be using but before that yeah the game that we are having right here server is going to be the hunter a psychologist has been picked for the survivor side so uh, yeah, very uh, crucial role with the Wi-Fi healing. Banning the Magician, though. Yeah, he's had enough of Magicians, I think. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. Oh. Is this my... Wait, is this the... That's a Mind's Eye? No, I no. Okay. Oh, yeah, change. Okay, I got um, I got scared. I was like, she had the hat on. I'm like, please. Not the best rescuer in the game, the Mind's <laughs> Eye. <laughs> Save yourself from the Hunter. Run away. Mm-hmm. Now is it's going to be oh! real. Is this is this real? Oh wow! It has been locked in. Ooh. Oh, Cerberus playing to is... the well. It seems like we will see a nightmare match to start things off, but not on Polar side. But Cerberus is considering it. Are we going to see a nightmare? Um. Oh, what? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> but still, equally. Um, uh, surprising is the wax artist hey the wax artist has been one in zero when it comes to this because uh, of coco duck in this map in particular so Cerberus knows what he's doing probably taking a page out of croco ducks uh arsenal here uh but wow the, i'm i'm still taken aback with this lawyer ntt i don't know what to make on to this uh <laughs> Yeah. It's a big map. Yeah, it's a big map. It's the lawyer. I mean, lawyer can far can 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 you know be like a CIN find where the hunter actually is. 
But with an, yeah, but with an ex a wax artist, uh, we just see the wax artist, you know, being able to lock the cipher. So mm. the survivor has to pay attention to, you know, finishing the cipher. Uh, especially when the wax artist, uh, try to camp around the area with uh, a decoder in the vicinity. Hmm. So, wax yeah. artist has wax been artist his way. Yeah. Uh, he has. So a different map though. So this is gonna be interesting. Uh, how he's gonna play those Sonalkas. Potentially good kiters. I mean, the lawyer is a little questionable. At least you don't get terror shocked. That's uh, that's always a plus on anyone's side. Um, but yeah, he can always he can be like the semi seer of the game to kind of just call out where the hunter is yeah. gonna be going. And um, well, at least he's gonna know where all the ciphers are at. So that's good. I mean, yeah, lawyer is not a great kiter to be honest. Uh, uh, apart from being able to counter the terror shock when it's come to you know re rescuing against a chair, mm -hmm. um, uh, the terror shock thing doesn't really put to great use to be honest. And mm -hmm. yeah, let's get into the match between the survivor side of AX and the hunter side of Sugar. Wax artist here spawning at the first stop, but not transition uh -oh. into the behind of the two story here. It's like he knows Scythe. The lawyer here seems to oh. be the one that he's going after in the tent area. We are going to get a pause and deduction, ladies and gentlemen. But you saw that he was uh, making a beeline. It's like he knew. <laughs> okay, yeah. there's going to be a lawyer here. So I might as well just go straight ahead because this is the juiciest target. Yeah. No kiting buffs whatsoever except for the the terror shock. But, I mean, he's a wax artist. He's, he's yeah, he's a wax artist. You could chip damage him. Yeah. So... Hmm, usually when you spawn at the first stop, you would go to the uh, area behind the two-story, the god mm -hmm. kiting, as you call it. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, Severus actually transitioned into the tent, and uh, sooner or later, he will find out it's the lawyer in the uh, vicinity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, a great first find, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. A lawyer has a bad uh, chance of, you know, kiting out a wax artist. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, most of the lawyer player uh, has a has a skill to raw kite, to be honest. So it's yeah, still and, enough, yeah, and if you notice, he was at the back part of the circus tent. So, I mean, that's not. I mean, it's 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 a tough area to kite, especially if you're kiting a wax artist. And I mean, he's just gonna try to just stop you from going. And there's no no way for you you to use the coaster because you're at fourth stop. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be tough for this uh, lawyer kind of put in a tough spot here and i'm pretty sure he knows because he checked the map and he's like oh my god this hunter is making a beeline for me <laughs> so that's uh gonna be really tough on the side of the survivors but hey um scythe using the lawyer i mean i think they have they, they planned something out so let's see if it'll work out i mean like uh, it could be like the lawyer using the map Ooh, the hunter is a wax artist and he is oh 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 he's coming for me <laughs> jeez that's uh, yeah. that's 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 uh, i've i've used lawyer enough to know that feeling that okay so we have a map he's a he's a feaster he's whatever why is he heading towards me <laughs> so, um by the way yeah, no. uh, Chris, christina x in the chat reminded everyone if there's gonna be a feaster we're gonna see a hair flip from ntt uh, there's none yet. <laughs> none yet, none yet. Just letting everyone know. <laughs> so, yeah, going for a 6 power build with a lot of other threat. Um, Desperate yeah. Fight, Rage, and... Uh, uh, yeah, with, camping uh, potential. Yeah, the camping recovery potential. Recovery for the hit. So, uh -huh. Scythe able to at least break that line of sight. So, no Wax is going to be deployed just yet. He's going to actually run probably into Chamomile, but now the, the Blood Trails are going to be spotted out. And Scythe, yeah, he's going to try yeah. to create that distance. And try to block using the real estate of this map. Mm -hmm. A great first find for uh, Severus over here. It's the lawyer, uh -oh. the only one without the ability to kite out a wax artist. And mind you, this is a wax artist before the um, adjustment. So there's still uh, 1,200 uh, wax to be oh, you're right. in the energy uh, uh, instead of no eight, wax. Uh, yeah. instead of 800. So it's kind of tough. Oh, God, gets another oh! stun on this lawyer. And that's a yeah. down lawyer. Early kite already and, completed. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Severus is actually able to cam up the cypher at the force station where Camomile was decoding. 
So that's actually a great start yeah. for Cerberus. And now he's going to just block this Cypher off because it's almost primed and ready. Chamomile now kind of forced to make this rescue happen. Yeah, able to find out where Chamomile is. We'll go for the Wax hit, uh, I believe. Now, actually going for the hit first and we'll be downing this lawyer immediately. Yeah, and just the attack recovery, just downing the lawyer right away and now just focusing first on just you know, putting Wax on that mm. Cypher so it doesn't move. Three Cyphers still remain. Mercenary working on a new one. Seems like if they're going to go for another rescue, they might have to be able to yeah, do a trade-off here of the Mercenary Cypher uh, with, a, with a psychologist here. But now we see that, you know what, Scythe able to move on along, but the basement oh! is actually here. Yeah, to be honest, the survivor side did a really great job with the decoding progress here. Three Cypher almost uh, done, and two Cypher only for the survivor side. They could go for the Cycle 5, uh, but... Um... Yeah, seems like uh, one individual. Uh, it's nice guy here baiting the tinnitus. To he be knows. Wow. Oh, able to spot oh. him out, but no. Nice guy able to get a hit, and let's see if he'll try and go for this rescue. I think he might actually try to close out the distance. No, gets cut oh. off. So actually, now not, we see Cerberus now just. Yeah, he's not rescuing. He's moving on away. So. He said it was too risky. Nice guy now has three elbow pads Ooh. to be able to cut out the distance and able to cut off Cerberus here. So now he's lost track of the mercenary, but able to find the scratch marks. Let's see where he's going because teleport is already online. Mm -hmm. Nice guy will be dodging dead uh, with that elbow pad there. Uh, now two survivors are decoding Cerberus, still trying to figure out which Cypher has been decoding, but now got to come back to the mercenary. Actually, oh, able to spot out the Shaking Cypher, and now we'll be going for uh, Enzac Official, the uh, Arc Nemesis. Mm. The, yeah, the <laughs> the stunner of the group. So let's see, this is round number two, ladies and gentlemen. NX Official. Stun oh! Him! Wow! Able to get another stun. That's two for this game alone. Yeah. That's four in total, I believe. But now forcing him to break this pallet. This kind of gives him an opening to just transition away from the tent mm -hmm. area. And now NX Official able to get at least one stun, but he's got to avoid these wax. Oh, oh. Wow, able to get the hit early on here. And now with one more hit uh, of the wax, uh, Severo will be able Whoa. to freeze NX Official and we'll be down mm -hmm. in these enchantress immediately. Chamomile though, already Whoa. primed and ready with that last cypher. It seems like the mercenary has to go for this rescue. They got to time this rescue very well. Chamomile now just moving away from that Cypher. He knows that server is caught whiff of uh, the Cypher about to be popped. And nice guy, just as I, we think of his name, he's going to go for this rescue. Mm -hmm. Again, with the hiding strategy. We'll be using an elbow pad to close the distance. And oh! oh! Wait, oh, able to just drop another wax on the, oh, on the Cypher, the last Cypher. So now yeah. Cerberus... Focusing his attention back on this Enchantress. Can they make this pop happen in time? No, he's going back and forth here. Wow. Yeah, still blocking the the, the, the Cypher coming from Severus over here. Uh, that's that's why Wax Artist is so scary. Mm -hmm. uh, he can, you know, block the Cypher. Almost oh. immediately. But they will go for the pop. And NX official able to avoid the wax from stopping her from moving. Gets the speed boost for her mm -hmm. to transition over to the broken carousel side. Is holding on to four stacks and he just has Whoa. to avoid, but the 100% we'll wax able to down this enchantress. Uh, Teleport is online, could go for the psychologist now. Will be kiting now is a psychologist and downing this psychologist immediately. Whoa. Oh wow, oh, and whoa. the psychologist. This kind of gives time for the enchantress to heal up, but will the enchantress heal up in time? Mercenary is already, uh, I believe he opened the gate already, so now it seems like he's gonna try to pick up or at least go for the rescue here. I think uh, the important thing is that Enchantress actually got a debuff on the healing progress. So, Severa mm -hmm. uh, could be yeah, able to share the Enchantress over here. Nice guy had to come back for the rescue if they want to get a better result. Yeah, but the thing is, the, the Exegate wasn't even touched. So, it seems like this Mercenary coming in, the tension is still in the air, NTT. Less than a minute left could be a lot. Enchantress, um, who is he? I mean, he's probably, probably going to try to kite it out. He can eat a detention hit, so that's super important. Nice guy, able to pop open the elbow pad here. Gets the rescue on this Enchantress. Let's see if he can make his way. No more elbow pads for him to use. He's going to try to bait out a hit for him to be able to at least go for the rescue of this uh, psychologist. And remember, Hosswack is still oh. available. And able to get a hit onto that uh, mercenary. Could be going for the Hosswack onto NX Official. 
to down the enchantment and normal hit uh, and could mm -hmm. go for the normal hit onto the uh, mercenary also. Oh, oh my god, it seems like NX officials oh, still trying to fight oh, it out. Oh, Enchantress is down. Mercenary is nowhere near anymore. He's going to go for the exit. And it's Cerberus turning things around, getting a three-person kill. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, Mercenary just said adios. Yeah, going back to the other gate where he will be escaping. Oh my god, Cerberus able to get a three-man kill uh, from this game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with a wax artist in Moonlight, you just saw the the power of him. Oh, oh just the the, teleport! Oh my god! Oh wait. my god! It's not open just yet. Able oh. to get it. Oh, he can eat the hit. Don't. Yeah. Luckily, the the tonight the detention wore off already because yeah. that could have been a whole different story. I thought the exit gate was open. Oh. That was close. That could have been yeah. a 4K. Yeah, if he teleport a little bit earlier, I think the Mercenary wouldn't dare to touch the gate. Mm -hmm. Or he could go for the wax to block the gate for opening. Yeah, I, so, I think all things considered, the mercenary, you know what? Yeah, he kind of had to extend there a little bit. I thought the Enchantress was dead on chair, the, the, but he yeah. was able to cant it out. Uh, it just shows once a full presence wax artist, you know, just being able to chip damage, stop the transitioning of the survivors, and also holding the ciphers down. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful performance on Cerberus' side, uh, making the wax artist work. So, yeah. I think the wax artist has been, yeah, winning so far. Like, I mean, we <laughs> haven't seen that much, but Croco Duck's wax artist and also Cerberus' wax artist. So I would say, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say wax artist got a more stable performance than the Nightmare. Yeah. yeah, we have to actually call a spade a spade here. I think you know what? It might turn into a clerk situation where they have to study the wax artist to find oh, yeah. a, a counter here. But looking at the match, that's. A questionable pick, I would have to say, on the lawyer's side. Yeah. If, if Scythe picked another, let's say, acrobat or a patient, I think this this matchup would have been a different result because the early down on the lawyer kind of uh, solidified Cerberus to gain yeah. the momentum at the start of the match. So that's the reason why you you know, usually bring Kaida to face up against a uh, wax artist. Mm -hmm. uh, and not to mention that the wax artist kind of thrive when you break a stunner. Because mm -hmm. which each stun that you uh, cause onto him, a, a wax burst will, you know, be covering the area and will yeah. put twenty five percent of wax onto you. So that's mm -hmm. why it's so scary to you know stun mm -hmm. to to palace stun the wax artist. Yeah, it's a trade off for sure. Uh, and with NX official, right? You say you say pallets, he goes where? I mean, mm -hmm. um, I want to I want to slam a pallet down to get a stun. He was still able to get some stuns going on, not just with the enchantress, the cursed uh, skull but also get one on the pallet. So uh, amazing job on Cerberus' side. Now we're going to switch things up. It's going to be Sugar Team's uh, survivors doing the work here while Polar is coming in. And based on his previous performance, he is a 4K hunter. So yeah. they're, not, they're not out of the woods here because if he gets the 4K, uh, immediately the AX, yeah. Yeah, AX wins. So yeah, uh, Sugar had to get at least... A three, uh, um, a three, uh, oh, wait, an one man escape, mm -hmm. I believe, to get Just into round secure. three. Yeah. So a draw for them is enough to tie this score, like a five three to five three, I believe. Yes. So, mm -hmm. um, a, a sugar survivor side did team up very well, mm -hmm. and you know them picking Moonlit Real Park, they might have planned for the matchup here. We could see a roller coaster tragedy. <laughs> you know, to be honest. <laughs> Roller coaster could be, yeah, uh, there. I'm just thinking, you know, if he has his nightmare, it's not going to matter because he's just going to throw a crow yeah. and he's going to be able to move. Uh, um, but, but the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the teleport cooldown of the crow is uh, 50 seconds, so could you could be. go from one yeah. side to another. Yeah. Teleport, oh god, teleport nightmare, that could happen. But yeah. we did, yeah, get, get insights in the chat that Polar... You know, he has other hunters. He's not yeah. really known for that nightmare, but he's known because of his performance as of last week. Mm -hmm. So he could, for all we know, he could bring out a breaking wheel. Even And they don't respect that breaking wheel. Yeah, they might respect the breaking wheel, to be honest. Like, they have, if they have no info on a hunter, they would just ban the meta. That's usually the case that we are seeing. Th that did happen in the previous match, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, like, he could 
I mean, he could go meta on this one. He can uh, go with Sculptor. He could go with uh, Ooh, yeah. BQ. He could, he, he could go with um, just the, the usual suspects if his Breaking Wheel does get banned like the previous performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the previous map. Yeah. Um, again, uh, Modern Real Park has potential for a lot of Hunter. You could even see uh, the clerk once again in Polo's hand. You don't know. Oof, actually, uh, no, really it could be a mirror it. match. It could be a mirror match of Wax Artist. Yeah. How, mm, if if he brings out a clerk, do you think Sugar Team's ready for a clerk? Uh, it's very hard to tell, to be honest. I mean, they have the you know, they have you know, the roller coaster. They have usually, the roller coaster. Usually when you kite our mer uh, uh, clerk, it's usually the first kite that is the most influential throughout the match. Like mm -hmm. if the first kite didn't do well, the match is just gonna tumble down. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have I forgot what I'm about to say, but oh, it's yeah. okay. Um yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you said. The the first kite is definitely very uh game breaking or game changing. If you're if you're going up against a clerk, and that's what MP did, they do. I mean, this this map would definitely uh, help the survivors transition a lot. But it it was so apparent that Mad Penguins were they 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 studied that route. The way they were using the roller coaster back and forth, that was the most I've seen it go back and forth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, going for joyride. So uh, uh, unlimited ticket. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. If if and only if. Polar brings out a clerk. Yeah, SG has to be ready for yeah. it. Yeah. And I don't know if they've um they've um they practice that much that, that meticulously like Mad Penguins. That's what I'm Yeah. I mean, uh, if they have no idea what Polar is going to bring out, they just going to go with their comfortable picks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could see that here the mercenary, the uh, officer, um mechanic, um better uh, Prospector, like a lot of uh, comfortable characters that they have been going through throughout the uh, span of IVC. So now with um, four survivor ban and one hunter ban, uh, Polar might be banning the usual uh, Princess and Seer. Yeah, for sure. No matter what the hunter like he's thinking in this map, you cannot risk bringing a Seer and a Priestess coming. Well, more Priestess depends what polar is feeling uh but we have you know we have it on good authority to say that yeah eli is still in jail sorry eli <laughs> yeah sorry um, you, you you your owl yeah it's it's not gonna happen and just like that the and priestess getting banned i want to see what sugar team will be banning on the hunter side mm -hmm. now um they might be going in with the um pollen ban oh uh, i mean it could be a rewitch ban to be honest because both hunter thrive in Molybdenum Park. Mm. Yeah, but I, I kind of agree with what you said earlier with, you know, if you don't know, whoa, they banned the oh! Nightmare? Oh my uh, god. Uh, Alright. Okay. So, you know, oh. pulling out of the previous game? They, they probably, yeah, they're not comfortable with it and they want to be able to go for comfort here, but... Ah... Uh... This is this is kind of scary. Uh, if Polar has a breaking wheel, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a t uphill battle. A breaking yeah. wheel with this much bands, that's that's gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. it seems like they are going with a comfortable picks. I feel like Daddy is going for the uh, mercenary, and that's been changes for saying yeah. A banning the Fever. That's interesting. Oh, this kind of um, makes me think that. Oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, no, you go for it. Wait. Um. <laughs> Yeah, comfort pick is definitely going to be uh, in play on Team uh, Sugar here. But AX here, banning the Perfumer, banning the Seer. These are single hit hunters that he's uh, he's probably going for. Could be a Clerk, could be a BQ. Hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, the Breaking Wheel is also scare of the Perfumer because you can use the Perfume to, you know, hmm. allow you to get the uh, Spike, but then you Perfume back and... That's fine. But over, hmm, but over Acrobat, I feel like Acrobat poses a bigger threat in that aspect. Oh, yeah. And now the mechanic, so it doesn't want Siphon Rush uh, to happen. So it's kind of, huh. Oh, yeah. Not lining up to be a Breaking Wheel man. Uh, breaking Wheel match, to be honest. Um, yeah, he could, he, he could be priming for like single hit hunters here. He could be priming for 
Uh, yeah, BQ. Yeah, BQ. Be... Um, who else? Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are in the fog right now. <laughs> we are in the fog right now. Like we have. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, I'm. I'm just excited to see what he's going to be bringing out because. Uh, a, a, a hunter that doesn't wants to take its time. Yeah, you sure you could say that with breaking wheel, too. But I mean, a oh, oh a spider! Oh. There it is. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. the Ebola pick is trying to go for the tie, but then the hunter picks the violet, which is known as the tie hunter in IBL. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes e sense. Though. Wow. Violet. So, yeah. It's still gonna be a little tough. I'm not gonna lie, because out in the open, yeah, she's not gonna have the speed. The, the spider's not gonna have the speed boost, right? So, but this does seem a little calculated on Polar's side. So we're just gonna have to trust uh, in him with this. And wow, it's just—I mean—the the ban of the nightmare to the spider. This is a big statement that he is making. Uh, I guess Polar is the hunter to come in like second or the anchor hunter just when yeah. all the metas are banned so it seems like nightmare and spider yeah with with dream witch with breaking wheel on the table yeah he's definitely one of the unconventional hunters that go for comfort mm. and go for uh the surprise factor so let's see if they're gonna be ready for this spider yeah now uh, as for the survivor side acrobat ball didn't really do much against the spider because those web uh speed boosts can be uh you know, detrimental to go up against and mm -hmm. your vault won't do anything. As for the Enchantress, you have to time the stun well enough mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. prevent the speed boost. All the other picks though, um, Mercenary, a safe rescue character, and uh, Embalmer, a very tie oriented survivor. Yeah, when it comes to the last two, Mercenary, it's going to be a little tough because he could just, yeah, just transition away from where the webs are. Embalmer, it's really important when it comes to the location of where he drops the coffin because if he drops it like at first stop and he ends up in fourth stop, that's going to be a tough chase. So, Entity, let's talk about Persona's traits. What do you think is going to be on the table for Polar? Oh, yeah. Um, Spider usually have 3 6 mil, but with Moonlit, I'm not really sure about that. Um, mm -hmm. As for the trait, uh, most definitely Blink. Mm -hmm. Early down, uh, being able to capture the first survivor. So the first chase, and he's going to be at the very committal with where he transitions in the map if he's going to bring that blink because mm -hmm. um, he's going to have to spend some web to just cover some distance. And I don't think he wants to do that, especially if he doesn't have any presence. So Polar, uh, first chase, you really want to get that embalmer, I feel like, especially if his coffin is near the area. Um how about you, Entity? First chase would be... Uh, who do you think would be the best possible one? Uh, again, uh, the same sentimental, uh, the same sentimental as you. Trying to f try to find that Embalmer first. But um, Embalmer with an already placed coffin will be very hard to deal with. So mm -hmm. every other three survivor are hard to chase, to be honest. Yeah, imagine chasing Acrobat in like fourth stop with the... Yeah. Or even in first or fourth stop. Enchantress, with, when you don't have the webs or the presence built up yet, she's just going to farm her stuns. Mercenary is just going to transition away. And speaking of yeah. transitioning, we are going to transition to the map, ladies and gentlemen. NTT and Fox Spice once again giving you the commentary action. It seems like he's going to run straight towards Seni, who is the Enchantress. And then he is at fourth stop, but he's not going to bother anymore. Because uh, good hiding on Seni's side. Oh no, he doubled back. Oh, close. Okay, so uh, Senia is actually stuck at the four stop, but Polar didn't go for uh, Enchantress there. Probably knows that Senia is a very formidable uh, Enchantress player. Mm -hmm. Bang has been able to place that coffin mm -hmm. uh, on the two stories, so Polar is at a loss, to be honest, now allowing Bang to, you know, safely uh, retreat to a safer area. This is. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I just had to just ask him. There we go. So now we note that um, yeah, the kiting route. Um, yeah, she, he's just trying to spread his presence as far as possible. Cipher progress isn't the best just yet, and they don't have that much mobility. Yubang uh, being in this area is a little tough. Uh, has to touch that cipher, but it's just enough for him to be able to spot out this embalmer. Mm -hmm. Bling is available though, so it's going to be very tough for Bang to actually went for the immediately 
uh, to immediately go for the roller coaster because it's prone to get a terror shock that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Bang still got a transition around this area though, and we'll be getting a hit onto Bang. Bang will mm -hmm. go through the roller coaster. Let's see if they press the second stop for him to transition even more. But this is actually buying some time. He did he do it. And note that he did bring Blink. So this is going to be tough for Polar mm. to go for. Note that the coffin was dropped on the other side of that map. So uh, a great start to the survivor side. Let's see if Polar is still going to stay true and go for this Embalmer. Yeah, not a great second find for Polar there. It's, a, it's, it's Sugar Daddy, the Mercenary at the, uh, at the bridge. And now transitioning probably towards the uh, Acrobat, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, another hard character to, you know, chase. But Yue Bang is around the facility also, so... Everyone's here. Well, three yeah, of them are here. Yeah. It's just the Sugar Daddy, the Mercoder oh. that's here. Oh, but he's gonna try to give up? Oh my god, he's actually oh. gonna just try to double back here. Actually, oh, Polar is trying to find where the Embalmer is, and after finding out where the Acrobat... Actually, it's it, the tonight of the Acrobat in front of you. He went back to the first stop to find the Embalmer. Oh my god. Yeah, this is buying a lot of time and a Polar kind of back to square one here. Yeah. Everyone's on the other side of this map, and... He's actually still trying to look for this embalmer who's nowhere near this map. Oh, uh, it seems no. like the healing is happening. So uh, yeah. Polar is going to have to really go back to square one here. He's still mm -hmm. starved of presence. He still has to use uh, as much web as possible. Embalmer's already healed up. And uh, uh, great, I, honestly, this is a great start for a sugar team. Again, another usage. Uh, another great usage of the roller coaster, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And now I think, I think Bang is going to go on Back. the roller coaster once mm -hmm. again he's yeah, gonna go that is... to the fourth yeah. stop and now polar is gonna be ready he's bought so much time and now he's just gonna wait he's gonna oh! have to exit oh, oh my god but the terror oh! shock wow my god so that bought him a lot of presents he's gonna wait and see uh if he's gonna use the the coffin as of yet but i mean he's got his first survivor down three ciphers still remaining the the wind condition is still very apparent on the side of sg Seems like Polar's will Ooh. try to move. Okay, he still has Blink, so... Oh, he's going to switch oh, to teleport. Okay, so, uh, yeah, teleport immediately. So the Blink didn't do much for him. Now mm -hmm. the shield for Embalmer is still available. Uh, it's going to buy some time for this um, uh, Survivor 2 transition. But mm -hmm. remember to hide away from the spit. Mm -hmm. the yeah, just the webs wow. able to get him through that, and now no more tied uh, courtesy of the coffin here. So now let's see, able to try and bait him out and try and go through this uh, pallet, going back and forth. Polar using the speed boost. It's gonna be so important for him to down this embalmer and down him here before anything else happens. Ooh. And now we have a down embalmer. Yeah, but not to mention the the cipher progress has been going through, has been breezing. Yes, it um, has been. Yeah, now only one Cypher remaining at 40%. Uh, I think the two Survivor will be going in for the uh, rescue. Yeah, um, Sani here, just mm -hmm. distracting for the, the rescue to happen. A two-person rescue while one is working on the Cypher at 40%. So they have to be ready. It seems like the, the last Cypher is at first stop. So they did a mm -hmm. little bit of a trade-off. Mercenary gathering the Ooh. webs here. Let's see, this rescue all able to get the hit and now... Tide Turner and Acrobat oh! not quite. Now we'll be dropping all the pallet in order to block Polar from, you know, mm -hmm. downing this Embalmer. Uh, still, uh, Cyber has is being decoded. Uh, it's being decoded now, uh, closing to Prime with oh, the, the help slow of as well. uh, with the help of the Acrobat. And now Mercenary is about to fall down. Embalmer is still buying so much time. Yes. It is already primed mm -hmm. NTT. And now this Embalmer has to take two web shots for him to be down mm -hmm. and able to get one in while he was transitioning. But he's actually being chased away from the fi uh, the first stop exit. So yeah, can one, he develop enough thread shot. here? Oh, oh, able to hit him out. They pop the Cypher in time. But now the detention mm -hmm. is in the air, able to get him down. Oh my god, the teleport is still available for Polar. It is. And he teleport immediately to the gate and, you know, prevent the survivor from opening the gate. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, Spenny realizing that's gonna mm -hmm. might happen. So Polar gonna go straight up and teleport. Oh. So everyone has to transition away. The, the coaster isn't here, so they have to make their way on foot. Will the fully fed uh, uh, spider here? So if he downs one mm -hmm. more, uh, this is gonna prevent them from uh, actually getting more points. Yeah. Uh, but actually, uh, the 
the condition for Polar to get a uh, you know an immediately win is mm -hmm. going for a four man kill. So yeah, that's like true. Of each transition. Oh, to oh. the other side. Nice stun. Yeah, Sani just back and forth here. Like honestly, that those stuns have been paying uh, dues, but now Sani actually no more stuns available. Oh so he's look. Gonna... Look the, at dungeon. the dungeon is there. Oh! He's cutting him off, though. Polar's yeah. able to just still kite out. There's a lot of detention for him to use. So he's going to break this pallet here, forcing her uh, Seni to go to the left side. He can actually force to break this one, too. So let's see if he's going to do just that, because I, I think he's going to have to wait this one out and be very patient. He's still got a lot of time for him to be able to hit with the detention shot. So now, Mercenary um... able to exit already. But as this is happening, the Enchantress is building up a stack. Yeah, and we'll oh. be stunning this uh, spider immediately. Uh, they're still yeah, close to a stun for Senia here. Uh, a back and forth game for both sides. Polar. No. About to be about to yeah. be 10 seconds on the detention. Yeah. This is so important, NTT. Yeah. She goes That's for the... Oh, oh my god, the, it's able to... Oh, no. It says no. not. No. There's no. Oh. Oh, able to get the hit, and oh. now... It is a one, well, a tied game. So, yeah. wow, just a reverse sweep here uh, mm -hmm. of a matchup. Yeah, I'm just going to take note here. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> uh, a, well, a five to three for both sides. So, they are equally in turn of point and, and round win right now. Um, so, go for uh, it. Uh, you go for it. Oh my god. I'm just. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it, round three is going to be very telling, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. because this is going to be a... Um, it, we're back to square one with more bands, to be honest. This is going to be best of one, and this is going to be a little scary coming into this next one. NTT just writing down his notes here. Any thoughts you want to share? Um, I mean, they did really well with the spider, and it was close to being a, a, a three-man escape, a, a, a clutch situation there. If Tanya... You know, wait a little bit longer to go for the base uh, to go for the dungeon escape. I think the d detention would die down, and she mm -hmm. would actually have a chance to go for that. But yeah. still, a uh, commendable uh, effort. Yeah, the the way he uh, Sani was able to kite out for so long with detention, and it was the final seconds of detention. So if that detention hit didn't come online just then. I think uh, we would have seen a, uh, a three person, like a, a sweep victory on both the hunter and survivor side. But I did end up in a tie. Polar doing a great job with the spider. But I mean, the way they were able to bait out the yeah. embalmer from going back to first stop, uh, it just, it, it, it was, it bought so much time. And yeah, Blink wasn't even, long. yeah, Blink wasn't even uh, used yeah, at all. Yeah. It, it was, it was just, it, it was the teleport that really kind of solidified the presence and also uh, all the survivors just knew what to do in those type of situations so sugar team ladies and gentlemen uh bringing mm. in the tie yeah sugar team with a uh, rotation coming from them like, and they also use the mind game there like the acrobat actually went out to bait the spider into thinking it was a tonight onto that acrobat but not knowing the embalmer was right around the corner so mm -hmm. yeah able to bait uh, the spider into thinking that mm, the embalmer actually rotate back to the two story. I I had to go back to check it out, and I'm, yeah, I'm telling you, tinnitus can be your worst enemy sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's it just fools you, and I think uh, you had a good job. Like, all right, let's take out tinnitus. Let me just rely on hunter instinct and eyesight. Yeah, so it's uh, that was a great example of it right there, ladies and gentlemen. So polar, unable to well, unable to get the victory for his team there. This is his first outing, and the banning of the Nightmare seems like a good pick, a uh, good ban on the side of Sugar Team. He, uh, it doesn't seem like he has a breaking wheel, because that would have been the best possible time to bring it out. I mean... Yeah, he has a spider, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the spider. Uh, the turning point of the game is when she actually got a terror shock onto the Mauber. Like, that's when, you know, uh, the spider actually had a chance of, uh, you know, downing a person. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know... It, she couldn't come back from the situation where you know she took a lot of time fighting the first target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was the first down, so it took so long. I think that was like a five five minute scenario where they just kept going back and forth trying to find the best possible uh, survivor, which was Yubang and Yubang and Seni. You know, triple digits when it comes to the containment time of this hunter. It is a tied game, but 
uh, the win condition for Sugar Team to push for that game number three was one survivor. They went above and beyond going for that tie. So great job on the side of Sugar Team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a tie from both sides. Now, uh, five to three and three to five is the score that we are having now. Um, in round three, they had to pull a punch if they want to end it uh, soon, or if they are equally good. It could be turning into a tiebreaker. It could be the first tiebreaker of the group stage, so... Mm -hmm. And it's day number one, what emphatic fashion for AX and SG to bring us that. Yeah, they are equally good. A neck and neck situation that we are having here. So, yeah. Uh, as I say, 5-3, uh, to 3-5 three, three to five now is gonna be uh, down to either round 3. Um, or tiebreaker, or the tiebreaker for um, both sides. Mm -hmm. Considering that we did see Arms Factory at the start, Moonlit River Park, um, I think they're gonna have to flip for it, and then like uh, we're just gonna see a map pick, and then uh, we're Leo's gonna see memory. Those <laughs> Could be. I, I think that's where we settle all our grudges. We go back to Leo's memory. We, we, mm -hmm. we hatch up the past, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Go back to Leo's memory to see how things go. Now. We know that the wax artist of uh, of Cerberus is really good. Mm -hmm. That could opt for a ban. Also, his breaking wheel. Uh, does this mean Pow Pow is going to come in? You think Pow Pow is uh, good at clutch situations right now? Because this is mm -mm. this is going to be tight. NTT. Like uh, we're all evened out. We're gonna head to round number three. I mean, you know, when the survival side of AX is comfortable with Cerberus. Uh, Asuga could, you know, bring in Pao Pao to check up the situation. And knowing Pao Pao, Galatia, um, uh, Bloody Queen, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other so, uh, some other hunter that could be, you know, being utilized in round three. It's going to be a sight to see. Oh, Even yeah. for the survivor side also. Because mm -hmm. we just see the lawyer. We, we don't even know what they have in store for us. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, when it comes to the lawyer, uh, that was, um, I don't know, that could have, that's one of those picks that's kind of questionable and you think like, oh, this is a big brain play and, you, you know, you leave it to the pros to show us what they knew, but then if it doesn't work out, you just kind of question like, uh, what were they trying to go for with that? Yeah, um, I mean, they were trying to make for, you know, a seer there, but the hunter immediately I mean, go for the lawyer and yeah, yeah. I I still think that in this level of competition, I think survivors are okay not having uh, comms of where the hunter is because they they'd already have the constant communication, right? I have to, I'm triggering tinnitus. I have the heartbeat, so yeah, yeah it I, I'm, feel a lot of advantage for the survivor. So, um, yeah, it could be a strategy that they were thinking up, but immediately got cut short by Cerberus. So, again, I just say that AX had a lot of strategy in their mind. So we could see an, a, a total different uh, survival lineup in round three. Yeah, uh, honestly, when it comes to the survivor side, we leave it up to the pros to do that. Hey, you might make the lawyer pick work. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot on the line, though. It is. I think this is the first match would definitely dictate the pace of your group stage. And I'm pretty sure the groups, uh, group B, a team RYU, Ryu is watching closely because... Uh, they will have to go up against either AX or SG in the coming days. And uh, one of them could actually be the point leader in their group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, being a point leader, be, get, getting a point on Taiwan could, you know, bring a lot of advantage to, to you. Because you don't have to worry about a second game. Like, you don't, you don't, uh, you are not as worried as you are in the first round. So, mm -hmm. yeah, getting a win on Taiwan, uh, it could you know bring your mind into peace so you are calmer when you are that that way yeah uh however in this uh, scenario i think this is where they really get tested because um they are you know game number three it's a it's a completely blank slate both of them are tied up no one has the advantage anymore and this is where true the, the true test of how they've prepared comes in because now meta is kind of thrown out the door. We've also note that 
both hunters kind of go unconventional with their picks. Yeah. They got to they got to adapt uh, to the current circumstance and Pow Pow is coming in. There we go. Um yeah, Silverus, an I will say an op meta hunter player because a lot of picks that he has um apart from the breaking wheel, of course, mm -hmm. is very, you know, surprising to for us to see. Um as for Pow Pow, uh, more conventional a uh, hunter with mm -hmm. uh, I'd say Bloody Queen and Galatia could be Clerk, uh, uh, could be some other hunter that we oh Dream Witch also, um, mm -hmm. yeah There's so a Dream Witch okay that's gonna so, be scary yeah so in this map uh, it's gonna be down to the map picks to be honest mm -hmm. um so. You mentioned Dream Witch, BQ Sculptor, so I guess yeah, you gotta just ban Sculpt uh, Sculptor Dream Witch and just hope that BQ kind of lives up to that type potential for the survivors. So, um, Pow Pow coming in, he's he's kind of well rested. Uh, I, I would say that he's not as mentally drained as Cerberus. However, you have to understand that he's ki he's not warmed up, um, while the survivor yeah. side. Yeah, they're, they, they've they been playing since the start of this game, so there haven't been any shifts here and there. So they, they're they fully warmed up and fully ready to take on whatever I challenge mean, that is in front of them. Uh, yeah, thinking about that, Pao Pao could have a fresh mind coming to this, and, you know, he could perform well. Just to mention. Yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, for the band picks, uh, Sierra Band, Priestess Band. I mean, they have three band on the first phase right here, so... Sierra mm -hmm. Priestess and either forward or mercenary and uh if you are if you guys are worried about eli getting in jail no when he get banned he get back to me hey there so that's why he's not there he's with ntt guys so at ntt right now point at this man he's the reason why uh, eli's been banned because he's not available in the game anymore <laughs> that is a cute figure okay. yeah i know can you remove the the blindfold the uh oh, the, the blindfold hood. no but the hood i can uh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Ooh, very uh, cool. But uh, we actually can see the uh, eye of him. Oh, least... okay. Let me there try. Wow, there that is go. a beautiful Eli. You can't see his eyes, but there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it first here with NTT and IVC group stage day <laughs> number one. Mm -hmm. So this is uh this is gonna be a tight one ladies and gentlemen i know we've we've seen a lot of uh, emojis in the chat mm -hmm. but y'all gotta keep spamming them because they need it now more than ever so yeah give them if, joy energy <laughs> yeah if pow pow is coming in what kind of map do you think would benefit him the most wow um uh, this is a hard question to say to to to, to answer to say the least. but i think if they want pow pow to use the bloody queen Ever Sleeping Town and Chinatown should be out of the way. That's the two map that they shouldn't be picking. Um, wait, wait, sorry. Oh, who, they shouldn't ever. be picking them up. Speaking of, yeah, uh, they, you think they, eight, eight? Go. Pao, Pao, Pao will, if Pao Pao is planning to go for the Bloody Queen, they mm. shouldn't pick up uh, Ever Sleeping Town or Chinatown because mm. there's a lot of thick wall that you can mirror around. Right. Oh, you you can't mirror around so. That's mm -hmm. kind of the downside of playing the Bloody Queen. So, mm -hmm. map like uh, the Red Church, um, the hospital. No, actually, the hospital. No, uh, the hospital. The, Red yeah, Church the hospital is a bad map for all hunters, mm -hmm. to be honest. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think they could go back to pick arms, if ever. Because they pick Moonlit, right? So they can still pick arms if they're the ones mm -hmm. picking the map. But no, I. They can't pick arms because in the rules now, if if they already play in the map, that map can't be picked again. Oh, okay. So it's not like the previous rules where even though yeah. the provide, even though the yeah. hunter, I mean the the team did pick it. Okay, so that leaves Red Church. Okay, so, mm. Mm -hmm. Red Church. Um, let's say even could be a great map. Uh, okay. what else do we have? Uh. Mm -hmm. Uh, Leo's memory? <laughs> that could yeah. work out. Honestly, um, if they're limited to just that and they're kind of going with that. And oh it my like god! Leo's memory. <laughs> what is this NTT? See in the future. Eli's with you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eli's with me. He, he told me about Thank you, thank Leo's you. Leo's memory. Yeah. 
So yeah, and it's actually AX that's picking it. So mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 Sugar Team that has to pick Survivor or Hunter first. So we know that AX is still using Polar. We haven't seen mm -hmm. a switch just yet. So I'm sure that they're gonna ban the. Well, hmm. I think they're gonna try to use. They're gonna be okay with the Spider to come out. Uh, they, they don't. Really well. uh, they don't know what Polar will going for. Uh, we'll go for. Because um, the I think they, potential picks for Polar is still out of the blue. They, I think they know because, dude, they they banned the Nightmare. We were thinking ban the Breaking Wheel, and it worked out in their favor. I mean, the Nightmare so, is from the previous match that we see Polar use the Nightmare to get a 4K. So it could be, you know, from that match that they banned. Um, oh, the other picks, though. We have no idea what Polo will pick for this uh, round three, to be honest. So that, that's what I was trying to say. Like, are, mm -hmm. is he going to pick the? Is he going to? Are they just going to go with what they know, or just go mm -hmm. with the meta? Since you don't want to really roll the dice with that meta. So yeah, uh, Leo's memory first appearance in IVC with five survival ban and two hunter ban. AX Apollo will be showing first over here with uh, Sugar side uh, on with Sugar on the survivor side. Now, uh, usually in Leo's memory, it's going to be Seer, Priestess, and Mercenary. But uh, if Polo is going for an unconventional hunter, there could be a different ban on the side of uh, uh, the hunter here. Um, still, two hunter ban on the side of Sugar could be Nightmare and. Violetta, if they are thinking about the previous uh, matchup uh, of AX and you know the previous match that they have with the uh, Polar Spider. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, uh, which uh, character are they going for? Usually in Leo's memory, uh, they would pick uh, Patient and uh, Toy Merchant because those character can get into the two story uh, quite uh, fast. Uh, Still, it's too conventional to be picked. I could see a patient uh, showing up over here, but it's gonna be depending on the band that Polar plays onto the side of Survivor. So, yeah. Usually, with a map like Leo's Memory, there there are a lot of kiting potential, but the map is quite hard for hunters to play in. So. Could be Nightmare and Violetta Band if they are going with the previous matchup that they have. I would agree. Um, they did so well against the Spider, though. I would have to say that they. Oh really yeah! Well. Oh my mm -hmm. God! He banned the Embalmer. <laughs> he didn't want to deal with that Embalmer, especially in a big map like this. Mm -hmm. So. Let's see how deep Polar's Hunter Pool could be. Because imagine, what if like a breaking wheel comes out? What if, <laughs> what if the meta picks come out? So that's going to be really tough, especially with the survivors being banned here. But mm -hmm. I guess they want to just go with what they are known for. And in this map, yeah, Priestess Seer, it's definitely a, uh, it's it, it's definitely a warranted ban on the side. But the Embalmer though, that's uh, yeah, I guess he was just really frustrated with that. Uh, yeah, to be honest, the Embalmer did, uh, you know put a lot of hard time onto Polar, so yeah, he just wanted to get the Embalmer out of the way. Now, it's the two stunner! <laughs> wow. Wow, so not going for mm. the uh, rescuing lineup. Um, uh, not a surprise, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think Senny on this Enchantress, that's that's an easy pick. We, she uh, Senny did so well ever since yeah. uh, she came in in the second round. So... Uh, I think now NTT, it's it maybe meta is out the door and it's all about comfort. So yeah, lawyer, let's go. I mean, in Leo's memory that, that I did mention earlier, usually in ranked I would see toy merchant and patient being used because you could use the catapult or the hooks to get to the two story uh, easier. Uh, but still. Uh, I know in the Sugar team lineup, they has a patient player, mm -hmm. but not a toy merchant player, so that's quite risky. Yeah, uh, but I, I will agree that there is a lot of jump spots for that toy merchant if ever they do decide to bring it out. Patient, yes, grappling hook spots galore for him. 
Mm -hmm. We just have to wait and see. Uh, we can only speculate what kind of hunter that uh, Polar has. If he's gonna, if he's the type of hunter to go nightmare and spider. Wu Chang. Wonder what else he has. <laughs> Could yeah. Yeah. Teleport Wu Chang. No no camp Wu Chang. That's gonna be crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, no Wu Chang in the tournament yet, so could be excited to see one. I'm gonna call Let's it. Go. I'm gonna call it Easter. Let's go. So I want to see that oh, here back with NTT. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it now. I know Lee Posh can honestly see it. Oh, no, you're gonna. No, <laughs> he did it, chat. He did it. But you got to do it in front of the chat. Okay. All right, so what was the? So. Oh. oh. Okay. No ban on the X. Okay, for the survivor. Okay. okay. All right. So. so this is it. Um, mercenary gets locked in. We're gonna wait for our last survivor to get picked. It's a mechanic, I believe. Ooh, so it's the same lineup as round one, apart from you know the prospector being the uh, acrobat. You're right. Yeah, it is. Um, we did see how Sugar Daddy was able to. Uh, oh yeah, he was able to be able to decode at least seventy-seven percent with the mechanics. So. Uh, oh. It's an Anne. It's an Anne. Wow. Anne's crazy in this map. She's pretty good. Yeah, I have to agree, because I and have then, played her in this map. And uh, honestly, that counters the Enchantress, the, yep. the Prospector, but, the stuff. No, 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 the, the, the Prospector kind of counter mm -hmm. the uh, Disciple here. So it's a, it's a you know, win-lose situation where you kind of counter uh, Senye, but then you are not countering the Prospector player. Yeah. Ooh, this is a little scary because I would say that the this Ant pick is quite strong, even though there's no other ban on that side. He could go. I mean, we we've seen like amazing cross placements as well as cat mm -hmm. placements on uh, great Ant players, and this is the first time we're gonna see Polar use this uh, Hunter. So, mm -hmm. an element of surprise could be there also. Uh, usually, uh, when disciple appear in the tournament, people will consider that uh, to be a tie Hunter. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, could be AX, you know, um, believing in the survivor side to get a better score, or it could be Polar, you know, the secret weapon in this could matchup. Be. Could be. He's thinking in a lot. The end game. He's thinking that far into the future. He's he's Doctor Strange looking into the multiverses, and it seems like Anne is the answer to his problems because um, it is game number three. And what better gift could he give a survivor team in getting a 4K? And yes, Anne has been, you know, even last year, she was already being set as the new Thai queen. Mm -hmm. However, in tournaments, she's been working out. Like, it's, I mean, wow. she's kind of gone a little above the Thai. Yeah. Like, Thai for her is already the bare minimum. Yeah. So we'll see if, uh, if Polar can actually just give the bare minimum for his team. Like, yeah, a bare minimum, a, a, a constant Thai, but you can work for that. You know, 3K, 4K, depending on the uh, situation. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's Leo's memory that we are talking about here, which is usually not a good map for the hunter side. Yeah, that's true. I mean, is it good for survivors? I just feel like it's a not. <laughs> it, the vibes aren't good. It doesn't pass the vibe check. Bro. It's equally bad for both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's supposed to be Christmas time, a joyous occasion, but. I don't know. Even I had this running joke with Grizzly, like, "Oh, it's Leo's memory, our favorite map." He started to like it, and I was thinking, like, "Hmm, it's oh, okay." No. <laughs> so let's head into Leo's memories, ladies and gentlemen. The and pick on Polar's can it work out? He's heading straight towards Nana and Seni. Will it be around number three? Uh, not round number two on Seni's side, though. It seems like uh, he will go for the Enchantress. Wow. So you're gonna break the palace here. A uh, fast breaking palace, as I'm seeing here. Uh, mm -hmm. Polar spawned the Christmas tree area and want to transition to the Moongate area. Able to get the cat onto the Enchantress right here. But Nana will Ooh. be supporting the kite of the Enchantress. Uh huh. And now able to get a little jump going on if he's able to get the oh. no, silenced it. That's actually great. Oh, oh, goes for a lock. Goes for the hit just when she was dropping it. Great timing on Polar's side and still silence the stun, by the way. Mm -hmm. Now. A 612 build coming from Polar here. Uh oh. So detention and confined space will be jumping, but not able to stun oh. the enchantress in the quite, oh. quite a bit. Oh, Senye! 
Oh my god, oh. able to lock her out of the vault animation, but now we do see that uh, Bang is here. Oh, the blink hit. And now able to clean up shop. Wow. Now, with the with the blink, we'll be downing this uh, enchantress. With that reset uh, re attack recovery, with that stun. But mm -hmm. luckily for the style of sugar, there's no basement in the area. Mm -hmm. I think he was looking for that too. I was like... Oh yeah. man, this is going to be a tough rescue if there's a basement here. So out in the open in the shack area, it's still a little tough. And especially rebound kiting here since there's not much to use. So they let's could be... be sacrificing, to be honest. Oh! oh! Man, go in for a... Oh! Mercenary what? trying to buy some time here. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, able to get a hit? No! Uh, just gets, gets the stun. Mercenary eating that hit. Allowing the Enchantress to a little break that line of sight. But he knows that he's going for the shack area. Uh, cats are about to be ready, and now the cat jumps are coming in. They have to shoot the cat uh, jump here. Polar, now! Ooh. I didn't want to stun, but yeah, mm -hmm. stun from both sides. Not enough for Senia to transition away. It will mm -hmm. be the second time on the chair for the Enchantress. And yeah. Yerban will be harassed once again. Yeah, Mercenary can't get a heal here. Mechanics in the area, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. But these, I mean, this injured Enchantress will kind of debuff that. <laughs> Uh, just forcing the mechanic to use the bot, and it seems like they will try and go for uh, a cypher here. Yeah, they might actually try and sell. Nana is uh, far off in the distance, and the other two survivors as well. And knowing Disciple actually has fast pallet breaking, and also has just used a bling there, they might brag in the fact that Polar didn't bring, you know, um, um, uh, trump card and gonna mm -hmm. go for the teleport. So they are just uh, decoding right away. Now, yeah, with the mechanic, uh, free roaming uh, mode, now the Cypher Morgan is going to uh, go down real fast. Yeah, so let's see how this one is going to pan out. It seems like he's going to go for Nana, the Prospector. You saw how well uh, Nana was able to, uh, well, just harass with the magnets. So let's see. Seems like the cats are going to just oh. snipe him out, but he has the cross to use. Not a full presence just yet. Able to get the the prospector here, but he's going to be hugging this area here. Let's see if he's going to commit to a jump, but oh, able mm -hmm. to get the stun, but not quite long enough. Oh, and max present available for Polar. It could be very easy for Polar to down this uh, prospector, especially with Blink uh, mm -hmm. about to be regenerated for her, uh, the disciple also. Mm -hmm. Oh, dropping the magnet a little too soon. He's going to try to hug it. Oh, he's going to get in time. Able to move on along and drops another magnet. Oh. Aiding this much distance, but now he's out of resources. Polar's waiting. Blink is now back online. Oh, oh. my god, the 180 Blink. <laughs> uh, what a sight to see with a Blink onto the Prospector. Now we'll be sharing near the Christmas tree. Mechanic has to go in for a rescue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, actually. Yoruba could be, you know, priming the Cypher before uh, going in for a rescue. Could be, uh, but you, uh, it's actually the mechanic, I think, just transitioning away. And Yoribang still has not been healed just yet. So it's a really tough spot. It seems like, yeah, Sugar Daddy's already here. And he's going to be dropping the cross uh, around this area. Uh -oh. Able to get the hit. Will the cats come in time for him to stop the rescue? It's right uh, there. See, it's enough. Oh my god. The rescue will happen. But the mechanic able to body block here. The prospector has one magnet to use. Now it's all up to Nana if he can... Kind oh. Out. oh, oh, the Smart. speed would come. Yep, the speed would be the prospector going through the uh, closet and the uh, cipher machine will be receiving that speed boost. And now seems like uh, Bang gonna prime a cipher while Nana mm. coming in for rescue. So they're gonna play this game again. He's gonna just drop some ciphers, uh, drop some cats here, able to stun the prospector. That's oh, huge. I'm gonna go for the pop. They could oh my it. god. He goes for it, and now no more cats available. He's going to have to wait it out and try to go for this rescue. Oh, able to get the, oh! the stun! My god. What a nice magnet usage here. But now Nana will be down by this uh, mm -hmm. disciple. Daddy had to go out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they know where the dungeon is. So yeah, now they do. will try to open the gate while Sugar Daddy go for the dungeon. Uh-oh, he's not going to make it in time because there's no teleport. He's going to have to walk all the way there. But, oh my god, NTT, he's going away from the dungeon. I don't know uh, if he knows where it's at. He, he's going for the gate. He is. And now just trying to use the cats. The mercenary is there for the body block. Uh, and it seems like the mechanic has already met sight with the uh, mercenary. So this is going to be a tie game. Yeah, a tie hunter with a tie game. I think that's the result that Polo has been expecting.
Mm -hmm. So now it's going to be up to the side of AX Survivor and Hunter of Sugar to determine mm. the outcome of this matchup. So it will be Pow Pow uh, that yeah. will decide the fate of Sugar here. So, I mean, you, we did say that calm and fresh mind, but that's going to be a lot of pressure on his side. So let's talk yeah. about that match. Honestly, if he was able to hit the Prospector once the mechanic made that rescue, could have been different. Could have had the sat on the rocket chair. Well, yeah, he downed the mechanic, went back and tried to force the rescue to happen. But yeah, uh, that was a potential 3K situation, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm, but it was. Yeah, the survivor side able to rescue in time, and the prospector stunned uh, a detention disciple. And not to mention um, that uh, she still had that uh, cat to utilize. So mm -hmm. yeah, great job from the survivor side and also Polar Disciple there. Uh, when they go for the sacrifice, I think he know that he's going to be a draw. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Nana just uh, Prospector countered uh, Anne pretty hard here, like with how he was just dropping the magnets left and right for the chase to ensue, dealing a ninety-one point three containment time. The Enchantress did really well uh, as well. Like we gotta give kudos to Seni. Um, even though she was the first chase, um, being able to just kite out the early chase of early attempts of polars, but mechanic as well as the mercenary, you, you gotta admit that uh, once the mechanic is in the area, Cypher Rush is gonna be there. Even mm. though like the injuries happened early on, you really felt that um, uh, this Anne was kind of in the back foot. Yeah, I mean, especially when you let the mechanic roam free around the area, it's kind mm -hmm. of like. You allow the survivor to go for a cypher rush. Mm -hmm. But, uh, for sure. uh, uh, you know, kudos to the disciple here, able to down the uh, enchantress uh, very quickly, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, before anything got too chaotic, right? It looked like, let's talk about that point you mentioned, it could have been a 3k. Uh, at what point do you think that could have happened, and how did the survivors swing it in their favor? Yeah, the point where, you know, um, and was in an advantage when he go for the when she go for the swing onto the mechanic and the mechanic going for the rescue. I think mm -hmm. if she swing a little bit earlier, it couldn't ha it could have been you know an easy stun for Anne to down mm -hmm. the, to down the mechanic in front of the chair. But mm -hmm. still, the survivor side did play very well. The the participant knows that if he went near a closet or a cipher machine. He would get the mm -hmm. speed boost. So that's why you see Anne going for the Prospector and immediately went back for the mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to deal with that speed boost, as you mentioned, of the Prospector. And uh, yeah, that, that tight situation, if it played out differently, if he got the, the Prospector down earlier or if he down or he thwarted the mechanic from rescuing, mm -hmm. uh, it could have been a 3k, but you know what? You got to give it up to Sugar Team for rolling with the punches and playing uh, their hearts out here. So... The survivor side of Sugar Team will be benched for now. Now it's up to Pow Pow and either his Sculptor, his Dream Witch, and his Bloody Queen. And oh, yeah, it would be seer, any other. <laughs> I mean, you, we were saying like, what, what, what map would it be? And you called it out. You called to the Identity Five Gods. You called out Leo's memory, and it popped up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it to you again, NTT, with these hunters or this possibly right. a new hunter what, what oh, kind of because i feel like maybe it's bq inbound if, if ever they're gonna yeah. respect the sculptor respect the um the dream witch but yeah um, they could be banning the uh bloody queen and galatia to be honest so and deal with the dream witch hmm. yeah could be could be i mean uh pow pow is known for you know, having an ash bash on that uh bloody queen BQ. so they wow. didn't want to deal with that almost mm -hmm. uh immediately and that sculptor from pow pow is just uh such a menace so they might be you know going for the ban onto those those two characters but that's mm -hmm. open up the possibility of pow pow going for you know as i said earlier the dream wish the mm -hmm. clerk or any other meta character or non-meta character that you know, we haven't seen coming from Pow Pow. Yeah. Well, we at least agree on the sculptor being banned, but yeah, it would be cool if he brought out a different hunter and just kind of showcase the rest of the skills he got, especially mm -hmm. if he's able to, you know, showcase it really well. He's coming in clutch. He's the anchor hunter. He's the 
point or the main that like they they would turn to because this is the clutch situation now. We're at a 10 10 even score, ladies and gentlemen. So uh it's it's up to the side of Pow Pow. But let's let's change gears here and talk about AX's survivors because no. pressure's also on them. They need to get at least three to call themselves the winner. If they want to push for a round number four, they just gotta go for that tie. But as of late, you know what? They've been kind of favoring a lot of a lot of stunners. So um, we haven't seen the batter yet. W does this merit that it will come out? Will they ban NX officials Enchantress too? No. It's a, it's a thing where, you know, we have five bans on the line. And you have to spend those three first bans to the meta character. And those are the two to, you know, what you think the survival side is going to, you know, put out, put, put out to deal with you mm -hmm. now you mentioned stunner but i think the first two picks from the side of ax is still going to be quite meta mm -hmm. it's the last two that's going to make the most different mm -hmm. um yeah. enchantress better did they go forward uh i don't think so right they so, have i think they've been denied a forward so yeah that's, they're not able to pick it. So that's why mm -hmm. um ha. Ah. Okay, so I think they might take a little a hint out of how how SG approached it. Maybe with the ban, they're going to ban Seer Priestess, right? So th they might lock in Mercenary and then bring either Enchantress or Prospector, depending on how they're feeling. Just because, honestly, if you think about it, both these teams, they kind of have similar play styles. Mm -hmm. really, they really opt for stunners. They have that one rescuer just in case. Uh, the wild card, though, is will Scythe use the Lawyer? That's for me is a big question mark because yeah, uh, he he got his magician banned also with seer and we've only seen those two but now uh, he did bring out the lawyer I, I think uh, no I mean I don't know I don't know if he can bring have, it out they did have a decoder on their side so could be going for you know a full on decoder team to really? rush the cipher in order to get at least two pe two people out. But still, it's quite risky if, you know, mm. the Hunter managed to dial one decoder early on and then managed to count the Cypher close yeah. to another decoder. And um, I, I, feel, I feel like that strategy might come in if we're going for faster time. Mm -hmm. for now, they can, yeah. the, a win is still possible if they're able to get three three persons out. So uh, usually, if people... If, 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 uh, in tournament setting, if they want the win... They usually go for the supporting type character. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you usually see... I mean, you do watch IVL and IJL, right? Mm -hmm. So, usually, um, batter, forward, priestess, entomologist, uh, acrobat. Um, even the postman can be a great supporter. Could. Yeah, that's uh, definitely something that... I mean, those, those list of characters are... Uh, like you mentioned, yeah, when it comes to support, acrobat... Ah, uh, Enchantress. Forward. Yeah, Enchantress. They've, they've all been banned. So yeah, uh, no. That's that's the thing. We'll see if they're gonna make their way. And yes, uh, we will go into overtime if ever we tie it up. I, I'm looking at the chat too. It's gonna be a, quite the exciting turn of events here. Is it gonna end here, or will there be a uh, extra round? We're gonna find out as we head towards the picks and bans. Right. Uh, so. Five ban on the side of Pow Pow and two ban for the survivor side on the hunter of Pow Pow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they might go for what I recommended for them to ban, but still, Pow Pow still have some caught up uh, his sleeve. So who knows? Um, it could be the comeback of the century. <laughs> we said that at the start, but yeah, who uh, knows? It's a caster's curse. Um... Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> What's the cast of curse? Uh, no, there's no basement here. Oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, three band first for Pow Pow. Um, I'm fielding again Seer Priestess and uh, whoever Pow Pow likes to ban. Mm -hmm. Considering that uh, he's been, I hope he's been like watching and kind of formulating a strategy. Yeah, those two for sure. Then maybe ban one of the stunners because oh yeah, uh, just just get rid of that. Just so you can kind of throw off NX official. Maybe make him use a psychologist. Maybe use something else. Uh, just for oh. him to get out. But it seems like mercenary, so he's gonna just yeah. try to eliminate the rescuer. 
mm -hmm. conventional ban here. Uh, banning a rescu ban banning the rescue is actually a good move. So you know you yeah. can cap you can cap the chance of the cipher. So not allowing the survivor to a rescue, or you can even stop the rescue if the hunt if the rescuer isn't a mercenary. So it could be a great call from Pow Pow, or it could be you know opening up the survivor side to picking other supporting type of lineup. Yeah, I mean, Acrobat, Enchantry, oh, Geisha, Whoa. and Bloody Queen. So good bands on the side of AX. Uh, yeah, like I said you, they don't want to risk the Bloody Queen. Geisha, also pretty known in this map. Yeah, I, I actually forgot uh, about the existence of the Geisha. <laughs> That's oh true. Well, again, we didn't, we didn't really known for that, so AX not wanting to take chances here. Uh, banning the Geisha right off the bat, as, as, as well as the Bloody Queen. It seems like they're hovering over the Entomologist and the Magician. So it seems like Scythe has his character locked, if ever he will be the one on Magician duty. And Ooh. they seem to be going for that. Support Kite Heavy. It's very unconventional. First pick, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Usually we would see the forward or, you know, Acrobat. Um... I guess this kind of shows the that they don't really prioritize the forward because we thought that, oh, it just gets banned from them. But yeah. looking at my data, I, I haven't seen them pick forward at least once. The same as Acrobat, too. Mm -hmm. so, oh, now banning the psychologist. this psychologist here could be mm. a Dream Witch game. Yeah, that's true. Just getting rid of the healer, forcing them to show their hand. Is that a patient I see? That is yeah. indeed a patient. So wow. the patient can use the hook to transition to to to, to go up to the two story immediately, uh, making it hard for hunter to chase um, a survivor. Because oh, what? First Is officer ban. First officer ban. Okay, so they're really eliminating all the survivors. I mean, all the rescuers, right? And wow. batter seems to be the one that is being hovered over. So. This is actually a pretty... Well, at least they have one stunner. They got two great kiters and one support. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it could be a Dream Witch since with the Psychologist coming in there. And it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's to be expected. I'm surprised that the Survivor side didn't pick Mame, But, you know, Mame is just too much of a risk, to be honest. So, mm -hmm. it's a box. The Psychologist seem to be, you know, more optimal to deal with a Dream Witch. Yeah, so Pow Pow coming inbound with the Dream Witch here. Uh, it still could be anyone's game because this is a very unconventional, but very, uh, I would say, kite-heavy lineup. So maybe they want to be going for those type, that type of strategy for one person to kite it out, give some support of the bees or the bat. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to chase any one of these, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, going for... Either the magician. I mean, those four picks that they are having for the AX, for the side of AX here are all top target to deal with. It is. It is. And imagine if they have synergy of, yeah, the bees support. And yeah. Also the bat. If if you chase any, yeah, you try to go for the ones that don't stun. Okay, cool. Let's go for the patient. Three hooks plus bees. Three hooks plus a baseball bat. Ooh. All right. Let's yeah. try to move on to the magician. Three wands plus uh, the support of the bees. It's it's going to be a tough night out, but Pow Pow on this Dream Witch. Dream Witch being a round one hunter coming in, banning the meta survivors here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, You can make a pretty good case for the Dream Witch as well. I mean, now it's the question of Pow Pow bringing Patroller or Bling. Mm, the age old question of Dream Witch users. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hmm. Huh. I know. Make the case patroller is pretty good on this yeah. uh, on this lineup too, because you can just limit them from just transitioning away. However, there yeah, are some window barriers here. Yeah, and pallets too. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Still the link can be a surprise for the survivor side. Could but be. But I digress. Let's get into the match between the survivor side of AX and the hunter of sugar. With the Tomi skin here. Gonna find out where the patient breathes first. Uh oh, and running into Scythe too. So this is actually uh, a good route that Pow Pow is taking because at least he can uh, choose to go for a uh, patient. But it seems like, ooh, dropping the pallet and just moving oh! away. Oh my god, changes to the spawn follower here. 
has to eat the hit, but at least he cleaned up shop and Wait. still saved his three. I think uh, Pao, Pao, Pao Pao actually went for a blink. Mm, so a blink build. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna try to down this patient. Already flip over a, a pallet to use, but still, it's gonna be tough to deal with uh, Dream Witch. Now I'm gonna use the hook to get to the second floor, but no! Oh, uh, you saw that the yeah the the spawn oh. follower is waiting for him to go up, but nope, went go went to the side. So now that um, the blink is about to be online, will this patient be surprised? His hook is about to be online, but oh. the blink connects. That's the surprise factor. Mm -hmm. With a bling dream wish. And the basement is here. Ooh, oh, NTT. No, call, call, call it a cast of But yeah, he's not going to go for it. He's just going to go for a chair outside the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the camping oh. game begins. So the batter, nice guy moving away. Is he going to get the hit? Or is he going to swing? It seems like, yeah, just changing targets immediately. So the question is, are they going to go for a full blood rescue? Uh, it seems like the closest one is the batter to go for uh, the save on the patient side. The entomologist is also bringing her bees out to support the rescue. Um, oh, oh, actually, herself. it's her. She's yeah, coming her. for the rescue. Yeah. Trying to slow things down. They have to make this rescue happen before half. They mm -hmm. are able to make it happen. Nice body block on the side of the batter, able to get the hit to just move on away. And it seems like the patient is actually out of the line of sight, but you know, he is leeched. So that's, uh, he's just gonna yeah. follow the leech. I think it's going to be a sandwich situation. The spawn follower is going to block over on this side and the uh, leech Main follower mm -hmm. is going to, you know, block the other side of the window. Oh, wow. And just, yeah, it was just the walls were closing in on this patient. He does have one hook left. So that's going to be coming crucial for that last, uh, last rebound kite. Entomologist now has a leech on her. Batter picked up the anti-curse and now they are just... Uh, getting rid of that leech. So at least the presence is being built and Magician seems to be inbound. Three Cyphers remaining, NTT. No, there are three Cyphers remaining. But the a follower is camping the Cypher in the factory, so they can't pop the Cypher just yet. It seems like they are going for a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like Nice Guy is the one to gain the attention of this uh, Dream Witch. And now it seems like someone's actually going for the rescue. Oh! It's the Full blood rescue, and now we have a hook that is online here. Batter already has that wanted order. A magician has to eat that one hit. That's totally fine. While well, we see that the ent entomologist is trying to work on some ciphers here. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the patient is gonna try to avoid the area where the cipher is, just to you know prevent the camp the the, the cipher camping from happening. Mm -hmm. Now he has to look out for a blink, a, 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 a yes. blink potential from the follower. This is kind of giving the opening for the the batter. Well, the batter to be healed up, but for the but for the patient already used the hook. Oh, Whoa! and the blink hit to close yeah. it off. Uh, luckily for him, that is the main uh, the, his follower. So it's like the main body has to move on over to that side of the map. Three ciphers are still in a standstill, and now it seems like he's just gonna collect reap the rewards of downing this patient. Patient is dead on chair. It will be the first point for Pow Pow here. Now the condition to get into round, uh, to to the extra round, is to get another kill. Mm -hmm. Or Pow Pow could just ignore the potential, uh, ignore the um, uh, requirement, and, and go, go above and beyond. Go above and beyond to get mm -hmm. the win for sure. Yeah, this uh, the cipher on the entomologist side has been just resting there, so at least. Uh, she's getting some progress on it. Let's see now. Scythe is removing. Everyone also has an anti-curse, so this is actually great. Now, Pow Pow now on the main body. We do see that the uh, the batter is getting his leech removed, while Scythe is already being uh, leeched on. So the Magician, two wands remaining. Let's see if he's going to utilize it. Oh, guessing the wrong direction, though. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Scythe will be able to juke out this room, which... But Remember, the bling is still available for Pao Pao here. Mm -hmm. Dropping the pallet, but is it going to be enough? Oh, just use ah! his blink right away, ah! but for one! Able to cancel it out. And now he's going to try to go back to some pallets, oh but he's going to run into his follower. Yeah, that's scary. Now, nice guy is going to be coming in for a, a support. I know, so the B on standby right behind. <laughs> yeah, right, right behind. So... Mm -hmm. uh, this follower has to look out for the potential support coming from the side of AX. So, uh, Pao Pao here doesn't have to act 
uh, rashly just yet. He knows that the bees are here. He knows that the batter is there. Two ciphers still remaining. So let's see if uh, he's going to go for the hit. Oh, nice, nice body nice. block. And now that the follower actually broke the ball of the batter, and now the magician will see the rocket chair. Yeah, broke the ball and broke his hole. <laughs> of supporting. Now it's the batter being chased out of the cipher. The uh, only one cipher is remaining, but that that is the, the, the cipher near the chair, mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it's still very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Even though it's at 74%, chamomile now trying to work on it. Uh, just activating the bees to just move on away. They still have to make this rescue happen. It seems like the batter is already inbound, just waiting for the swing Ooh. to happen and gets the rescue on the magician. They still have time oh. with the last effort getting popped. So a double down situation inbound on the side of Pow Pow. Now the entomologist has to uh, uh, be wary of mm. that follower right beside her. Uh, has to chase out the uh, cypher machine. Will mm. be hitting, oh, uh, the bees, not mm -hmm. the um, main body. Uh-oh, and now Magician here just trying to heal up the batter. Oh, oh god, Blink once again on point. Double down situation. Magician mm -hmm. will probably see a rocket chair again, but he wants to slug everyone. Whoa! Everyone gets a hit. Oh my god, you get a hit. You get a hit. Everybody everyone get a hit. <laughs> yeah, even the audience gets a hit. Everyone's got to be dodging because Pow Pow wants to get all these survivors down my and out. God. We do see that the batter is healing up. We're still at this one cypher standstill. So this entomologist has to be very careful. Batter now, seems like he's gonna get the pickup. Now, looks like Pow Pow is getting the comeback over here. The chamomile has to come in for a rescue. Mm hmm. Certain. Okay, let's see. Chamomile. Oh, God, gets the oh. hit, but no. On Abe. Oh, got the rescue on the magician. But still, oh, oh! God, the struggle happens. Yeah, he's gonna have to chair this magician and he still guarding the cypher. Oh, my God. Now the position is dead on chair. Mm. Now the the winning condition for AX, uh, actually the tiebreaker condition, is mm -hmm. for both survivor in the map to get out the game. Um, it's yeah, going they're going to get very hot. Yeah, so now we know that the main body is actually moving on away just to get more survivor, well, more leeches on the map. Oh my God, Batter has to be <laughs> careful. That was so close. We do see that he is moving quite along, and now that the one of the followers is actually just camping it out here at the uh, the final cipher, Entomo uh, entomologist is trying to remove the bees, uh, remove sorry, using the bees to move on away and remove the curse. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, Pow Pow still haven't used that uh, chump cost. <laughs> still able to utilize the bling here, and mm -hmm. you know if the batter fly away from. That's the, fine. The game mm -hmm. is going to be a GG, and Sugar is gonna be the one thriving in the group stage. Yeah, I think he knows that it's fine if you pop that cipher. It's all good. I just want this batter out of the game to secure mm -hmm. myself that victory. Even mm -hmm. though you get the dungeon, that's fine. Even though you pop that cipher, that's totally fine. I just want this batter out of the game for us to get the point and lead in the leaderboards for our group. But now Camomile is in the vicinity, in the line of sight of Pow Pow. Um, it's gonna be very tough since now. Controller! It's controller time! Oh we my god. <laughs> How crazy is that? That is one way to get the attention of these survivors. Going for Blink, then Patroller to cap it off. The yeah. bees are gonna stop him just a little bit, but Chamomile now able to get oh hit my here god. while he activates the bees. And that's a 4K Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, GG to Sugar! They will be moving. Actually, they will be the one leading the group B over yeah. here, over the win on AX. Wow. Kind of a kind of a dicey start, but they were able to rebound in game number two and solidified themselves in game number three. Pow Pow coming in clutch with that Dream Witch, able to fulfill the 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 win condition and go above and beyond that with that 4K. So. What more can you ask for for a clutch hunter like Fuller? So, uh, oh, sorry, Pow Pow. So, uh, uh, what, uh, what a, what a match, NTT. Yeah, I mean, that could potentially be the first time that we see, you know, the Dream Witch going from the Blink to Patroller because usually we see the vice versa, the Patroller to Blink. It seems like that might be the meta. We have seen that the Patroller getting kited out at the start. Yeah. Oh, full presence Dream Witch, all resources are down, and like just the trump card being used. Uh, 
I, I I would say it once. I'll say it again. I really I'm a fan of Dream Witch bringing Blink at the start because you just you have so much options and uh, it just seems like it's so effective now because people are expecting that patroller to come out. You saw that the patient yeah. didn't even know like oh shoot I'm gonna drop this pallet down just in case the patroller bite. Oh wait, <laughs> Blink hit. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean they have uh, you know got a sense got the knowledge to kite up a patroller so well. Dr. Mm -hmm. Doomish has been switching to Blink and Pow Pow beautifully demonstrate how a, a Blink Dreamwish should be played in a tournament mm -hmm. setting. Right. Uh, we just have to give kudos to AX though. I think they really showed up, especially at the last match. They tried to go for uh, like a kite heavy, sport heavy. The Magician in particular, those are some amazing wands, but the Blink was already online. So mm -hmm. looking at the match stats here, yeah, Scythe on this Magician is definitely a problem. Uh, NX official, get him off any stunners. Uh, Pow Pow was able to seek revenge on the side of uh, his, uh, his fellow Cerberus, uh, his fellow hunter named Cerberus. But Night Sky is still a problem with that batter. So kudos to the survivor side of AX. They still have a chance to get one point on the board, but tonight goes to SG, especially Pow Pow, the first uh, 4K hunter of this match. And that's what's scary about. You know, those hunter main that can play more than two or three hunters because you don't know what to expect. And yeah, um, a 5 3, 3 to 5. And in the last game, a 7 to 2. A sweep victory coming from the side of SG over here. Yeah, it was uh, SG to break the tie there uh, in, in emphatic fashion, right? Mm -hmm. the, the start of it. They were able to kind of roll with the punches of the Hunter, but it was ultimately Pow Pow to just solidify them uh, winning this entire thing. So we're going to check out Best Deduction, the MVP, none yeah. other than Pow Pow himself. Yeah, totally deserved. Um, that you wish a Pow Pow. We have seen Pow Pow with the uh, Bloody Queen and Galatea. And yeah, I'm expecting, you know, the same um, performance with this Dream Wish. So yeah. Totally not disappointed at all. With the it's crazy how yeah. hunters. I mean, the hunter at the start, well, start to mid, wasn't conventional. We saw at Arms Factory yeah. breaking wheel. We saw Wax Artist and Moonlit, but ultimately it led to uh, the meta hunter here, which mm -hmm. is a dream which in Leo's memory, it's still they still put up a great fight. Mm -hmm. It's just that Pow Pow uh, was really one step ahead of everyone and. Uh, just the way he was able to just blink hit, also very proactive when it came to uh, leeching the survivors and the main body placements was really on point. So great job on SG's side. And uh, uh, it seems like uh, NTT, I don't know if you're a buff here, Vietnam teams seem to be sh repping tonight. Wow. Um, it's not like I'm here to give their good luck or anything. Um, y you give the basement, you give the caster curse, but I don't know. It seems like uh, <laughs> the Vietnam um, buff is real. <laughs> yeah, but you know, no freestyle yet, so no hair flip. No hair flip. I was able to see yeah. it, ladies and gentlemen. It's a sight to behold. So <laughs> tell when NTT's on, you gotta spam the hunters. Yo, please, please use feaster. I want to see that hair flip. I want to see that that commercial, that hair commercial. Oh, oh he's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it. He's nah, gonna nah, wait I'm not it. It was, it, was, it was immaculate. I just... Uh, wow. yeah, you, you did bring up a good point, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. the, so the hunter side go from off meta to meta later on that we go. Um, mm -hmm. Also a survivor too, I, I, I would argue. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's true. With the survivors as well. I mean, we saw a lawyer in round number two as well. That uh, And then kind of went conventional towards the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, overall, these uh, this was a great match. Uh, <laughs> From from best of two to the full best of three, it's uh you, you saw the evolution of certain teams, right? With with SG facing Noir uh, at the start of the finals of the pre preliminary stage, uh, got a bit of a rocky road, but had a redemption, the wild card, and now being able to be the leaders of their group is a huge statement. Not to mention also the Mad Penguins. Big shout out to them. They were able to get it two to zero up against SKG, the feared clerk hunters. Uh -huh. So. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. before we wrap things up, these are today's results. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, we did mention the match between MP and SKG over here. Um, the first match will be set, uh, a win on uh, MP side with 7-2 mm -hmm. and 5-3. to three. As for AX and Sugar, the matchup we have just witnessed is going to be 5-3, uh, to 3-5 three, three to and 2-7 to seven for SG side.
Mm -hmm. Big shout outs to all the teams. Uh, SKG and AX put up a great fight, but we got to give our props to Mad Penguins and SG. The night belongs. Uh, the night belongs to them. They are the leaders of their teams in Group A and B. So here we have it. Again, it comes when it comes down to round wins. It is very important. Still, uh, we will look at win counts first. But if ever it ties up, that will uh, the net wins as well as round wins and round points are going to be a factor. But for now, uh, MP and SG, leaders of their respective groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow we're going to witness uh, the match between Group C and Group D, I believe. Mm -hmm. We did say that Group C and D are the one of the fear, feared groups. Yeah. We have really no names, and we're going to mention them now. GH versus Icoon. GH being the defending champions of IVC. Uh, we'll start things off first. And then we got TMX versus Noir, which, I mean, yeah, household name Noir going up against TMX. That's going to be a great match to watch tomorrow. Yeah, not going to lie, the logos for all the team for this year has been <laughs> on another level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I miss ZT's original logo, if you remember that. That took a lot of <laughs> big brains to make. I know you're an arts yeah. guy, NTT, so you got to give your props to how ZT brought up a, a really great logo. So... Any final words, any shout outs you want to give out 